Welcome to my Dead Space remake, impossible difficulty, plasma cutter only, no damage, walkthrough. I'm going to be commentating all this, taking you through everything. We're collecting everything along the way, so that's all the weapons, all the files, most of the power nodes, most of the random items. I'll explain all as we go along, but anything of importance, we are collecting it guys. We're playing on impossible difficulty, of course, we're going to pick that here to begin with, as you can see. And you might also want to adjust the speed of your camera just so you can move around quicker if you need to. Just makes it a lot easier to spot enemies which are behind you. I'll be explaining it all along the way, and there's no speedrun trophy. So if you do want to take a bit more time on fights and what I do, then do so. There's no punishment for being slow in this game. There is some time, if, you, if you're too slow, some enemies might catch up to you that you've run away from. But other than that, yeah, there's no punishment in terms of completion, bonuses or trophies. There is a glitch for doing this on impossible. If you die on impossible, what happens is if you die and let the, the death go through, it will take you to a screen and you can either choose to lower the difficulty or lose your save for good. Now if you lower the difficulty, it will change it to hard, but that still pops in touchable trophy which is for completing the game on impossible mode. Yeah, that will still pop the trophy, but it will only give you hard rewards. So ideally, you want to complete it on impossible legitimately so that you get the rewards at the end of it as well, the hand cannon and the burnished suit. This is all done in impossible, no glitches used on this. I think it's me. What you can do if you do die, you can, you can make manual saves. You can back up your save every now and then if you want to but an even easier way is when you die there'll be like a three second death animation three to six seconds death animation depending on how you die you can just pause the game quit to the main menu and then once you're back at the main menu just continue and it'll put you back at the last save point and your save is still intact you will die Likely, you, you might not. I mean, maybe my strategy is going to be that that good that you're not going to die. But yeah, if you do die, like I say, because your safe will get deleted permanently, or you have to defer, default to hard mode. Just if you die during the animation, quickly pause the game, quit to main menu, and then continue there back at your last manual save you made. Very, very important, guys. Always remember, if you die, quickly pause, quit to main menu. While I've been actually rooting this and practicing, I've actually forgot a few times to quit and it's took me back to the screen to either low difficulty or lose my save. Yeah, so just make sure you're always alert when playing on this difficulty. You need to be anyway, it's the hardest difficulty. It's basically hard mode, but with permadeath. Just always, when you die, pause the game. And then from there, you can think about what you're going to do. If you're going to quit to main menu, or close the app and restore a save I guess. There's a few cutscenes in this that you can't skip them, I mean there's not too many but most of them I will just edit them out of the cutscenes and what you're gonna see from me pretty much is I'm gonna explain anything of great importance to you and when it comes to certain encounters I'm gonna explain to you how that encounter works, strategies around it, what you can do if you want to do it a different way. This is plasma cutter only so if you are choosing or deciding to use other weapons you can do so but the only real advice I can give is mainly around plasma cutter only because what I've been playing with a lot of the time I don't a lot of the other weapons are good I just don't know exactly how helpful the other weapons are because I've just been playing plasma cutter only it's a it's a really good weapon we will be fully upgrading it as well as our suit along the way uh, but there is a trophy for doing plasma cutter only anyway, so I advise to do it in this playthrough and then in your new game plus You can just use any weapon do your, all your cleanup in new game plus and then if you do plasma cutter only in this playthrough That will make it so you can use a hand cannon in the next playthrough hand cannons basically like a foam glove and um, When you press fire it will say bang bang or poo poo And it'll kill enemies in one hit and it'll also it's got infinite ammo So yeah this video, I will be releasing it as a standalone video, impossible plasma cutter only, no damage. But also, it will be a combination 
combined with my New Game Plus to get a Platinum. So this is basically part of my Platinum walkthrough. In two playthroughs, I've just sort of um, cut it out to make it its own video. But yeah, if you do want Platinum guys following this, because I am going to be going for trophies along the way and advising you on trophies as well in this video. Then just check out my other video, which you should find linked in the description. And also, I've got a text guide for this. If you look at the description, you'll find a text guide. It's linked there. Everything we're doing here is all explained in text, all the collectibles and everything. So if you want to look ahead for any whatever reason, or if you want to keep track of stuff, yeah, look at my text guide linked in the description. Okay, so in a minute, we're about to get control. I thought I would have been able to cut out most of that intro, but it seems I've been chatting a bit too much. And we're here now. Yeah, so the first collectible. You don't need every collectible for a trophy. You need 150 for a trophy. Uh, Legend Teller, I think it is. And there's also Storyteller. Storyteller is for getting 75 logs. And Legend Legendary Teller is for getting 150 logs. Most of them are story related. There's only probably... Not too many, but most of them are story related. But I'm going to be trying to get you every single log. But two are missable. So we're going to get the other two in New Game Plus if you are wanting to follow my New Game Plus guide. So once you get control guys, you're going to turn around and you're just going to go left. Yes, yeah, chapter one, new arrivals. And there's your first log. It's a text log. And that's the background request. Yes, yeah, a text log there. And then you're going to follow your comrades. It's going to be a bit of story. Sometimes you won't be able to open any doors because there'll be some story in motion and you have to wait for it to finish. Or like this moment for example, you can't run or anything, you just walk in, no enemies. Yeah, there's a few moments like this, not too many though. It's quite a long game, this. I can't believe it's, I mean this is, video is going to be like 7 hours long. Such a long game, Death Space Remake is. Especially if you try and do no damage. Trying to do no damage in a game like this, it's not like Resident Evil where you can Resident Evil, you're a, you're a bit more safer to just sprint past enemies. Here, you can't really risk it if you want to do no damage. Because enemies, they can still hit you when you're sprinting past them. And it's quite hard to avoid them. So yeah, for the most part, if there's any enemies around, we're mostly killing them. There's probably only a few times when I sprint past the enemies. Just because I know we're not going back through there. I know I'm not going to go too close to any enemies. And I can get away before any of them get close to me. Yeah, it's a lot of places when you come back through, there will be enemies, the enemies will be still there. And also, there are some random enemy encounters. Yeah, I'll explain all the fixed encounters to you, but yeah, there can also be random encounters. So, if you ever get enemies appear where I don't say, or you get slightly different enemies, it's likely because some enemies are random. So, just be on the lookout for them. You can be running through a corridor, it might be empty for me. But for you, there might be enemies in that corridor. Yeah, we've just got another log there, guys. That's his sponsored article, the USG Ishimura. Yeah, just on that bench there, another audio log. I'm not going to mention the story logs. I'm just going to mention anything which you pick up or which you have to perform a specific action to get. Yeah, any logs which are story related, I'm not really going to mention, guys. She should get them all. But if you really want to know, they are all in my collect in my text guide. All in my text guide. Yeah, so um you come through here, you have to interact with this terminal, and then in a minute you're gonna have to sprint past, sprint away from all the enemies and get in an elevator. And then shortly after that, guys, we're gonna get our first weapon, the plasma cutter. Shit. It's not just comms with the guidance system. Half the Ishimura's in the red. Engines, hull, the tramps. Could do that kind of damage to a planet. Like Power. Ventilation's up. Power to the elevator. Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. Another malfunction? No. The quarantine systems are all fine. Oh, wait. Do you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear it. Yeah, man. Make it easy. Daniels, get those elevators running. There's something in here with us. Up there! Oh, God!
This is your first weapon guys, the plasma cutter. We will be collecting all the weapons, we're just not going to be using them. Do not use any other weapons, don't even equip them, because I think you might not have to shoot them, just equipping another weapon and probably doing a melee attack with another weapon, that might void the trophy. So just do not equip any other weapons. You can pick them up and then later on, as soon as we get to the next door, we'll be putting them in the like storage, so don't worry about it. And when it comes to loot, by the way, a lot of loot is random. A lot of loot is random. Now this enemy out here, you can run past him like I have, or you may want to just shoot him. Yep. Yeah. You might want to shoot him. It might be better. In here, guys, by the way, you see that telephone? Interact with it. There you go. You'll get a text log from there. That's called send help. Yeah, that's called send help, that text log. It's on like a little, there's a few of them security phones around, you just got to interact with it and that will trigger like a, a log. And that's how you get that one. This one right now is a story log. So while the story log is in process, we're just going to loot the area. And it's a safe point there. When it comes to loot, if it's not fixed, any loot which will give you ammo, ammo, 100 credits, 400 credits, or a health item. Any of them, that's normally random and it can it can alternate between other stuff. Stasis packs in there as well. I'll try to mention anything which is fixed and is of great importance. But yeah, if you ever find credits times 100 or credits times 400 or a stack of ammo or a stasis pack or a healing item, that normally means that's a random loot and it might be something different for you than what it is for me. But yeah, like I say, anything of importance, guys, I will mention it to you. Excuse me, had a bit of a cold lately. Yeah, so after that story, it's gonna save the game, always save your game. Whenever you go past a save point, guys, make a save. So if you do die, you can just pause, quit, and reload that save point. Yeah, so we're going to come out here now into the tram tunnel. If you look at your map, by the way, a lot of rooms do have room room official room names. Yeah, a lot of rooms do have official room names, and I've used a official room name where there is one. But if there is not a official room name, I've normally just tried to call it like access corridor because it's next to the room which does have a name. Now once you've got a stasis module, you need to freeze this door, but just be careful because doors can actually damage you, believe it or not. Yep, it's happened to me. But here, you want to wait. So before you shoot the door, just wait for about 30 seconds. And that's gonna trigger a audio log. There we go. Yep, that audio log will not trigger if you shoot the door before it triggers. So just wait for it to trigger. And then once it triggers like that, you can shoot the door. Pick up that stasis pack at the top. That stasis pack is always on the floor there. And then to come and stop that box, you can make a save here if you want to, it's a save point. And it's also a stasis recharge. Stasis recharges on the wall, they're not everywhere, but you basically just interact with it and it will refill your stasis. I'm gonna come to the bathroom now and get all this loot. Yeah, do you see one of them loots then? One of them was 1,200 credits. If it's anything, when it comes to credits, if it's more than 400, then that is always fixed. If you find a spot which has got like 1,200 credits or 1,500, that is always fixed and that's always going to be there. So in the tram repair room, you've got medium med pack there. That medium med pack is always there. On the wall here is a power node times one. I point out all these power nodes to you guys and here, it's a audio log, you see that? There's an audio log on that table. I just picked it up. Yeah, that was a stasis module request. So make sure you grab that audio log, guys, and the power note. And then you interrupt that terminal near the top of the ramp, which I just did earlier. Grab all this loot. And then come on down here and wait for this terminal to become active. Just interrupt it once, don't do nothing else, and then turn around because an enemy is going to come through that door just behind you. You can stasis him, just stasis him. You always want to take out a leg 
and then an arm. Yep, and then interact with it one more time. And it should trigger a conversation. There you go, and it can stasis it. Do not stasis that arm until this audio log has triggered. Otherwise, it will not trigger and you'll, you'll miss it. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And then go down the other ramp and interact with the other panel to activate the other arm. Just remember, this arm here, the one which you have to stasis in place, operate it two or three times until the log triggers, triggers and then you can stasis the arm on the next one after that. Just like I said, if you stasis the arm before the log triggers, then you will not get it. Three enemies are going to spawn, basically. Yeah, once you interact with these first these first claw arms, the terminals, three enemies normally trigger. Fill up your stasis if you need to. And then once you've activated both claws, interact with the central panel one more time. Now once you're in that central panel, another time, three more enemies are going to spawn. While the um while it's assembling the tram repair well repairing the tram for you. Yeah, three enemies are going to spawn. So again just stasis them. Take out the legs and then their arms. Yeah, always take out a leg and then an arm. There you go. Stasis them if they get close. You know when you've killed them because you'll see the... You won't always see it, but you'll see the item jump up. You normally have to damage them again after they're dead in order for them to drop the item. Fill up your stasis if you need to. That's two enemies, so there's going to be one more. Like I said, there'll be three enemies. Three spawned just before. Three spawn while you're doing the claws, basically. And then three spawn once it's actually repairing the tram, once you've done interacted with all the terminals. There he is, the third one. So again, just take out a leg, and then take out an arm, and that'll be dead. Yeah, these enemies in the first few chapters, taking off two limbs normally kills them on impossible. But later on, you normally have to take off three limbs or deal enough damage. You can either kill enemies just by dealing damage to them, just by hitting them in the chest, or cutting off so many of their limbs. Cutting off their limbs is quicker, but sometimes, depending on the enemy, it can be best just keep shooting them at the head. Uh, if it can be tricky to um, lock onto a limb. Yeah, once back through the door, an acid enemy will spawn from here. Yeah, the guys with the sort of acid bubbles on the chest, they will spit acid on you. So you always want to watch out for these guys. Try to get rid of them straight away or make sure you've got something to hide behind. They spit acid. I just stasis him and then kill him and then come back here just fill up my stasis. Always try to keep your stasis full if you need to. And when it comes to your stasis packs, try to keep them and always keep one or two on you because if you run into trouble and you've got no stasis left, it can turn, it can go really pear shaped real quick. So always keep some stasis packs with you just in case. Yeah, now in here in the cargo baggage hall. There's going to be a necromorph playing dead at the end. Yeah, so you look through there. You know that enemy I ran past earlier? He'll normally... He, it didn't happen this time. But he normally runs down here. And he gets stuck on this barricade. And you can kill him really easily. But he's not coming down here this time. But that's my intention. That's why I said earlier you might want to kill him first. Or just run past him like I did. And we'll worry about him later. So this guy at the end playing dead... Just shoot him, get his attention, get one free shot on him, and then again, just take out a leg, rotate your line, your um, your line, your reticle, and then take out an arm. Interrupt the circuit breaker, guys, and open the maintenance bay. Yep, going to save the game now. <coughs> yeah, I've had a sore throat all week. It's clearing up a bit now, but I think doing this commentary in this video is probably going to make it... Yeah, going to go back to square one again, but we'll see. Yeah, so when, when you first come into this room, once you come so far into the room, two enemies will spawn. You can use the explosive cannons just to blow them up if you know where they're coming. Uh, but yeah, you got them first two. Then we're going to grab all this loot. We're going to be grabbing pretty much all the loot we go past guys along the way. Yeah, so two enemies, and then you get when you get closer to the middle, another two will spawn. But there's one climbing over the railing. Yes, yeah, to take him out. There'll be one more somewhere, like I say. Two will spawn when you first come in, and you go far enough into the room. And then two, another, another two will spawn when you come down the bottom here. Yeah, marksman. I think that's for dismembering 
50 limbs. I think it is. Yeah, dismember 50 limbs. Yeah, then once you're ready, come into the elevator, guys. And come up. Yeah, so like I say, I'm only going to point out, when it comes to collectibles, any expensive items which we get, like the semiconductors, any power nodes, and any collectibles, and of course, any weapons or weapon upgrades which we need. Yeah, basically anything of importance. Just random loot I'm collecting. I'm not, I'm not going to keep mentioning that to you. There's loads of random loot in this game. Yeah, so down here, there's going to be an enemy playing dead. He's not always in the same place. He might not be here. He might be where I'm standing right now. He sort of moves around a bit. But yeah, skip, shoot him, get his attention, and then finish him off. Give him a little stomp. Make sure he's dead. And to um, get an item from him. Now, when you get here, on this chair, it's a text log. Yep, yeah, that is the repair invoice. And you can just loot these two lockers nearby. And then come to circuit breaker and you want to enable the maintenance room. But make sure you disable the lights. Do not disable the elevator, otherwise you will not be able to get back down. Disable the lights and enable the maintenance room. Just open the door. Now when you come down here, two enemies are going to be rushing you. Because you're on impossible, one of them might be sprinting to you. And if he is, just sprint away and turn around and stasis him if you need to. And you can use his two explosive canisters to kill him. You could come straight into the elevator. But what happens if you do that? They'll just follow you down the bottom. And when we get down the bottom, three more enemies are going to spawn. And you do not want to be fighting five enemies down there. So you kill them two up here, using them explosive canisters. And then come down here. Like I say, three enemies are going to spawn now. So just carefully look around. Yes, yeah, no lights. So you've got to be very, very observant. And listen out for them. There is a vent near the door. And the reason I'm not saying they spawn from here or they spawn from there, for example, is because it's sort of random where they spawn from. It sort of it depends where your camera is looking, and you know how close you are to something. They can basically spawn from any vent within the area. There'll be vents in the ceiling, vents in the walls. So that's three enemies. Once you killed all three, no more are going to spawn now, guys. You can come in here and grab the stuff. Grab the data boards. That's story related. You need this. Yeah, pick it up. Yeah, there's a power node on the wall there as well. Yeah, there's a text log there. That text log is the poker invitation. Yeah, pick that one up. There's a power node in the wall there. And the interrupt the upgrade bench. The upgrade bench, you want to... Yeah, you should have two nodes at this point. Just upgrade the damage and the plasma cutter. Uh, sorry, the damage and the cap capacity on the plasma cutter. Just upgrade them. And then once you get back out here, guys, two more enemies are going to spawn. You're gonna have half, you'll have half an enemy. So I'm just going to keep an eye out for them. I've got to be really safe here because I don't know damage. The thing is, in the darkness, they can just pop out out of nowhere. Just got to be careful. I mean, they've already spawned, but they can just... If they're behind you, sometimes you don't see them until they're really close. So I'm trying to be really careful here. Here he comes, you can see the one running. Yeah, when you come out of that room, there will always be two that appear, one have no legs, and then you have like a, a, a runner, like so. So, we've got two enemies, so that's all the enemies for now. Then you're going to come up here, if you haven't got this already, there's an always a medium med pack on the shelf. That's always a medium med pack. And then back near the entrance, guys, there's going to be an enemy playing dead. Yep, there he is, playing dead. We're going to wake him up with a plasma cutter bullet to the leg and you're just going to finish him off, take out his leg and then an arm. There you go. Yep, give him a stomp. And then come out back here, here guys and save your game. <coughs> Excuse me again. I was hoping, yeah, I was hoping my cough be gone by now but Never mind. Hopefully for The Witcher 3. Yeah, should be plenty of time. That's at least a few weeks away, I think. Yeah, so interrupt the circuit breaker. And now you want to enable the cargo hall storage door. Come back through here and enemies should spawn. Just take them out quickly. There you go. And um, this is a the cargo hall storage. Just in there. Head inside and in here it's going to be a bronze semiconductor. On the shelf there it is. Some loot. And you've also got power nodes. 
Yeah, there you go, a power node. Always get the power nodes, guys. Anything I mention to you, get it. Even even just a random loot you want as well. It all adds up over time. Yep, yeah, all I'm doing now, I'm just going back out to tram tunnel and I'm just going to refill my stasis. It's not it's not too far to go. Yeah, so just back out here, use the stasis recharge, and let's refill it. Yeah, we're going to have a bit more story now uh, for a moment. And then what we're going to be doing is basically going back up to where we started, where we first came in. And we encountered the first Necromorphs. We're going to be making our way back up there. So yeah, make way back up there guys. And um, I'll meet you by this next room we're going to enter. It's clear. Now arriving at flight deck, tram control. We're on board. Something hit the roof, but it seems operational. Quarantine lockdown's lifted, so you can get to the hangar. Comms are still down, though, so be ready for anything. What's the plan? You and Johnson fix up the Kellyan. We report to the bridge. Standard emergency protocol. What? Protocol? Hey, man, people are dying here. And I'm not losing anyone else. We stick to procedure. We'll get through this. We'll see. Once you get here, we're going to be entering a little side room here, but there's going to be two enemies. You want to trigger these enemies to spawn here, otherwise they're going to spawn in that side room. So just come to this far door, one enemy is going to drop down from the ceiling, take him out, and then quickly turn around and there's going to be another enemy coming up behind you. But it'll just be half an enemy. Yep, just take him out. That's it, and that should be it. Now, no more enemies should spawn for the moment, unless... You get unlucky and a random enemy spawns. Yeah, come into here, guys. The flight deck supply room. You got some loot in here, and you've also got a power node times one in the wall box. Yeah, there we go. Get that power node, and that's all you want from here. And then once you've done that, guys, you've got a bit of story now. Just follow the story for a moment, and I'll come back once we've got a next enemy encounter. Run with. They're fucking monsters. You didn't hear anything? What? 
No, the comms are still out. Isaac... We need to kill him and fix it now. Got a damage report? Uh, yeah, it, it's there. Yep, yeah. oh no. The ship crashed. Yeah, so once you get control back after that, there's going to be two enemies. You want to take out these guys because if not, these are going to be waiting for you later. Yeah, we come back here on, I think, chapter 3 or 4 it is. And these will be waiting for you right outside the door. So get rid of these two. There's going to be a third. But it's third one, yeah, down there. Kill him as well. Yeah, so kill these two and then there'll be, sh there'll be a third, which is... Probably five seconds or so behind them. And then once you kill them, you can grab the loot. And then carry on the story. Yeah. You can open... Do some doors it lets you open during story video calls. But some doors it won't. So in the meantime, while this story call is in progress, we're just going to go and loot the bathroom. Get some more credits. You in here. And I'm going to make our way, guys, on the story, and we're going to visit the first door. Status deceased. Even the captain. God. Isaac, you're closer to medical. You can double back and cut through maintenance. Find the captain's body and get his rig. With his codes, we. What was that? Chen. Yeah, this is the first shop. We're going to sell everything except for your stasis packs and some plasma energy. Never sell your stasis packs, guys. Your stasis packs are going to come in useful at some point throughout the game. Like I say, your stasis is basic, basically stops enemies from attacking you and gives you some breathing room. And it's very, very useful on impossible. So never sell stasis packs. And what I normally do with plasma energy, I normally... I normally always keep one stack to begin with. Later on you might need to keep two stacks or three stacks. Um, but yeah, I always try to keep just one stack and sell the rest. And once you've done all that guys, buy two power nodes. You should have 20,000 at that point and you can buy two power nodes. If not, just buy as many as you can and then what I'm upgrading now, just do it a bit later. But basically, you should have four power nodes. And then come to this workbench, guys, and fully upgrade your plasma cutter as much as you can. That should put your damage up to 140, which it does make a big difference. You'll be killing enemies just a little bit quicker now. And then we're going to come down here. She's going to get our first story trophy in a second. Welcome aboard. Complete chapter one on any difficulty setting. Yep, and we're heading into the medical area soon yeah and here yeah welcome aboard yeah pick up the kinesis module yeah now you can actually pick things up but if you've been, if you've been playing Clisso protocol recently do not try and pick up the enemies you can't do it on this yeah I did try to do it when I first when I first started playing this I think I did start grabbing enemies um, I soon snapped out of that habit but yeah I did start trying to grab enemies to begin with but in here, 
Yeah, sometimes loot on that terminal. Move these around to get three, but behind this one is a wall box with a semiconductor in it. And on that shelf there is a small medi pack. That's always a small med pack. And come out here, we're going to get a pulse rifle in a second. Just while we're waiting for the story to um, finish, then grab the loot in the area if there is any. Yeah, sometimes loot will not appear, by the way, and we're also going to call that tram ledge while we're waiting. Yeah, some of this loot I'm collecting, if it doesn't appear from you, then that's just random, because there's another random chance of just random loot not appearing at all. It, you know, it just depends. And they pick up the pulse rifle. And I'm going to save the game. Yeah, so do not use that Porsche rifle, guys. As soon as we get to a shop, we're going to store it. Do not even equip it. was put together in a hurry. A hydrazine tank might blow it open. Just need a detonator, like maybe a shock pad. And Cole could be through there if... Isaac. The one who attacked us. I swear to God it was Chen. But... I saw him die. As soon as that story dialogue's finished playing, guys, we're going to interact with the shop and put the Porsche rifle away. Yeah, put this away, and in the meantime, while you're here, if you've got any more loot, you can sell it. Or if it's a stasis pack and you have too many, you can deposit it. Yeah, I always, if I have, if I have two stasis packs, I always keep two on me, and then any more, I lob them in storage. And you can also buy that new suit, guys. Now, buy suit level two for ten thousand. Yep. And um, like I was saying with the power nodes, if you don't have enough yet, just wait until you do afters. It's not like game change, it's not like you do need it now, but yeah, if, you sh if you're struggling to keep up with me in terms of money, then just, just catch up a little bit later. To begin with, you are going to be tight on materials, but as we go, a lot, as we go on, you're going to be have way too much. Yeah, by, it'll get to one point, you'll have about 40 power nodes with nothing to do with them. And like 200,000 cash or something. Yeah, so just going to make a save. And I'm going to head, guys, into imaging diagnos diagnostics. Once you get in here, there will be a bit of loot to pick up. But if you see any fire extinguishers like that one on the wall, they see it on the corner, leave it. Do not shoot it, you're going to need it later. And move this across. Yeah, you'll find out why a bit later on. But yeah, do not destroy any fire extinguishers you see. If you do destroy one by mistake, it's not the end of the world. There are quite a few in this area. If you just look around or you can look in a different room and um, bring it back with you when the point arises. It's in a later chapter where we're going to need that pretty much. When you come into this side of the room, that enemy will spawn from the vent, so just be ready for him. He always seems to spawn from that same vent. You can then place a power cell and start, look, there's another fight thing shit on the floor there. Yeah, normally a guy, there he is. Yeah, that necromorph will normally spawn from that vent. You see that guy on the floor, when he properly dies, that guy coughing up like me. Yep, yeah, uh, normally a morph will come from that vent. And there was a power node in that wall box there guys so just make sure you grab that power node from the wall box and then when you when you start the power cell you interact with the circuit breaker and you want to unlock the doors with it so that you can come in here and get that audio log guys yeah that audio log that is the patient Harris audio log so come and pick it up remember like I say interact with the circuit breaker activate the uh, um, not the elevator activate the doors and then that door will be open and you can go in that room and then come back activate the elevator guys and come up once you come up that 
Lizard and Necro will always spawn from that event. I don't know what it's, I don't know the official names for the enemies, by the way, guys. I call them guys lizards, just because they're like sort of lizard lizards by nature. But them guys, they can jump on, they can jump at you from a very far distance away. They can, they can cling to walls, of course, and yeah, they can just launch themselves at you from walls. You want to try and get rid of them guys always as quick as you can. Then once you've moved that lift across to make a sort of bridge to, to pass the other side, there'll be Necro in this corridor, so be ready to take him out. And then come to here guys, the observation room. And here there'll be some loot, uh, but there'll also be a text log, there it is. Calculated risks, so make sure you pick that one up. Right, so if you, if you do miss a text log, it's not, a, or an audio log, whatever, it's not a big problem, like I say, you do not need them all for a trophy. There's 190 about altogether, so you can spare you can spare about 20. Um, I will begin every single one between here and New Game Plus, but yeah, you can miss a few if you need to. Yep, yeah, I forgot that wall box. I just went back in just to get that loot from the wall box, just to show you. Going to come in here. We're going to make a save, <coughs> and I'm going to go into the zero G area. These zero G sections, I think they're a big change up from the original. I don't remember the original too much. I did mean to play it before this released and do a, a guide for that one, but I never got to it unfortunately because Biomutant took too long, took up too much of my time. A good probably one or two weeks too long Biomutant took, um, but yeah. On this shelf there'll be a bronze semiconductor and there's two stomp boxes that I broke. Yeah, them crates that float about and you can stomp on them. I just call them a stomp box because they're meant to be stomped on. So if I ever say stomp box, that's what I mean. Just them crates that you can stomp on or pick up and lob to smash them. In here, there'll be two stomp boxes. One down there and I think there's one near the top. Yeah, all I do, I lob them near the door which you're heading to and then just pick up the loot as I pass by. Yep, and now we're heading to therapy maintenance. First of all, I pick up the hydrazine canister because you need that for story and then grab all the loot in the area because you can't open the door while this video, this audio call, sorry, is in progress. And then what you want to do, you see these hanging bodies, just grab a, grab a leg and they'll pop the trophy guys, wishbone. That trophy is actually for grabbing an enemy's limb when it's hanging off. Yeah, when you come back in here, a lizard will spawn in that room opposite near the doorway. So just be ready to kill him. I don't want to take any damage here, so I'm being very, very careful. Yeah, I did try to freeze him, but I missed. Yep, got him. Yep, because he, he's not close, but he can literally launch at you all the way from here. He can launch from here. All the way over to you, so it's best to get rid of him as soon as you can. Yeah, that that trophy wishbone, it's for it's for um, using kinesis on a limb when it's dangling off. So normally, you the way to do it normally on a on a living enemy, you'd normally shoot the limb, try to use stasis, shoot it, not stasis, sorry, you kinesis, shoot it, try to grab it, shoot it, try to grab it, shoot it, try to grab it. If you keep up that that step, at one point it will be dangling off, so you've got to be quick, there's a very brief time from it, dangles and falls off. So you'd shoot grab, shoot grab, shoot grab, and then that way you're going to grab it, you know, while it's dangling, just because you're being quick. Rather than just shooting it three times and then grabbing, you always want to shoot grab, shoot grab, shoot grab. But popping it in that room where I just did, just grabbing a leg off one of them um, hanging bodies, one of them hanging suits. It just pops a trophy for some reason. If it don't pop there, like I say, it, it might have been it might get patched in the future. If it does, just do that way. Shoot grab, shoot grab on any random enemy. Yeah, so we've just got a somatic there guys. Make sure you pick it up. Somatic of that workbench. That's a pulse round somatic. There's a medium med pack on top of that cylinder in the middle, that massive pipe, so just make sure you grab it. And then when you've got this ramp, two enemies gonna spawn. Yeah, you normally get the lizard will normally spawn in front, and a normal necro will normally spawn behind you. There you go, just take them both out. 
you got to come back here. Well, I don't actually come back through it later, but if you don't get these two now, they might follow you into the next corridor. And um, as you can see, you can actually, once you killed an enemy or ripped off their arm, you can actually grab the spear. You can grab their spikes and lob them at other enemies. Uh, same with the lizards, you can grab their tails. And when it comes to them fuses, by the way, which you have to break to open the door, just be very careful because sometimes if you melee them, it can damage you. I mean, I melee that, I, I shouldn't off really because like I say they can damage you. But um, in future, I will be just shooting them, just be on the safe side. So once back here, head over to the shop. Just going to sell some of our goodies, our loot. Always keep your stasis packs and at least one sack of ammo. And of course, what, is, what you have in your weapon anyway. Always wants to be fully loaded. Yes, the fire extinguisher there. Should be very careful you don't destroy it by accident when you're next to it. Because it will damage you. Yeah, freeze the door. And then come on through. Now be very careful here guys, once you go too far into this room, it's going to spawn four enemies. Okay, so you see these spears on the floor, there's two spears there, there's one on the floor, you can see a little light on the end, there's a pipe over there, just on the ceiling. Yeah, all these are instant kills on enemies. Yeah, so you see that pipe on the ceiling, I'm trying to grab it, it's got like a, the rim on it, it's blue sort of like a little light illuminated to make make it easier to see and there's one more down here there it is excuse me again yeah so these will instant kill enemies and because there's going to be four enemies here and there's four of these you can use them to get some quick kills yeah these enemies will not spawn at once they'll gradually spawn so you want to just quickly kill them before any other spawn and overwhelm you there you go so four enemies spawn here and there's four instant kill spears if you look around like I say there's two near that pillar near where you first come in and then you've got the pipes on the ceiling just around the area now it's going to grab a bit of loot and something I want to show you as well you see this little trolley you see it's got the corners or lit up on the top where well, it's actually made of four spears you can actually break these there you go and you get four instant kill spears from it, it took me a playthrough or two to figure that out so what we're going to do, we're going to drop all these just off this railing here. Because down below there's going to be five enemies spawn. So here, that will kill four enemies. Sometimes these things you can grab, they glitch out. So you always, if you try to use them for anything, you always want to try and use more than you need. Just like I say, they can glitch out. I think they just fall through the floor sometimes. Yeah, there's another one of them trolleys down there. You saw me shoot it. And I'm just going to move some of the poles down here. I think that's about six. That should be more than enough. So once you're ready, come down the elevator. And now five more enemies are going to spawn. So you've got all in space on the floor there. Just be ready. Yep, this will instant kill all the enemies. Later on, by the way, there'll be an armoured enemy where, where it's, its body and its legs are armoured. And you can only damage its arms or its legs. Them enemies... If you lob a spear at them, at the body, it actually pounces off, it doesn't hurt them. Unless you lob it at their arm, of course. Yeah, so later on, certain enemies, so these are not as effective. Basically, the armoured guys. But look how good this kills them. Really, really effective. Apologies for my coughing, guys. If I want, if I keep pausing to cough, I'm going to be pausing all the time. I'm, I am trying to keep it away from the camera. Uh, from the mic, sorry. And I'm making sure, sure it's not too loud. Okay, so um, yeah, it's grabbing the loot. There's a audio log here, guys. Make sure you grab that audio log at the back in the toilets. That's audio log, they defy death itself. And as you can see there, there's another one of them trolleys with the four spears. Right, now we're gonna come in here and get some collectibles. There's a text log here. This is the marker discovery. You can move the shelf out of the way. And in the back here is going to be two, two loot. Loot times two. There you go. Just pick them up. If you ever find ammo, by the way, it's always the same quantity. You always get six plasma energies. Uh, some ammo you always get three. Some of them you always get five. It just depends on the ammo type. But yeah, you always get the same quantities if there's ammo involved. Yeah, so in here, you're going to pick up that audio log of the desk. That is the Nicole's log. They'll actually start a side mission, scientific methods. 
and also pick the text log of the shelf guys anonymized yeah anonymized transcript yeah grab that off the shelf as well and then coming here you get a stasis pack somatic yep stasis pack somatic make sure you grab that guys and then grab all the loot in the room yep and then make a save You need all the somatics for the trophies. For the trophies are very important, you grab them. But again, if you want to know where all the somatics are exactly, just look in my text guide and you'll be able to see where they all are. Yep, yeah, all I'm doing, we're gonna be we're actually gonna be coming down this room later, so you do want to keep a few spears by the lift just so later on you can get to them straight away. Um, but I'm actually bringing one with me as well to kill this enemy really quick in a second you don't have to I mean you can just shoot him if you want with your plasma energy but this way you can instantly kill him and it just feels it just feels cooler impaling them on the wall yeah we did get a trophy earlier as well for impaling an enemy that's almost unmissable because if you're going to be using all these these spears you always I mean, there's no way you're not going to impale an enemy. Yeah, there he is, that little guy spawns. I just call them guys the tentacle babies, I guess. Yeah, so text log there, guys. Vital personnel. Make sure you grab that. And look, he's disappeared. Or is he just fell down? He fell down. Yeah, salute him. Now, up here is going to be two more of them tentacle babies. But there is a trolley with four spears. The enemies don't spawn right now unless you walk forward a few steps. So shoot that to make all spears break away. Now the first one, he spawns from that glass. That's it, wait a moment, and then lock the spear at him. And then the second one comes from around the back of the room. When an enemy first spawns in, by the way, you have to wait a few seconds before you try and hit them, because they're sort of invincible. If you, if you lob a item at them, like a spear, straight away, normally it'll bounce off, it won't do anything, just wait a second. And there was a power node, guys. Make sure you get that power node from that wall box, which I just got. Yeah, power node times one. And then turn off the um, power to the bed and pick up the shock pad. Yeah, pick up the shock pad. Yeah, two enemies will spawn up here. So I'm taking a spear with me. I don't really need to. It's only the metal pipes and the metal spears which will instant kill. The spears from the enemies, it normally takes two of them to kill one. Now an enemy is going to come from that vent, there's normally, when you come back through here, there'll be an enemy at the top of the ramp, and an enemy that comes through this vent. So just be ready to take on these guys. And if you didn't have stasis to freeze that broken door to get through, then it just means you've got to go back down, and back down that small cargo lift we went down earlier, where we killed the five enemies with the spears. And refill the stasis on that wall there. Yep, so... Stasis pack somatic, so you can buy stasis packs now if you need to, but we shouldn't ever need to because we're keeping any which we get, putting them in storage. Yeah, send us some ammo. That's it, and once you've done so, guys, you should be ready to set the bomb and um, remove the barricade. There you go, set the, re, um, the defibrillator on the barricade there. Come to the safe spot around the corner. I don't know why that spot is safe. You're literally behind the glass, which is beside the blast. I'm gonna get impaled. But seems to be in the game's logic. Yeah, once you come back through here, that enemy will drop down from the vent. He'll always drop down that guy. Just be ready to take him out. Once you come left around here, Get that somatic. Well, it's a weapon upgrade. It's not a somatic, but get that weapon upgrade. That weapon upgrade is for the plasma cutter. That's a cartridge rack. Come in here. Get that text log of that bed, which I just got. Patient observations. Get that. There's a spear here. I'm going to use that later. Yeah, that's one of the instant kill spears. Just getting the loot in the area now. Yeah, once you go close enough to that bed, that video will play out. Yeah, it's getting the loot in the area. 
Right, once you got all the loot and you got that text log, which we got, come in here and you want to open the shower. And there might be some loot in one of the showers. And then when you come to this one, there's actually a secret door behind it. And there'll be a little secret room here. Yeah, you want to put that spear. There's two spears. You want to put them inside the room. I'll explain why in a second. Yeah, so in here, you got a text log. Uh, sorry, an audio log. That's Nicole's study. And you want to loot the lockers. That will actually update. Getting that audio log actually updates the scientific methods side mission. And yeah, loot them lockers. You should find a gold semiconductor in one of them. I think the gold ones, off the top of my head, I think they sell for two and a half thousand and the bronze one cell for 1000 now once you take out this power cell yeah just deactivate all the um, little fuses and you'll be able to take it out once you take it out two tentacle babies are going to spawn so what I, what I do I normally take it out quickly put it back open the shower and come in right in this room in this room kill the enemies from here just use the spear to kill them both and you want to wait in that room for about 10 seconds and then these enemies don't spawn you see this guy just dropped down, there would be another one. <coughs> if you kill the tentacle babies from inside that secret room, and then wait in the secret room for about 10 seconds, these extra enemies don't seem to spawn. I came out a bit too soon. I mean, it don't really matter, I know what I'm doing. I guess I know what I'm doing, I guess, in a way. I've done this so many times. But yeah, if you, if you only want to spawn the tentacle babies, but you don't want to spawn these additional two necromorphs which spawn afterwards, just stay in that room for a bit longer, and yeah, they normally don't spawn. There's something with the triggers for the enemies where you have to be in the same room at a certain point within a you know a certain time window uh, for other enemies to spawn. If you're not in that room during that time window, enemies some enemies might not spawn. There's a few there's a few more occasions like that which I will explain to you. But yeah, basically what you've done, you've got a power cell now and you've put it in that slot. Now you can open this door. got some loot here there's sometimes loot in the corner it's not there this time it's random it might be there for you yeah now over here there's gonna be a tentacle baby a spear will kill a tentacle baby in one hit by the way and then once you get around this corner there'll be a lizard enemy there you go there is a pole up head on the one of the beds on the left which you can grab if you know where it is otherwise just freeze this guy and then shoot him There'll be a stasis recharge in a second, so you can use stasis. Yeah, on that bed there, it's a medium med pack. And they come to the end, but just be ready, because when you get to the end, an enemy's going to drop in. There is a spear just on the bed on the left. Just be quick. I, I did wait a few seconds before I throw it. Like I say, if you're too quick, it will not work. Just quickly get rid of that guy in, the, in front of you. And then turn around, because two necromorphs will spawn behind you. Get rid of them, and then you can get his loot. There'll be an audio log on the floor. That's audio log uh, number, well, it's rats. That's colony's problems. Audio log colony's problems. And then there's a paranoid beside it as well in that wall box. And then come over here, there'll be a security phone. Take the rats in the walls from there as well. That's another, another a audio log. There's a stasis recharge there to um, refill your stasis if you need to. And then come in here and save your game. Yeah, always save your game at any option that you get. You never know when you're going to die. And have to quickly pause. And quit to main menu. There'll be one enemy at the end here, Tentacle Baby, always spawns, just be ready to take him out. Freeze him, you can freeze him if you need to. There's plenty of stasis points in the medical in the uh, medical area. Yeah, some, I hate these guys, sometimes I just can't hit them. If you let the tentacles come out, yeah, you need to actually take the power core here and uh, put it in the wall to power the elevator. Yeah, if you let the tentacles come out, you normally, all you have to do then is shoot two tentacles and that will normally kill them. But... If you let that happen, there's a chance they might get one projectile off because they, they like shoot acid at you. So if you're going for no damage, it's best just to shoot them as quick as you can. Get rid of them before they get a chance to actually spawn their tentacles. Now this body on the floor, I'm not just doing that because I'm uh, 
Psycho. I'm a maniac. Now you want to destroy these two bodies. There's this guy as well. Yeah, just destroy her to bits. That's it. Stomp on the head. Yeah, because we're going to meet a new enemy in a minute. And he's actually resurrects bodies. Uh, there's a log there, guys. A text log. Autopsy report. So grab all the loot in the area. Make sure you destroy the two bodies, which are on the floor. It's a... Uh, there's more than two bodies, but you're looking for the two complete bodies which are on the floor. They'll be the same ones which I did. And then obviously, get that text log guys, which is near the wall. The autopsy report. Yeah, see this, this enemy type here? This goes to corpses and it respawn, it resurrects them into necromorphs. Yeah, but if you destroy, if you destroy the bodies, it can't resurrect them no more. So there's going to be two enemies now. You want to quickly stasis this guy and kill him because that spawn is going to be coming in a second here. But now we've killed the bodies, it's not going to be making two new enemies. So stasis, quickly take off his limbs. Yeah, this guy, you see I've took off two limbs and he's still alive. Yeah, you have to take off three of this guy's limbs. And there it is, a spawner. So stasis again and then quickly kill it. Yeah, I'm trying to get a spear and lob it at him. <coughs> Cutting off both its wings normally work. Yeah, there's normally some loot in the corner of this room as well. And then loot them too. And then make sure you grab the captain's rig from the bed. That's story related. You need to grab it. Now you actually have the security clearance level 1. So now you can open level 1 doors. Yeah, I'm just... What I would do when it comes to the... The logs the data logs at certain points throughout the game like say when you have to wait for the dialogue to finish before you can open any doors I'll just stop I'll look in my menus just to show you how my how my data logs are currently looking and maybe show, show you the map sometimes Yeah, we're pretty pretty much done this done this area now. The computer says the Ishimura's engines are offline. We're on a decaying orbit toward each of seven. Oh, yeah, you come back up here, you'll be in the emergency room. That, this video log we're getting now, this is the go to engineering video log. That's actually the last log of this chapter. So at this point you should have all the logs on this chapter guys. As long as you haven't missed any. And what's coming through here, you should be able to get a power node now. Yeah, this wall box on the wall has got paranoid in it, but you need to be level one. Should be able to open it now. Yep, yeah, so get that paranoid. Come through here. You could actually do a bit of backtracking now to open some of the doors, but I don't bother. I only backtrack for anything of great importance. Mainly. If it's some if it's some as little as one paranoid, but it's quite a journey and there's a lot of chances for random enemies to appear. Then I don't get. It. I think that's. Yeah, look at this. I mean, that enemy is random. He might not be here for you, or you may have a different enemy or two enemies. So just be ready for these guys. That's a random battle. It's a random chance of him appearing. And that guy as well. That's random. He shouldn't be there. It's completely random. Just depends how lucky you are. Yeah, there's there's one power node which I do not get at all. I think it's only one actually. I think there's one paranoid I intentionally avoid. Yeah, intentionally avoid. Yeah, we don't need all the paranoids anyway, but at, at the end of this playthrough, we're going to have all together, we'd have probably found about 130 paranoids, perhaps, with all the ones we're going to be buying as well and stuff. So. What you're doing now, you've come to hangar cargo tram control. Yeah, we're heading all the way back down now to where we started the game now, back to the main hangar bay. And then once you get there, guys, gonna make a save. Once back out here, 
Yeah, there should be a data log. Yeah, that's for completing chapter two, lab rat. Yeah, down there. Get that text log. That's it's mine. That was caught. And then look down on your left, and you should also see a bronze semiconductor. There it is. That was just below the ship. I did get that pretty quick, but yeah, it's a bronze semiconductor. I think they sell for one thousand, just below the ship. There is more loot in this area, by the way. There's some on the left and some on the far right. You can like slot a power cell to open like a shutter bay, get some more loot. But all it is, it's mainly just random loot, guys. So I don't really loot this area. It would just take too long. Cause it's quite a large area, and um, but. It should all be listed in the text guide if you bothered about it. And then oh, we're going to come over here. You want this rig, this is part of a side mission. But once you pick this up, two enemies are going to spawn. So grab it, there you go, Volcus rig. I was pretty quick. It's basically that purple glowing item. Quickly grab that and then come over to this side. Go into the open doorway. Yeah, you can see my oxygen ticking down. There are oxygen recharge stations you can use, but you shouldn't need to. And once you come through here, you've probably seen them two neck, them tentacle babies. But if, as long as you're quick, you shouldn't have to fight them. Grab the oxygen recharge item, and you just come straight down the bottom, and you should be able to get down here before your oxygen expires. Just get through this doorway. There you go. Get through the airlock, and you're good, guys. Come to this room, cargo hall storage. Yeah, that's a random enemy, I think. Pretty sure. You don't really need to come into this room, just random loot in here, really. Yeah, see these little these fan these fans, which come from the vents, all the enemies burst through. They don't do much damage to an enemy, but if you lob that a, a limb, it cuts it straight off. Yeah, them fans from the vents cut them straight off. It does. If you lob it at a leg or a, a arm, I'm just being worried here, being cautious, just in case more enemies drop. There's a text log there. That should be growth. Just near that debris at the end of the corridor, and then come to the lift. Take us up into the control room. Once up here, interrupt the terminal. And there should be a body next to it. You see this body sat down. Yet yeah, minding his own business. Destroy him. Because later on there's going to be a spawner in here. And if not, he's going to turn into a necromorph. So yeah, just stomp him to kill him again. And then during this video call, you can grab the loot in the area. And there's actually a audio log on the bench there. The audio log is called Temples Log 01. Grab the item from that locker. And then once the video log is finished, we're going to enter out of the store. We're going to buy the plasma cutter upgrade, which will be the heat accumulator. Yeah, come out to inventory first and just sell everything. Deposit your stasis packs and sell mostly plasma energy, but keep one or two. Yeah, when it comes to your weapon upgrades, do not sell them. Obviously, you want them. Yes, you're going to buy the plasma cutter upgrade. Yep, and also you're going to buy the pulse rifle upgrade. And you want to buy three power nodes for 30,000. You should have enough to do that. If not, just buy one less power node. We should have enough. So buy both the upgrades, which you can buy, and buy three power nodes. Sell everything else. Obviously, do not sell your upgrades. You want them for the bench. I don't think you sell them anyway, only deposit. But keep the upgrades on you and come over here, guys, and save your game. Down here, we've got another weapon. This is the Ripper. Again, do not use this weapon. As soon as we get to the shop again, we'll lob it in the storage. Yeah, just next to it, some ammo on the side there. What you'll find in almost every room which has got a new weapon, there's almost fixed, always fixed ammo for that weapon in that particular room which you'll find lying around. Yeah, this enemy here, he's plain dead. So what I normally do when I approach him, I pick up a spear from that dead enemy, enemy just before him and start off the fight with a spear to his chest and then finish him off afterwards. 
So when you interact with this upgrade bench, you will automatically get some power nodes from uh, de basically handing in them upgrades. That happens with every upgrade. Every upgrade, once you interact with the bench and sort of submit the upgrade, you'll get a free power node. So as you, as you can see, Plasma Cutter, we're purchasing all the rate of fires and all the damage upgrades. And then on the suit, we're buying HP, air and energy. I've got one power node left, so if you are one short, then you should still be able to get them upgrades. Just remember, get the rate of fire on the Plasma Cutter and all the damage upgrades. Come in here guys, you actually need to come in here anyway to trigger that for a side quest. Just go in to trigger that holographic projection and that will trigger that side quest guys. And update it. There you go, and then come in here, get that um, yeah, from the bathroom, get that audio log, his own teeth. And then grab this loot just around in the bathroom. That calibration room where we just got that holographic uh, video playing out uh, for scientific methods, a side mission. There's also a gold semiconductor in there, which we got from the war box. But you would have got that anyway following me. Yeah, when you come in here, that enemy will always drop from the ceiling. Just be ready to take him out. And then come over here and pull this over to you. When you get to the far end of this gondola right, just be ready because three enemies are going to spawn. Well, five in total, but two of them don't seem to spawn until you kill the first three or when you exit the gondola. Yeah, these guys, they will all, I think these can all spit at you. I think all five of them. They all have the ability to spit, so you want to try and get rid of them as quick as you can, otherwise they're going to be shooting you. You can see then I just dodged the spit. Yeah, otherwise they're going to be trying to spit at you while you're on the gondola. Yeah, they'll either spawn, they'll have come, either come from up there or from that vent on the other side. Yeah, three to five enemies spawn. So you stomp on them afterwards, just make sure you get all the loot. And there'll be another audio log in a second. You can loot that wall box. Yeah, and there it is, the audio log. That is Temples Log 02. Come up here, there's going to be an enemy around the corner in a second. Yeah, see, there's a pipe there on the wall as well. Yeah, this guy, just be ready to take him out. There's a wall box there and a safe point here if you need it. And the further around the corner, you should find the fuel station key cards on the table. And then on your way back down the ramp where you just came, yeah, you should get that video call trigger from Daniels. You want to come in here now into the fuel management room. In here you're going to find a power node, there it is on that wall box. Loot in a small container and a circuit breaker. In the circuit breaker you want to turn on the south refuel station. Don't turn off the air, you want to make sure you turn, turn off the lights and then use that to give power to the south refuel station. Now when you come around here guys, a enemy's going to drop down, there he is, he always drops down, take him out, yep, I lob the fan at him to take out his legs, and come down here, there'll be some item on the floor normally, and then slot that into place, there you go, we've refueled the engine south, now on your way back it's going to be two necro tentacle babies, that's one, and there's the other, yeah they normally come around the corner, there's two, there's a pipe on either side of the wall here which you can use to instant kill them, which I use. And there's always a spitter which spawns back down the bottom, so just be ready for him. There he is. I'm just trying to stay in cover so if he spits I can just hide back behind the wall. There you go, and then once you kill him, back over to the gondola guys.
be ready on your way back. So always be one that said that will spawn. Just on the left area. So you always spawn there. Just be ready for him. So you can take him out quickly. Come across here. Now we're going to do the other refuel station. The north one. Yep. So slot that down into place to enable it. And then on the way back, two enemies going to spawn. One will spawn in front of you. And the other behind. So be ready. Wait a few seconds. And then lob it. Turn around and then get rid of the second guy. There you go. Nice quickish way to get rid of these. Now once you head back to the control room, there's going to be a spawner there trying to resurrect an enemy. But because we killed that body earlier, remember we stomped on that body in the control room. So now we don't have to worry about him spawning another necro. So you come in here, destroy the fuse to unlock the door. Yeah, shoot it, don't don't melee it, you can take damage. Yep, it looks like I lost my pipe. Oh, there it is, I found it. Yeah, so it's going to be a spawner. He's all by himself. He couldn't make any new friends. Yeah, so just kill him. No more no more enemies, just him. And then come to the store, guys. Deposit the, the uh, ripper. Get rid of that weapon. You only get ammo, by the way, for weapons which are in your inventory. So you probably notice we're only finding plasma energy ammo. That's because that's the only weapon we've got in our current inventory. But if you've got other weapons in your current inventory, you'll get ammo for them as well. Pretty good. It's pretty good actually, because um, we're always going to be getting, we're always going to have plenty of ammo for the plasma cutter, and not ammo which we can't need. So we're just following the objective now. We're heading down to the decontamination room. Yeah, just make your way into the decontamination decontamination room guys and I'll see you in there Once we get into this corridor, there will be a text log in the end logger. The end locker, there you go. Chaos, that one's called. Yes, make sure you get that text log, guys. It's in that locker just past the upgrade bench. And you can come into the decontamination room. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm bringing some stasis modules, uh, canisters with me. Don't really need to. Yeah, you don't really need to, but just gives you a bit more stasis. Okay, so what's going to happen here, you're going to have four enemies spawn, but not all going to spawn at once. You're going to, first, you're going to have one of the tentacle, tentacle babies, one of them is going to spawn, and then shortly after, a second one will spawn, and then shortly after that, a normal Necronorf will spawn, and then shortly after that, a Necro Lizard will spawn. So just be ready. Yeah, first one of these. The thing about this bit is your your visibility is quite limited because of all the all the mist unfortunately so you can't quite see where they're spawning from you can hear them and if you've been observant and you're looking around sometimes you can see a vent break open or something like that so just make sure i mean this one you couldn't miss out i mean he dropped right in front of me so once you killed him now the last one's going to be a lizard guys remember there he goes you got two tentacle babies then a normal necro and then a lizard and that's it, got them all. Once killed all four, the decontamination sequence should, should end. And once you open the door and leave, guys, in the locker opposite should be the, should be the medium med pack somatic. So make sure you get that. And then once you come in this corridor, back up that end, there's actually a power node. But we're going to get it on the way back. The reason being, if you go there now, you're going to trigger two tentacle babies to spawn. Okay, and we just got another text log, guys. That is a rig transcript. It's just on the floor there. Yeah, a little crawl space, which you can't crawl through. And um, inside that crawl space was actually a bronze semiconductor, which I pulled to me, which you would have seen if quick enough. Yep, in this room. I just made a save, as you saw. 
going to grab a bit of loot and refill our stasis just there. Now what's going to happen here? Yes, ox ox oxygen tank floating in the air there and a medium med pack. Now once you get close to this gear module, an enemy is going to spawn from that vent. There he is. A lizard. Just be ready to take him out. Yeah, so you see this gear module, this one here, it's a vent just on the ceiling above which it spawns from. And it's normally when you get within a certain proximity of this one. What you have to do, you normally have to freeze them and then slot them into place. There's two of them you got to do. And here's the second one. This one again, when you get close enough, an enemy is going to spawn from down there. There you go. Just wait a minute and then a second, a second or two and then lob the explosive tank at them if you had one ready. So that's it, no more will spawn for the time being. So again, freeze this one and then slide it into place. Once you've slotted into place both the gear modules, come up to this terminal, guys, and interact with it. There you go. To interact, to um, enable gravity, I was going to say to interact with gravity. No, to enable it. There you go. Basically, start up the centrifuge. Yeah, but you'll also lose your air. There, so now I've got no, um, well now we have gravity, we've got to go down this uh, cargo lift and make our way around here. Now be very careful, this is spinning around like anti-clockwise, so you've got to wait for it to pass by you, then quickly run to the next gap. Once you've got to the second gap, an enemy will spawn from the third gap once you start making your way to it. So just run ahead to trigger him, or he's already come out, then wait for the centrifuge to come around and uh, kill him. There you go, and then quickly run to the third alcove. This third alcove, an enemy will drop down, so just be ready. Yeah, just be ready to stasis him, and then take him out. There's oxygen tank on the side there if you need it. Good idea to just fill it up there. And then quickly run to the fourth one, when safe to do so. This fourth alcove will have a, a lift in it. You can go round the centrifuge um, anti-clockwise, but um, yeah, we went we went around clockwise, didn't we? You can go around clockwise, but you'll die <laughs> because it's too big a run before the next alcove. Yep, and then once you get out of here, guys, on the top floor, there'll be a necro lizard waiting for you. So just make sure you're ready to take him out. Fill up your stasis recharge as you pass it, and then come in here. There you go. You should get your air back, and you're going to get grabbed here. Just shoot the weak spot to destroy it. Now we're coming to the end to get his power node. Yeah, this is that power node, which I said, if you come here earlier, when you first enter this outer corridor, two tentacle babies will spawn on your way back. But doing it at this, at this moment in time, they don't spawn. So it means two less enemies to kill. Right, and now we're just making our way back now, guys, to the control room. That's a random enemy, and I was quite lucky to avoid that. That's a random enemy. He likely won't spawn for you. Once back in the control room, we're going to open the shop once you can. And we're going to buy the Ripper upgrade if you haven't already. And yeah, we're going to sell some of our items. Yeah, buy the Ripper upgrade if you haven't already. I know we're not using these weapons, but the reason we're buying the upgrade is because you have to at some point, you need to buy all the upgrades 
for a trophy, but also when you take an upgrade to the bench, you would get a free power note. So it just if you're going to buy a power note, buy them instead to begin with. Uh, you'll see me doing it anyway. Entering zero gravity. Hey Hammond, I cracked the secure files. In here, there is a stasis recharge. You need three sets of turbine, I'm sure you can imagine. And then fly through. In here, there'll be a wall box. Now, once you interrupt the circuit breaker, yeah, you interact with this, you want to turn off the turbines and enable both the airlocks. But once you do so, a lizard's going to drop down, so just be ready to stasis him and then kill him. There you go, the turbines are now disabled, so you can get through there easily. There's sometimes some loot over there, that's why I'm looking. Uh, but once you're ready, come back up to Catwalk, guys, and exit the airlock. Once through here, there'll be a necro sack. There you go, yeah, I call them a necro sack. I think they're called tendrils, or something the game likes to refer to them as. I always just call them a sack. There'll be quite a few of them in the game. Basically, you have to shoot the sack in order to remove some of the necro growth so you can progress. Yeah, just got the flamethrower weapon. Of course, do not use the flamethrower. Yep, and here we go, some Callisto Protocol flashbacks. Luckily, this is the only time we do this in the game. Yeah, so you get the flamethrower. Of course, don't use it. We, When we get to a store again, we will lob it in the store. Uh, it does mean you are going to start getting ammo for it just because it's in our current inventory. It don't matter too much. Now, these enemies, which are stuck to the walls, them ones, there's another type, but these ones, yeah, shoot that sack above it. They don't hurt you unless you get close, so there's no need to try and kill them. Yep, once you come into this room, guys, get that audio log on that bench there. That is Tempest Log 03, and there's also a power node in the wall box in this room. Yep, and then come in here and use a little cargo lift. Now on this floor, if you look left, there should be some loot just over there. In here, there should be some more loot and an upgrade bench. Yeah, this, you should get a power node because you had that ripper upgrade, so you should get an extra power node. And now what you want to do, on the suit, you want to upgrade the air, the duration, the size, and the air. So you should have power nodes times four, enough to do that. And there's going to be a sack you need to shoot to progress. Now you've probably seen there's quite a few fight extinguishers around in this bit. You need them. But don't be too close when you throw one because it will damage you, the blast. Now it's going to be a new enemy type, these like little ants. I call them necro ants. Yeah, you, you use the fight extinguisher, you either have to shoot them or lob something explosive at them, like a fight extinguisher. That's it. There should be eight of them. They always come in batches of eight. So just be careful. It's very annoying when you go for no damage run. And then they spawn. In here, there is a somatic, guys. So grab that, the Ripper Blade somatic. Yep, and then grab all the other bits in this room. Now, once you come in this room and then go back out, this Necromorph will spawn. He'll be playing dead. So just shoot at him, get his attention, and then finish him off. Over there. Is some credits on that crate. You can either use Kinesis to pull it to you or run over to it. Now, another new enemy type down here. This is a pregnant necro. Yep, they do breed, believe it or not. Yeah, this is a pregnant one. Now, if you shoot its belly, more of them little ants are going to spawn. So you need to try and kill it without shooting its belly. All you need to do is take off a leg and then one or two arms and that will kill it. Just try not to shoot its belly, like I say, because either a tentacle baby will spawn from its belly that's later on but this early in the game you're always going to get them annoying little ants yep and they can come into this room and you can get a stasis pack and the loot and the stasis recharge on the wall if you need more stasis and then come in here shoot the two necro sacks to gain access and you can get the gold semiconductor on the floor in here yeah the the pregnant necros it doesn't matter if you shoot the belly when they're dead it doesn't explode it only explodes when they're still alive yeah, now that guy playing dead, if you just shoot him through the door, he'll try to get through and the door will kill him for you. Teamwork. Yep, and the stasis storm run through, of course. 
Now it's going to be more necro ants in a second, but it's also going to be a spitting, a spitting necro. So what I've shown you then was that this pipe is normally on the ceiling there. Yeah, so get the explosive canister, be ready to lob it at them. Kill that spitter, and then kill the other two or any remaining necro ants. My plan was to detonate that explosive canister when I threw that first one, but didn't quite work. So that would have normally killed them all. But yeah, didn't quite work. But yeah, I impaled him. I'm not sure if he dropped anything. Maybe I already got it. I was just trying to see if he was going to drop out. I think I've already got it from him. Or it's just dropped below. Yep, so it's a save point here. This is going to be the last sort of a main area, main room we're going to be completing before the end of this chapter. The engine room. It's going to be a sort of semi big encounter here. So you're going to have three enemies to begin with, three necros. You can see all these in front of you. So three necros. Remember, take out the legs and then the arms. And if you need to, or if you want to, to save some ammo, you can always just take a spear off the enemies and use it on another enemy. So once you kill them three, a pregnant one will spawn at the back. Remember again, try not to shoot his belly because otherwise loads of them little ants are going to spawn and they're annoying. That's it. Once you kill them, first three necromorphs and the pregnant one, no more will spawn for the time being so you're free to loot the area. There are a few pipes and spears so that you can instant kill enemies. Uh, but once you kill them four, the next bunch is actually going to be yeah, it's going to be a lot more. You're going to have three spawn, and then you're going to have another three and a necro lizard. So the next bunch of enemies, yeah, you're going to have seven all together. So we're just going to just finish and looting up the area first. There is still a power node in this area, but I get it at the end when we make our way up to the terminal. Yeah, once you've done the engine room part where you have to slot the circuit breaker. Yeah, that's when the enemy spawn and then after that you have to go and interact with the terminal. So I'm just bringing these pipes a bit closer to where I'm going to be standing. So I've, I choose a corner where the enemy is not going to spawn behind you. So yeah, there should be three or four spears in the area. I don't think I've got them all, but I've got enough. Yeah, there's normally one on that table as well. There's one over there. There's another one. You've got some explosive canisters. Yeah, sometimes some loot on that table. And then you come up here, grab a loot on the table, grab a stomp box, break that, grab a power cell, and then go and lob it in the slot, guys. Once you slot this power cell, that's going to trigger the next wave of enemies. So be ready, it's going to be seven in total. Like I say, about three spawn to begin with, and then the other three, and the lizard spawns shortly after. So they can spawn from that vent on the floor next to you. That's the nearest vent they can spawn from. So just make sure you're keeping an eye on that. They can spawn at that ramp as well, that ramp on your left. There'll be quite a few spitters that will spawn. So just make sure you're keeping an eye out for any distant enemies. Although they're not close, they may spit acid at you. So just make sure you always try to keep some an obstacle near you so you can hide behind it. Yeah, there you go. You sat enemy at the top there. Oh, he spat acid at me, but luckily he missed. Well, luckily I dodged. Just remember, a lizard enemy is going to spawn in a minute and he's going to come flying over to you from nowhere. Look, there he comes. Look at that. Luckily, I lobbed that uh, stasis canister down. Otherwise, I may not have seen him coming. There he is. Popped his head off. And that is it. That's all the enemy's done. So he's going to make our way up to the top now, uh, top corner. But on the way up there, just going to grab this loot from the enemies. Yeah, we're also going to grab the power node. Yeah, you'll find a somatic as well. Yeah, so you come in here, there might be a little bit of loot if it appears. And there's a locker. And the near locker is a wall box. There you go, another power node. And continue up this ramp. I forgot about that explosive canister there. Yeah, stomp box here, and then on the chair near the terminal. It's a somatic. Pick it up, flamethrower fuel somatic, and then interrupt the terminal guys to progress the story.
Yep, and all we're doing now. Yeah, it's going to make our way back. We're going to unlock a shortcut door. And we're going to continue on to the tram station, guys. We're going to call a tram. And we're going to travel to the bridge. And I'll meet at the bridge. Give me all the data you have. I'll try to adjust course. Isaac, you disable the tram lockdown from engineering. I'll open up the bridge station. Meet me there. We need to work on this together. Arriving at the bridge. Isaac, I'm looking at the ADS cannons. They're a mess. I'm gonna need your help. I am not losing the Ishimura. Not now. The Ishimura Hammond or the marker? That artifact they found? Don't bullshit us. CEC knew all along about the marker, didn't they? Isn't that why you're really here? Corporate wouldn't send the Ishimura for some off-the-books mining. But alien technology, yeah, that fits. And how does losing my team fit into this theory? Hey, knock this shit off. We're into the debris field. We get the ADS back together, or it's over. Then meet me at the captain's nest. Daniels? Fine. But I'm going through the ship reports, Hammond. I'm getting some answers. <laughs> Okay, so once you get to the store, guys, yeah, everything that's happened up to this point is all pretty much story related. Even that massive arm bursting through the window, which can't damage you, it seems. Yeah, you're going to deposit the flamethrower, keep some plasma energy and some stasis packs like always. Put any ad additional stasis packs into storage. And then sell everything else. Obviously, keep all your upgrades on you. And once you've done all that guys, you can also buy the flamethrower upgrade, the jellified hydrazine. You can buy that for 11,500. And then come in here. And there'll be a very brief hull breach. And then just down there guys, you say audio log. Just down them steps on the right, that's the bridge attack. Yeah, so grab that. And then you can also just grab these items in the area. And then we're gonna head down into captain's nest. Now, in the captain's nest, this is not critical, it's not going to void any trophies, but if you want to make sure you get as many audio logs as possible, do not interact with the red terminal in this room we're going to be going into. Yeah, so going into the captain's nest in a second, there's going to be two text logs which you can pick up on the right. One's going to be called Eckhard's Clearance, and the other one is going to be called More Time. There'll be two terminals and there'll be a terminal where Hammond is next to, stood next to, and there'll be a terminal on the opposite side, but it'll be red. Do not interrupt that red terminal. What what happens if you do? It begins a side quest. But if you begin the side quest here, 
you cannot begin it at another spot later. And if you begin the side quest at this this other spot later on, it also triggers a audio file. But this audio file does not trigger if you enable if you trigger the side quest here, pretty much. So all you have to do is do not trigger the side quest here. It doesn't matter. You can still complete some of the steps along the way. It's main, It's the one for collecting the rigs, which you can still do. Yes, yeah, so in here, get the two text logs on the side. There is one, a card's clearance, and there's the other, more time. Yeah, pick that one up once it lets you do so. And then head over to Hammond. Yep, see that red terminal on the other side? Do not interact with it at all, guys. I've said it enough times, I'm not going to keep saying it, because you're probably getting annoyed by now. How many times have I said that? So get through this dialogue, head back up top, guys, and there's going to be your first sort of a... Uh, it's sort of like a mini boss, the brute. Yeah, going to be his first mini boss. Isaac, about what Davey said. I don't know about any illegal mining or the market. I swear, I'm just here for a repair mission. Look, Hammond, I don't know you or Daniels well enough to judge, but CEC had to know about the marker. The company maybe, but shit like that's above my pay grade. Look, we can get into it later. You'll need a way down to those junction boxes. You can turn the atrium elevators back on from security. You'll have full access. I found a CEC executive key card. I'll upgrade your clearance. And you upgraded yours already? Yeah, just in case. And Isaac? I heard something up there. Something big. Watch your back. Here we go. So you see this door, once you get close enough, it's going to trigger a big mini boss type enemy to spawn. What I do, I come over here, just mash them if you haven't already. They don't damage you, don't worry. Right, I'm going to bait him around this broken hole in the middle. If you don't bait him around this, he can normally, he can sometimes catch up with you, like he can't run away quick enough. And if he ever stops, like so, and steps back, he's going to lob something at you. So just be ready to grab it with your projectile or not but what you need to do is do not attack him basically don't damage him at all for about 20 seconds and you'll get that dialogue if you don't get that dialogue then it's because you attacked him attacked him you need to actually avoid attacking him until that little dialogue triggers guys otherwise you can't get it it's just like it's like an extra audio log it's called bridge attack um, sorry, not bridge attack. It's called shoot it in the back. Yeah, bridge attack was the early one. Yeah, it's called shoot it in the back. Yeah, basically don't attack him for about 20 seconds. And you, get, you can stay sim as you saw I did. Just don't damage him. And um, to kill him, yes, all you do, you, you stay sim and then go up behind him and shoot two of his weak spots. Basically, make two of his limbs, cut them off by shooting the weak spots where they attach to the body and that will kill him. And then once you've done so guys, come into this back security room. Loot the wall box, grab the video log file near the upgrade bench. That video log file was Captain's Fate and that's just on the floor near the upgrade bench. And then interact with the bench guys and you want to upgrade the plasma cutter reload, the SP1 and the SP2 on the plasma cutter. And then once you've done so guys, Interact with the terminal nearby to in, to um, enable these cargo lifts, and then come down into admin systems and the com RA cargo lift, and then take it down to floor two. 
Yeah, save your game down here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit delayed there with the commentary. Um, I'm already talking about it and we've already done all the steps. But just trying to keep up. You will know what I mean. So when you get down here, yeah, there'll be a whole breach. There's a few items just floating outside the breach here. Just the floating credits and the stomp box. Then come into way into the storage room, there'll be a power node on the wall. Make sure you get the power node. Come into records office just here, there'll be a weapon, the contact beam. This is weapon number five, there'll be a bit of ammo lying around. It's normally on the desk, but sometimes when you come in, the during the airlock, it'll suck, it sort of suck the ammo out and it'll be near the door rather than on the bench. Yep, and then come in here into mining administration. Now when you first open the door, there'll be two necros. Just wait a moment and take them out. Only two. Take out the legs and the limbs. Yeah, as you can see, now we're now it seems we're having to take out three limbs to kill him, rather than two in the first few chapters. And the first room you want to enter is this one, main fuses. In here, grab the bronze semiconductor, and then grab the um, loot from the wall box, and then shoot the fuse on the wall to unlock the store ahead. Admin server maintenance, which we're going into now. Yeah, I didn't mention, did I? We also got um, security clearance level two. We got that from Hammond earlier in the captain's nest. And then in this room, guys, there'll be a power node on the wall. And there's also a text log on the desk, tracking infection. Yeah, I seem to pick it up at the same time I open the power node box. Yeah, make sure you get that text log, tracking infection. These electrical floors, the electric isn't always connected to them. Sometimes you can wait for the electric to stop and it'll give you time to run across uh, before it starts again. Grab the loot in this room. There's also a upgrade bench in here if you want to upgrade anything. We're at the point now where if you've got quite a few power nodes, they're sort of to spare. Because um, now what we're going to be, be doing is upgrading stuff as we um, upgrade more, as we unlock more upgrade paths for it. So there's two pipes here. You can see one up there, but it seems to seems to have dropped off. But it'll be there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Got it. And there's one there as well. Now there's two necro tentacle babies here. Two of them, yeah, tentacle baby enemies. I'm going to use these to kill them in one hit. There's one of them. And then I'll get the other pipe. There you go to the second, that's it. Once you kill them both, stomp this stomp box, grab the loot they dropped, and then come to this far corner where you find another stomp box. And then once you're ready, interrupt the circuit breaker, enable ADS cannons, yep, and then quickly sprint back to the cargo lift. You'll see a few enemies, but as long as you're quick here, you should be able to get away before they start attacking you. Yes, two bodies in that, two or three bodies in that room, which the spawners will try and resurrect. But if you destroy the bodies beforehand, then the spawners will come straight for you, meaning that they're going to block your way when you try and escape. But leaving the bodies, the spawners will be too busy trying to resurrect them, giving you time to run past and escape without having to fight them. Yeah, that's a philosophy around that room, pretty much. Around why we do it the way we do it. So once back in the cargo lift, now we're going down to floor three. Yeah, somebody will scream. Save your game here. This next room, I'm going to have to explain this to you in text on the screen. Yeah, so first of all, grab the bronze semiconductor on a small table 
and uh, once you enter it will automatically trigger that audio lock believe us yep okay so you see this ring on the floor guys and it's got some it's got symbols of a footprint on it and handprints yeah basically the footprints means a stomp which is r2 and the handprint means a melee which is r1 now you have to stand in the circle and input a certain combinations of melees and stomps believe it or not and there's three different combinations two combinations each trigger a audio log these audio logs are not needed by the way you don't have to do this for a trophy um, it just gets you two audio logs and it also gets you two power notes so yeah like I say I'm going to put this on screen you get two text logs one will be called unknown and the other one will be called strange shanty and then you get two power notes basically the way I'm doing it I'm doing it three times and each time you fail you need to go back outside the ring and then come back in and that normally reset it so you can try again so first of all I'm doing melee stomp 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 melee stomp melee stomp 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 melee stomp oh and I've done it already so um, I'm not gonna have time to mention it now so yeah what I do guys I just put it on screen all the three different combinations um, but you can also find them all in the text guide as well basically just do all them combinations within that ring to get the two audio logs and the two power nodes and then come outside open this door by shooting the fuse through the window at the back and then grab the pulse rifle upgrade very important yeah get the pulse rifle upgrade and then make way into electrical systems now in here there's going to be a lot of electrical flooring on the bottom a lot of electrical traps but if you can get an enemy to go on it when the electrical is um, being zapped it will kill the enemy so there you've got a tentacle baby they come around this corner there'll be another tentacle baby and a normal necro Yep, and then normally once you go in a bit further, it will spawn another necro. The necro he might spawn, he might spawn behind you, or he might spawn near the exit, like he, uh, sorry, near the entrance, like he did for me. Then just on the left, it depends where you are really. When you pass that sort of barrier, which triggers the spawn, and then once you get past this corner, two tentacle babies going to spawn. So just be ready. Like I said, there was a ne another necro that spawned, and um, but I normally come around to get rid of them too. And uh, yeah, there he is. You normally have time to do so. Yep, he's dead. And just between there, guys, is a hidden item. 1500 credits you can grab. And make sure these tentacle babies are dead. It doesn't matter if you use stasis here, there is a stasis recharge on the wall opposite. Just there. Just make sure you got full stasis and then come down here, guys. There's going to be another one of them brute mini bosses. Just again, stasis it and then run around its back and shoot its weak points. Just shoot two weak points to um, cut off two limbs that will kill it. These guys, I did mention it earlier, but they drop power nodes when you kill them. So once you kill him, make sure you loot him as he drops a power node. Yep, and then grab the loot in the area. What you have to do up ahead is you have to shoot some loose electrical lines to um, stop them to make it safe as pass and then you have to activate the ADS cannon on the nearby circuit breaker and then head back guys just make sure on your way back you refill your stasis okay I'm seeing a power reroute from the electrical systems just watch the outlets the grid's unstable that's two one more system and we'll have power for the ADS Medsci reports. They're a fucking horror show. These things mold any dead tissue into a new form. One kind infects corpses. You go back up to floor one now. Back up to floor one. And there's likely going to be some enemies here. Now there's going to be two necro lizards. So just be careful and try to get rid of them. You can go back into the lift if you need to, just for a bit of cover, and try to let them come to you. 
And then once you've done so, you're gonna go back to the nearby shop, you're gonna deposit the contact beam, so you stop getting ammo, ammo for that, just put into storage. And um, you're gonna keep a stack of plasma energy in your stasis packs like always. Sell everything else. You will need full stasis for an upcoming battle, so just make sure you have got a few stasis packs on you, uh, just in case. And you wanna buy the contact beam upgrade for 12,000, which is called the Super Cemetery Tether. Yeah, so sell everything at the store, except for stasis packs and some plasma energy like always. Buy the contact beam upgrade. Basically, any, if there's any weapon upgrades in the shop at any time, just buy them. Because then when you interrupt the upgrade bench next, they'll change into power nodes, basically. And then once you've done that, you're going to head into the lift on the opposite side of the main atrium into water purification cargo. Once you get down here guys, there'll be a, a audio log just on the corner here near the lift called um, Looking for Elizabeth. Pick that one up and then come in here. Now there's going to be a pregnant enemy in here, so just be ready. Yep, you would be fighting three enemies at once. Yeah, you've got a pregnant enemy and then a normal necromorph at the back. Yeah, so just be ready, just around the corner. If you run around, you're going to run straight into it. So let's try and nudge forward just to trigger it. There you go. Stay sit if you need to. Take out its legs. Remember, try not to shoot its sack. There you go. And um, take out both its arms to kill it. There you go. There's some more boxes on the on the wall that you can loot for some more loot. You can loot for more loot. Come over to circuit breaker and enable the ADS cannons. Now that should be all, A3, all three ADS cannons activated. So now I can go through exterior access. You want to come into the EVA prep room. Inside here you'll find a somatic for the intermediate engineer rig. You'll also find a gold semiconductor. That's on one of the seats, I think we've got that first. And then come in the cargo lift. Yeah, then pregnant enemies, even if you shoot it belly even once it, that can be that can trigger it to burst because of that burning ability that the plasma got has you know when you that doesn't really do much damage if I'm honest um, but if you shoot a belly with that obviously it'll keep burning and I don't think bellies take much to pop them so yeah you've got to be really careful one just one missed shot on the belly can be the difference between them giving birth there on the spot or not giving birth at all. Yeah, so um, interact with that security phone, guys, to trigger trigger an audio log called Hold On. Yep, and then after that, we're going to save the game. All right, so now we're going to do the ADS cannon sequence. I think in the original, there's a trophy for doing this with 50% integrity remaining. But there's no such trophy on this. So these asteroids, which are coming down, an infinite supply of asteroids, they can damage you if you're too close to the impact, by the way. Uh, but what you need to do is interact with each of these panels, and then you need to aim and press X. Yeah, don't press R2, because that will shoot your weapon. Just aim with your weapon, but then press X. And basically, you've got to just shoot, I think it's five asteroids with each cannon, and that calibrates it. There you go, 100%. Move to the next one. There'll be oxygen on the side walls if you keep an eye out. So just keep an eye on your oxygen. You don't want to die because you suffocated. Yep, so the second one, I always hover just above them. It seems to be safer, because then if any asteroids do crash down, it's normally on the 
on the sort of path in the middle and up here you sort of out of the way of any impact damage so again five asteroids now on your way to the third and final one two tentacle babies going to spawn they spawn at the bottom one will spawn from a little alcove just before the third one and one will spawn from an alcove just behind it there it is there's the first one and remember one will spawn from just in front at the bottom and there comes the second one Yep, yeah, now them first two ADS cannons we've done, they're, they're currently shooting asteroids, so so there's not much chance of one hitting you at this point. I mean, it's, it's very unlikely. I mean, that's why I'm just sat down there. And then do the third one, guys. And then once you've done the third one, just make sure you remember to pick up White's rig just past the third cannon on the left. There you go, that's all you need to do. Yeah, see that purple glowing item? That's White's rig. Yep, so make sure you pick it up. That's it. Then once you're done so, guys, make your way back down to the cargo lift. But I'll come back just for the cargo lift because there's going to be some annoying little enemies waiting for you. Nicole Brennan. Medical is a sanctuary. All survivors, please join us. Nicole, I'm going back to medical. Makes sense. I'll head to the crew deck and look for survivors from the bridge. I'll be in touch. The crew deck. Wonder if he knows something we don't. Yeah, so be very careful. There's, these guys, they're not ants, they're like little parasites, they're more, they're stronger. So it fights things through, it will not kill these. That's why I'm doing it this way. You want to just come around the corner. Once you see one or two of them, you want to stasis, and then kill them while in stasis. Yeah, I got very close then. Yeah, it, it's safer just to use stasis on them and kill them that way. Yeah, so just make sure you've got a few stasis to use if you need to. Yep, and then come up here. Yeah, we're in chapter 5 now, of course. Uh, chapter 5, yeah, we got the trophy just earlier. Cannon fodder. Yeah, back up here. Now, there might be some random enemies here, so just be careful. Yeah, we're going to go to the store now. Yeah, there might be enemies in here, so again, be careful coming back in this corridor. Might be a few randoms in here. Right, I'm just going to interrupt the store then and just do our normal things. Sell everything but keep some stasis packs and some plasma energy. Uh, but another thing you want to do is you want to buy the suit level 3 now. We just got the intermediate suit if you remember. So now you can buy suit level 3 which will give you 22 slots and 10% armor. And we can also head into the security clearance level 2 room now. Bridge hall storage room. There's nothing of importance in there, but some good items. You've got a gold semiconductor in there and a lot of loot. And then what we're going to do then, we're going to go back to the tram, guys, and ride it to medical.
now arriving at medical. The chemical lab. What? You said the chemical lab? I, I can I can barely hear you. these doors and I'll find her myself. Are you that selfish? You might let something in. Or out. Shit. So, you've decided to be difficult. Take a seat. I'll deal with you momentarily. Okay guys, once you get around the corner, these two will always be here waiting for you once you come back here at this point in the story. Yeah, these two tentacle babies, they'll always be here waiting. So, yeah, just lob stasis in the middle if you can to get them both for one. And then quickly take them down. Stasis recharge there if you need it. So, yeah. It doesn't matter if you waste too many stasis on them, enemies. There's plenty, remember, there's plenty recharge stations around the medical bay. Yeah. We're going to need the fire extinguisher soon, it's for this chapter. So let's make sure you know where the few are. And this is new enemy type, the Guardian. Freeze, that's for freezing. I think that's for use of stasis on 50 enemies. Yeah, so for these guys, you need to shoot the tentacles. Do not go too close. If you go too close to them, I think these are called Guardians. Yeah, if you go too close to these Guardians, they will instant kill you. So never go too close. And they'll keep spitting out his little tentacles which will shoot at you. So if it spits out any tentacles, always focus on them. Otherwise they'll just keep shooting at you. You can either shoot the tentacles or you can just stomp on them. You actually need to stomp on 10 of these for a trophy. Um, so you don't have to actually stomp on all 10 now. You can if you want to. Just let it keep spawning them and stomping on them. Um, but there'll be quite a few of these throughout the game so you'll just naturally stomp on probably 10 anyway but if not when we get to a final one in the game I will be pointing it out to you so like I say them guardians all you do is shoot the tentacles and normally when you shot all five tentacles two times that normally kill them and then when you shoot that sack in the middle guys there you go shooting that sack in the middle will normally spawn an enemy yeah there's fight extinguisher so there's quite a few, I mean, it's, you might not always find one in the same room you're in, but normally if you look at nearby rooms, you can normally find one. And yep, that was lucky. Yep, that's that lizard that spawned from shooting that sack. So you've got to be very careful. He will always spawn if you shoot that sack. So probably not best to run away like I did in a room, be a coward. Just turn around and face him one-on-one, -on -one, man on man, and get rid of him quickly, just, be, just so you don't give him a chance to um, ambush you somewhere, like he almost did for me. And then what we're going to do, we're going to head upstairs and um, well, back up the cargo lift and into the observation room. We've got to shoot the necro sack a few times, but just be careful because sometimes when you shoot it, it will spawn an enemy. One of the lizards. Once you get back on here, there'll be a new file which is spawned, uh, Mercer's Volunteer. And it's on a table just on the left near where you come in. Yeah, that one there. Yeah, that's a new audio log which is spawned. I think it only spawns in this chapter. And, and a buff. I have to record these days. Um, the old memory, you know. 
Yeah, so you're coming through here now. Oh, thought I was going to have to get rid of him, but he ran away. Don't blame him. Yeah, you're going to come in here now, guys. Now we've got clearance level 2, we can unlock the stream. In here, you're going to find a power node and a somatic. Yeah, the somatic was for line racks, that was on the desk. And you've got a power node in the wall box there. And then we're going to come back over here and you want to save your game. If not already. Yeah, save your game here. Okay, got power node here, guys. Straight in front of you. And you can shoot that door fuse and unlock that door. Now, you just make sure you've got a fire extinguisher in this room ready. Yep, and it's along the middle, just like where I was pointing. Yeah, basically near the exit door in that room we're just in, we're going to have to sprint through there soon. And there's going to be a new enemy type chasing you, uh, which you can't kill. But right near the exit door, there's going to be eight necro ants waiting for you. So you want to make sure you've got a fire extinguisher or just basically something which can explode ready to lob at them and kill them. If you've got one, that's fine, but if you've got two, it's a better, just in case you don't get them all. But even if you've just got one, you can lob one. If they're not all dead, stasis them and then just run past the ones that stasis. Or kill any that are frozen and run past. But the thing is, you have to come back through that room later and any necro ants you don't kill. They'll be the waiting for you later on. But the thing is, later, there's no pressure. There's nobody chasing you. So you've got a bit more time. But you do need to get rid of the, some of them. Either stasis them or lob a canister. Just so you can get by about damage. But yeah, if you just watch ahead the next five minutes, you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, but yeah, look what's seen here, guys. And after this, it's going to be Necro Hunter. Basically, when you kill them, they regenerate their body parts. But I think there's only one in the game. Sort of like a little mini boss, and it's just basically related to the story. You encounter him at certain times throughout the game. And I haven't fully explored the cause of death as that missing factor. Dismemberment. Now I think you're on the right track there. Try and relax, Mr. Clark. Convergence is so close. Maybe your death will tip the balance. Yeah, one this, once this jumps in, just take out its legs and its arms, and then basically once you've taken off all its limbs, it will start regenerating. At that point, grab a loot in the room, and Daniel should start a audio call, which will trigger the unlock of the door. The door's currently locked, um, but you can stasis him. But what I do, I take out all its limbs, let him regenerate, just start the process of the door opening. Then once it's unlocked, I take out all its limbs again, that's it, and then stasis him. There you go, it's unlocked. So now stasis him. There you go, and go for it, guys. So once you come back through here, remember, make sure you've got an extinguisher ready. There you go. And the necro ants, there they are. I've got a second one just in case. Yeah, see, there's one left, but I could have just used stasis and shot him. But yeah, they'll all be, all be near his exit door. But you need to be quick so necro hunter will start chasing you. You can always turn around and stasis necro hunter if you want to. Yep, storyteller. That's for getting 75 logs. Any 75, but we just triggered that story log. That's why it popped without doing anything. Yeah, so once you're back in here, you'll find all the doors locked down. But now we're going to actually head into the emergency room. Yeah, so in here. Once you go a few steps in, an enemy will drop down ahead. But if you go back into the room you're just in, yeah, come back and kill him from here. If you're not in the same room and kill him, and wait about 10 seconds, no more enemies will spawn. 
but if you're in the room when you kill him a few enemies will spawn as well as the necro hunter but as you can see nobody else has spawned so yeah that's just a little trick there to bypass uh, spawning any more enemies yeah if you if you kill that first enemy while in the room it will cause other enemies to spawn but if you kill if you as soon as it spawns back out and then just kill it from that room and then wait there for a few seconds and yeah it seems to despawn them all stop them from spawning so once you're in here that audio log on that bed on the left that's Dr. Kynes Dementia make sure you grab that and then come to this room emergency equipment storage and grab the weapon guys the line gun yeah there's also a power node in here on the wall just got that yeah grab the line gun Yep, we come back out here. Now it's going to be one of them guardians on the wall ahead. There it is, just left that doorway. Yeah, let's just be ready. What I normally do, yeah, just stasis it. Stasis it and then take out his tentacles. There you go. There's one of the tentacles, which is spat out. Yeah, like I say, you've got to destroy his tentacles two times normally. There you go, another tentacle. You don't have to stomp him, you can just shoot the tentacles of them tentacles that it spits out. But because there's this trophy for stomping 10 enemies, yeah, just try and stomp them if you can. But if you're not going to get there in time, you think, or they're too close to it and you don't want to risk an instant kill, then just shoot them. Yeah, make sure you use that stasis recharge when you come back in here. And now there'll be a text log on the southeast corner desk. That'll be Harris's choice. Safe your game here and then head into this nearby office. Now in this nearby office, first interact with the panel to trigger some story, and then grab the text log off the desk, that's Mercer's journal, and also grab the Ruby Semiconductor, and any of the loot. Yeah, don't hang around too much now. Obviously, as you can see now, it's all toxic. Yeah, when you come back into this corridor, there'll be a pregnant necro. So just be ready, shoot it in its legs, and then take out its arms. Yep, and then head to the far corner, and you'll find a new audio lock. This is sterile instruments. Yeah, come to the emergency room. The necro hunter will be in here now. So just be ready to uh, stun him, or freeze him with stasis. And come into the clinic, making way back to the security station. In here, there'll be a tentacle baby. So just be ready to stasis it, and then take it out. Yeah. Otherwise, when we come back in here later, that will still be around waiting for you. So yeah, take it out now. Come in here, and then you want to interact with the live support terminal. Or interact with it to um, interact with this, trigger the system, reactivate it. And then once you can, interact the shop and um, deposit the line gun, guys. Keep any stasis packs, keep a stack of plasma energy, sell everything else, and then you want to buy the line gun upgrade. That would be the ionized capacitor. Buy that for 11500 Yeah, so make sure you deposit the line gun, so stop getting ammo for it. 
and then if you, you should have enough money but you want to buy four power nodes yep buy that yeah four power nodes if you can you should have plenty of money I mean I've got what 25 grand remaining should have plenty of dough Yeah, at this point, I'm just keeping an eye out for random enemies. Now, there's a bronze semiconductor there in that debris. And then coming here, there'll be loads of lockers you can loot. And of course, you want to save your game. There's another little mini boss coming up, but it's quite easy if you know the good way to do it. Level three, security clearance required. First of all, grab the um, item in the middle. Yeah, the story item, the liquid nitrogen, that will start the story, which you have to wait for. That just start the dialogue. And then while you're waiting for the dialogue to finish, loot the area. There should be loot in the corners and also fill up your stasis via that recharge terminal. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stand here. What's gonna happen, the guy will be talking in glass, and you see them vents I'm showing you, there's one and the other one was on the opposite side. Yep, three tentacle babies gonna spawn. Two will come from one, and then one from the other. And the hunter is gonna come from that trap door. He's gonna from, come from that trap door once Mercer has finished talking. What you have to do here, you have to freeze the um, necro hunter inside that central chamber where the liquid nitrogen was. And then once he's in there, you have to run up to where Mercer is talking and interact with a terminal to close the chamber and freeze him. That's how you end this fight. So what I do, when he comes out of trapdoor, I shoot one leg twice, make sure it's the same leg, because at a current damage level with the plasma cutter, our current upgrades, basically in this difficulty, three shots to a leg will cut it off. So you're going to shoot it twice, then you're going to wait for him to get in the chamber, then you're going to shoot it again. Yeah, that will take out a leg. Then you're going to freeze him. So, one, two, there we go. Then wait for him to get close to you in the chamber. And one more, there we go. Freeze him. Now quickly, one up here. Always come on the side on the right. There seems to be, I think on the right one, there's only one tentacle baby. And come in here and interact with the terminal, guys. And that'll be it, he should be trapped. Now these, there'll be three tentacle babies. But once the boss has been trapped, they'll despawn. As you can see, they run away. Yep, there they go. Go on. Shoot. Yeah, I told them. Yep, they'll run away once you've trapped him. So you don't even have to fight them. That's it. Yeah, so shoot him in the leg, guys, twice. Then wait for him to come in the chamber. Shoot him one more time. And then freeze him. Then take the path on the right. Enter them back control room and interact with the terminal. Quite simple. Once you've done that, there'll be a story. While you're waiting, you can go and refill. I mean, I should be doing it now. Go and refill your stasis. Oh, I must have heard myself. Yeah, go and refill your stasis. And then once your window comes down, pick up the tissue sample. There you go. True believer, that's for completing chapter five. Yeah, you want to, that tissue sample is not needed for story. It's needed for a side quest, guys. And you need to do all the side quests for a trophy anyway, or the side missions. And one of the side missions actually gets you, it basically gets you an upgrade for your stasis, so that it, it damages enemies and freezes them in place, almost. So yeah, it's a pretty good upgrade. 
and the stasis, that upgraded stasis is really good for killing them little parasites because normally one stasis will kill any parasites which are within which have been affected by that stasis so it really helps just on your way back keep an eye out guys keep an eye out for any random enemies which might spawn yeah that door there it leads it eventually leads to a power node but I don't bother there's too many rooms to go through too many chances of random enemies spawning and it's just for one power node we end up after getting all trophies we've probably got about 40 power nodes remaining anyway not like we need them all Once you get back down here guys, basically what we're trying to do is we want to interact with this. That tissue sample we picked up earlier, you need to put it in there. It's part of a side quest. And the reason I'm being a bit cautious is because you may encounter some random enemies on your way here. All the fixed enemies, they're normally during the story route. If you ever do any optional exploring, which is not on the story route, any enemies you encounter, they're always going to be random enemies, pretty much. This chapter is actually quite long, yeah, it's quite a long one this, and uh, some very, very tricky encounters. Yes, yeah, so the stasis recharge nearby if you want to use it. Yeah, while you're waiting for that tissue sample, I did consider, because um, there's two rooms in there, but we looted them much earlier in the guide. But I did consider that we could have actually looted them during that bit you know why you're waiting for a tissue sample but we just did it where we did you know it's not a big problem I mean it would have saved what 60 seconds so probably if you're speedrunning this it would be best to leave them rooms until this point in the story but we're just making our way back up now and we're going back into the intensive care unit uh, to continue this side mission. I did have a bit of a play of these side missions, you know, when was best to do what step and so on. But yeah, this the places I do them in the story just seem like the best place. This particular side mission, premeditated mold practice, this is one of them ones you want to do as soon as possible. Uh, just because like I say it, it leads you to the upgraded stasis module which is really really helpful so it's my aim to try and get that as quick as we can with the least amount of backtracking yeah so it's in this room you've got to interact with the panel ahead you don't have to watch watch the whole thing just trigger it yeah press X to play trigger the hologram the recording and then you can leave yep tentacle stuck in the door That's it. Make sure you complete that objective. And when an objective says it's inactive, it's because you cannot currently reach that area. It doesn't mean you failed it, by the way, which it looks like. Yeah, it just means you can't, you don't have access to that area yet. Yeah, that's a random enemy. Little tentacle baby waiting for me. Okay, so all we're doing now, guys, is heading back to the tram station and we're heading to the hangar cargo tram control. I'm going to head into hydroponics.
Yeah, so what we're doing here now, guys, we're just coming back to that room. We just went back to that room just to um, get a power node from earlier. Yeah, that's a tramway storage room, if you remember that part from way early in the game. It's this room just here. Yeah, you've got a power node just one, uh, times one in that wall box there. And then you make your way back to where we were and get back on track. Just do the normal stuff at the store, sell everything, but keep your stasis packs, keep your plasma energy, and keep your weapon upgrades. Sell everything else. And then just loot the area during the story dialogue. Let's hope it works. storage. Even if it was, the Leviathan would devour you. You're Elizabeth Cross, right? This Leviathan, is that what's poisoning the air? The air. My team has destroyed everything. I designed a special enzyme to kill it. I just needed liquid nitrogen to complete the synthesis. But the people I sent to medical never came back. I've got some of that enzyme here. Oh my god. How? Listen, we need to inject it into the Leviathan. You can't get into food storage, but there's another way. It's risky. Riskier than running out of air? My team has been altered. They're all connected to the Leviathan, breathing out its toxins. That connection goes both ways. Okay. So if I get to your team and inject them... The enzyme will be carried right into the Leviathan's heart. Bind the... Weezers. End their suffering. And when the Leviathan is weak enough, we bent the bastard into space. When you come in here, just watch out for this acid which is being sprayed from them jets. Yeah, but in this first room, 
you find a weapon upgrade there guys the angled launcher that's for the ripper yes make sure you grab that then wait for the jets to stop and then make way into the next room this one here you've got an upgrade bench and some loot the upgrade bench we're going to do some upgrades now you should get four wet you should get four free power nodes here from them four weapon upgrades which you have Yeah, we're going to buy the last two caps, which are currently available on the plasma cutter. And they're going to upgrade the suit a little bit. For the suit, you're going to buy the kinesis range. You're going to buy HP, and you're going to unlock size. And they're going to wait for it safe to do so. Then you're going to make out, make your way out here, loot these two wall boxes, and then go up the cargo lift. At the top here, there'll be an enemy waiting for you. So just be ready to take out his leg and then his arms. And this next massive room we're about to go into. Yeah, the West Grow Chamber. When you come about halfway into this room, tons of enemies are going to spawn. There's probably like eight enemies in total here that spawn. But to avoid them, come to this cargo lift, quickly ride it up to floor 2. If you go up to floor 3 the enemies can spawn on floor 3, they can follow you up. But if you come onto floor 2 none of the en enemies will follow you. So floor 2 and you want to come into the refrigeration tower via this door. Yep, and them logs which are currently playing they're normally just story unlocked as you make your way up. Yeah, so in here there's going to be five five of these bombers by the way. All you got to do is um, destroy the sacks, I know they explode. Obviously, just don't explode them when they're too close to you. Yeah, so that room we're just in, that massive chamber, where I said about eight enemies plus can spawn. They will still spawn, but later on we're going to get rid of them all where they're all going to spawn from the same event. Making it much easier to get rid of. Otherwise, they'll be spawning from all over the place. And there'll be tentacle babies floating about as well, uh, shooting projectiles at you. Making it quite tricky to avoid taking damage. Um, but yeah, this way I'm showing you is going to be a lot easier. Just control the enemy's behaviour. And, you know, just con control how the encounter is going to take place. They won't all be swarming you. They'll all be coming at you in a line, making it much easier to keep control of the fight. Yes, yeah, so you've got Paranoid just there in front of you guys on the wall. Then they come through here. Stay on the floor for now and open that door. Once you open that door two tentacle babies going to come down yep but if you stay on the floor your camera orientation is going to be sort of more central making it easy to see these yep got them so that's a nice easy way to get rid of them too yeah if you fly up there your orientation will be all over the shop and it just they'll be running around but that way it makes it a bit easier as soon as you open that trap door that's when they start to come down so what I'm doing now, getting the loot in this middle chamber. And then the next chamber. Up here there'll be a tentacle baby. But it doesn't spawn until you get so far up. But what you want to do, you don't want to go too far up into that top chamber. Because if you do, it also trigger the guardian in the room above to start chucking tentacles. So when you go to f kill the guardian, there will be loads of them little tentacles waiting for you. So yeah, I just fly up enough. You hear a noise, which sort of indicate this tentacle baby spawned, and he'll be floating about somewhere. No, that's not him. I thought it was, but it's not. It looked like some. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he'll come down eventually. There you go. Get rid of him. And then once you killed him, now all you've got left, guys, is that guardian. So. Once you're ready, you're going to quickly fly up and into that top room. There you go. Quickly fly up before it spawns any tentacles. There you go. Quickly get rid of them to begin with, otherwise they're probably going to hit you. And then lob stasis at the Guardian. You can grab that explosive canister and lob it at the Guardian. That dialogue, that's for actually damaging the Weezer, the very first one. Well, any Weezer, you've just got to damage your Weezer before you've injected any. And I just damaged that one on the left with the explosive canister. That's a highly missable, 
log, by the way, which we just got. So once got rid of that guardian, if you haven't damaged it, damage it now, and you'll get a audio log. Like I say, that audio log's highly missable. And then once you damage him, interact with him to inject him, guys. That's Weezer number three. And then once you've done so, going to head back down the bottom. Now in the bottom part of this chamber, this shaft, there's going to be an, a lizard enemy. So what you're going to do is you're going to get over here. You're going to ground yourself, and he's going to wait for this lizard to come up to you. Then you don't have to worry about him just jumping at you from nowhere and damaging you. Oh, there he is. Wait, I think he tries to use this mate as a decoy. His dead friend, I see what he's doing. Clever AI, eh? Using his friend as a decoy. His dead body. It, f it did fall for me for a second then, actually. It didn't fall me when I was playing. I don't think I noticed it. But I noticed it then. So we're heading back now. Now it's going to be two of these waiting for you now. One will spawn ahead and one will spawn behind. Yeah, you can actually shoot off their arm and they'll drop the bomb. Yeah, so one ahead and one behind. So now what you're going to do, you're going to come to this um, circuit breaker. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to turn around. Here we go. Yeah, so you want to turn off the ambience and make sure you've got all the doors unlocked. That's it. Just turn off the ambience. You don't need it. And then come to this corner, grab that loot on the floor if it's there, and that loot on the corner, or that floor ahead, which is out of reach, but you can use Kinesis. And then come to here, guys, the hydroponics control room. Now, be a bit of loot on your left. You've got two lockers, and there's normally some loot on the floor near the panels, the terminals. Right, so this room, you need to be careful following my very specific path. So there's going to be two bodies on the floor. You're going to put them about there. Grab one body and then grab this other body. There you go, put him there. Don't destroy the bodies, just move them. Yeah, leave that one. They always go for these two first. Okay, now there's two off them wall enemies. As long as you don't get too close, they won't damage you. That's why I just showed you where they were. And you want to inject that Weezer, inject him, and then shoot the sack. Now what's going to happen when you move back into this room, about halfway through, it's going to spawn three enemies. So, we've put them two dead enemies on that in the middle there, together. So when the spawners spawn, they're all going to rush to the same spot. So that first enemy, this Necromorph always spawns first. Stasis him there, grab an explosive canister, get back, and then when the, three spawn, when the two spawners come close, lob the canister, and you can kill all three at once, guys, with an explosive canister. I like that strategy. Nice and clean and always that always works for me. You just gotta to remember to move the dead bodies. And make sure you don't put them too close to the corner, otherwise a blast from the explosive canister will damage you. Right, just gonna shoot these two sacks, three sacks. I've shot two already. Just one more to shoot, there it is. That should make it so you can reach a rig. Get rid of that explosive canister. Yeah, there it is, that's Holt's rig. Make sure you pick it up, that's needed for a side quest, guys. And there's an item down there as well, normally, you can grab. Now, I just grab that pole from there, I'm going to use it to destroy that sack. And then just down there is a bronze semiconductor. You can also shoot that sack from here, if you want, where I am. Or you can do it that way we did. Yep, and then come in here, guys, and save your game. Come through here next, you're going to have a, a massive tentacle grab you in a second. Yes, yeah, a stomp box hidden in that growth there on the left. Yeah, once you open this door at the end, that's when the tentacle grabs you. Just shoot it, destroy it, save at the next save point and then make your way to the next tall shaft. Yeah, grab this power node there on the wall. Power node times one. Yeah, make sure you don't forget that one. This is about CDC again. Just thinking. If some corporate 
Okay, so don't go too far forward in this room. There's actually a tentacle just above you here, just near where you come through the into the zero G area. So just be very careful. Wait for it to fire, and then once it's fired, quickly go up and shoot it to kill it without worry about it shooting back at you. As you can see, you have to shoot them electrical traps, and this one you want to fly up, quickly turn around, shoot that tentacle, and then come to this corner. The reason you come to this corner is is because there's another tentacle behind you and if you don't come to this corner it's probably going to shoot you in the back but in that corner you're sort of out of you're in cover pretty much so it can't hit you and they want to shoot that tentacle yeah that one there will normally shoot you in the back always got that one there'll be two more which you need to get rid of first there's one near the stasis recharge and then there's one beneath that electrical trap shoot that one as well Hopefully you're a better shot, shot than I am. How many times I play this now? Wow. <laughs> Take me 10 bullets just to hit one tentacle. Yep. Grab that. Um, yeah, it's weapon upgrade in there, guys, which you want. Well, not weapon upgrade, but it's force energy somatics. Make sure you get it. Very important. That was in that little alcove where that tentacle, tentacle enemy was. So, yeah, make sure you get that. Yeah, and here, what I do... I stay sat and then I quickly fly up here. There's Tentacle Baby and a Lizard. I quickly fly up, straight into here, freeze the enemies and then kill them quickly. Yeah, otherwise it's a pain it's a pain in the butt trying to kill them too. Uh, because they never they never come down into that middle chamber because of the electrical trap. They just stay at the top there. So it's quite tricky to like aggro them and then go back down. Yeah, it's a bronze semiconductor in that alcove and a stomp box. Yeah, so I just quickly fly up into this place. Turn around, stasis them, and kill them. Most time that works without taking damage. You just have to be quick uh, because obviously that lizard can jump at you, and the tentacle baby will shoot projectiles. In here now, yeah, in the filtration tube annex. Come down to the bottom. We'll get a bit of loot, and there's basically like three massive silo tubes here, and occasionally, well, they will alternate. It's the two outer tubes. The middle tube never fires, by the way. And you have to shoot the fuses on each door to unlock them. Four doors in total. But when you come to this middle silo, two enemies will spawn. So just be ready for that. Yeah, sometimes, once you figure them spawn, one of them might spawn somewhere else. It depends where you are. Like, for some reason, he spawned down here instead. But normally, they'll both spawn in the middle one behind me and get caught in fire like he did and burn to a crisp yeah that little McCrispy. crispy yep then I'm grabbing the loot in the area I'm gonna go back on the little cargo lift go back up once you go up here I'm gonna take the door on the right into annex storage there's gonna be another Weezer in there Weezer 07 and a bit of loot as well and then when you come back out it's gonna be a few enemies these enemies always tri always spawn. Yeah, there you go. Weezer number seven. There's eight of these you have to do this to. Eight. You have to inject the en enzymes. Yeah, once you come back out after doing that, an enemy will spawn near that door over there. A little control room. Let's take him out. And then once you approach the control room door, another enemy will spawn behind you. So just be ready to take him out as well. Yeah, once you get near that door, another enemy will spawn behind. There he is. I think I think he's a spitter as well. Maybe. So yeah, just be careful we don't spit at you. Yes, yeah, so once you kill them two, come into this room. Into um, Annex Control. You'll find a text log on the floor. That's technical manual. You'll find a power node on the wall, in the wall box. And you also want to destroy the fuse to unlock the shortcut door, which we're never going to use. But it might come in handy for somebody. Yeah, so normally when you come back in here, another enemy spawns. But he didn't spawn this time for me, for whatever reason. So just be ready. And also, sometimes when you open this door, there can be a bunch of random enemies waiting for you. So again, just be ready. And they come to a cargo lift. going to go down into the seething room now and the east grow chamber 
There's going to be a brute down here soon. Remember these brutes, they drop a paranoid once you beat them up. Yeah, just showing you a quick overview of my current logs in this chapter. There's a, there's a missable log in this chapter. You have to, you can either get one or the other. And uh, we got one this time, we'll get the other one on New Game Plus. Yeah, so inject that Weezer guys, shoot the two sacks nearby so you can leave the room. Yeah, once you get outside, this is where the brute appears. So just be ready for him. Yeah, he's likely going to come up there if you sort of take the same path I do. Yeah, he's going to come from up there. Yeah, he's going to spit this little acid egg at me. Yeah, so again, just normal guys. Stasis, run behind him, shoot his weak points, just so you cut off two limbs. Simples. That's it. Make sure you get the power node. Alright, so first of all, what I like to do here is I like to do the top room first. Quarantine lifted. East seething room B. Because in here you've got a stasis recharge, you've got the deck systems key card, and you've also got an upgrade bench. You've also sometimes got a stomp box in here, but it doesn't look like it's here today. So now we're going to head into East seething room A. In here will be Weezer number 5. There'll be a spear, there'll be two stomp boxes, and there'll also be a tentacle baby which spawns after injecting the Weezer. So yeah, inject Weezer number 5, and then what I normally do, I just normally pick up the spear quickly, and as soon as the tentacle baby spawns in, yeah, there it is. Wait a second, and then shoot him for an instant kill. Here he comes. Yep, now when you go back out this door, guys, there's going to be a tentacle baby in front of you. So what I do, I stasis it quickly. There you go, because there is a stasis charge in that room, remember, nearby. So very easy opportunities to refill your stasis if you want to. Grab the power cell, which is just in this corner. And they slot it in there. Now once you slot a power cell, two enemies are going to spawn, two lizards. So I quickly run into this central elevator area. And they shoot two lizards. I don't like this room, this massive chamber, just because it's big. Your visibility is restricted due to all the growth and stuff. And all the pillars. So it's hard to see where these lizards are coming from. So I like to just sprint into this area, it's quite small, and the, there's not many ways of access. And the ways of access are normally right in front of you so you can see them coming. Yeah, I just like to do that, it just seems to be a bit better for me to defend than just standing here in the open. Especially when I'm trying to do no damage. So what I was doing then, I was just getting them ready, because you've slotted the power cell, but once you activate it, three are going to spawn at once, three lizards. So, to make sure you're ready. Yeah, it's a few instant kill pulse around as well, which which are good on those. Yeah, I'm just going to go and refill my stasis now, so I've only got one bar left. Yeah, three are going to spawn, guys. Three lizards. As soon as you activate the zero G. So now, yeah, over to the circuit breaker once you're ready. Use the key card and activate gravity. Uh, sorry, deactivate gravity. And they're coming here. That's it, like I say, it's going to be three of them. The good thing about the... Your stasis doesn't do this, but you've probably noticed, them stasis canisters, your stasis only affects anybody which was caught in the initial impact. But a stasis canister, it creates like a field, and if anybody runs into that field, even like a second or two after, they get affected by it. So it's a little bit different than your stasis. That's it, yeah. Just run into here. Wait for all three lizards to come to you. Kill them. And then you're good to go. You want to float to the top. I'm just going to fill up my stasis recharge first. Yeah, you're going to make way to the top. There's going to be two necro tentacle babies waiting for you. Just be careful. 
Yeah, go to that very top catwalk. Yeah, there'd be two. One will come from a vent, but there should already be one present somewhere. There he is. And then the second one will drop from a vent. Yeah, there he comes from that vent there. Yeah, there's an audio log on the floor there. Cross us log 03. Make sure you pick that one up. And they're going to make way into the corner and you're going to inject Weezer 06. Once you've injected Weezer, uh, Weezer 06, going to make your way back to West Grove Chamber. And you're going to take cargo lift up to floor, th floor 3, guys. Once you get up here, guys, you don't have to do this yet. Uh, you can loot the stomp boxes afterwards. But you want to quickly go to that. The, there's only one vent up here. And five enemies going to come from here now. Yeah, this is the southern vent. This is the only vent on floor three. So it's the only way the enemies can reach you. But all them enemies, which are spawned at the bottom, they will come through this vent to get to you. But because it's the only point of access, it bottlenecks them. So it's very easy to kill them all, and it makes them, it forces them all to come one at a time as well, rather than all five coming at you at, at once. So yeah, just keep killing them as they come. Like I say, there should be about five altogether. That's providing you haven't killed any. And I think that's five. Sometimes I lose count when I'm talking. Yep, seems like it. Normally, one would have come up already if there's any remaining. Okay, so grab any loot they dropped. And then go into the store over here. Yep, there'll be another Wii zone here. Yep, be some loot. There'll be a text log in here called Corruption. That's on the desk. Yeah, make sure you pick up the text log. Do the Weezer, Weezer 02. There's actually some credits normally below the desk as well. Quite hard to see. It's sort of hidden. Yeah, just down there. It's a bit awkward trying to get that. So you can see I can't grab the books. But you can see it down there flashing. Yeah, look how awkward that is to get. I guess I'll probably just shoot the books. Oh, that worked. Yeah, 1800 credits. Okay, so once you go about three guys, after doing the Weezer, there'll be a Necro waiting for you. So just take him out. And then go down the bottom. Now, once you get down the bottom, there's going to be two tentacle babies waiting for you. Yeah, so go all the way down to floor one now. Yeah, two will be waiting for you, tentacle babies. So just be ready, they'll be wait literally waiting for you. Here they are. That's one, then grab a spear. There's quite a few spears around here. Now there may be a few of the necromorphs floating about. There may not be, you've killed most of them. But just in case, just be on the lookout for them. Yeah, I think there might be three. What you could do, once you trigger them, so I think these other three, I think they trigger once you kill the tentacle babies. Yeah, so normally five necros spawn, two ten tentacle babies, and then once killed all them, another three necros spawn. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to, you could kill the tentacle babies, then go back up the top to floor three, and kill them all coming from that same vent again, which it likely would. I think I don't think nec necro tentacle babies can follow you through vents like normal necros can. Yep. So when once killed them all, guys, interact. We're going to loot the area. So interact that security phone, and get that log which I just got that log is the audio log crosses log 02 
yeah to make sure you do not forget that audio log across this log O2 from that security phone on the wall just beyond the elevator and they're going to come in here this is west ceiling room A the final weapon is going to be in here the force gun and it should pop a trophy full arsenal that's for owning every weapon in the game it gives you all the weapons quite early on in the game that's for sure you know a lot of games you'll get like the final weapon five minutes before the end you don't really get a chance to use it but yeah this one it gives you all the weapons quite early in but I guess you're still waiting on all the upgrades I guess at least yeah so here's the final Weezer this should be Weezer 01 yeah we're doing the first one last and the last one first so once you've done that one an enemy will shortly drop in so be quick get out of here now once you get back outside this room loads of new enemies are going to spawn but we're going to avoid them all so you're just going to run for the exit just be ready with stasis in case any get too close you just turn around stasis them and they carry on through the door and we're heading heading back here now pretty much done it all now you've got like a boss to fight there's three major bosses in this game this is the first one leviathan Obviously, just watch out for this acid spitting out from the jets. It's for plants. It's harm harmful to humans, unfortunately. I was going to say it's V-Jolt. Yeah, do not run in the way of that V-Jolt. Okay, so, um, yeah, at the store, guys. Just do normal stuff. Deposit the force gun. The only gun you ever want on your person is the plasma cutter. So put that away. And then you want to buy the force gun upgrade for 12,000, the subsonic oscillator. So everything else will keep your plasma energy. You want to keep all your plasma energy, you're going to need it for the boss. And keep one or two stasis packs on you, like always. Yeah, now try to always keep two stasis packs if you've not been doing already. Two or three. I know we, I know up to this point I've been selling most of it and keeping it only one. But yeah, going forward try to keep always two or three stasis uh, full packs of plasma energy on you um, when going to store and selling stuff okay so you make your way this way guys to find the first boss the first major boss the leviathan okay so for this fight what I do first is because the boss fight does not trigger until you actually go into zero G and press L1 and R1 together to lift off the ground yeah, as long as you're grounded, the boss fight will not start. So what you can do, yes, yeah, so you can use the first part of the fight before it's even begin to get all the loot in the area. There's loads of loot in the area, and I wouldn't say it's anything essential, but it's loads of it. But if you wait till after the fight, basically when the fight finishes, the vacuum, the airlock opens, and everything gets sucked out. It doesn't always, sometimes it doesn't quite leave the airlock in time once the airlock closes. Um, but but it's a lot of ammo here and you see you don't really have a chance to get it during the fight if you're trying to avoid damage yeah, you don't really have a chance to loot it all so it's a good idea just to grab it all to begin with there's plenty of healing items here you've got loads of plasma energy there's a lot of pulse rifle I think the game really wants you to use the pulse rifle in this fight yeah it's like fixed yeah that's not random that's fixed there's always pulse rifle ammo here yeah they really want you to use that weapon so just getting all the loot from where you're standing there should be only three items which you can't reach there'll be three items you can't reach and you know what ones because I leave them and then once we float up and the fight starts I quickly get them before the boss starts attacking so we've got them all okay so just to run through the strategy for the fight so the boss has three stages the first stage it will just shoot its tentacles will come at you it's got three tentacles and once they're fully stretched out, you can see a weak point just near its base, which you have to shoot. You have to shoot them about five times to destroy that tentacle. And then once there's one tentacle remaining, sometimes it will it will wiggle around and then it'll come up through another hole. And then it'll just do its normal attack. To dodge it, all you want to do is just keep moving left and right, but if the tentacle is what I seem to find out is um if you're closer to the direction of where the tentacle is to where the hole is where it's come from it's more likely to hit you so if the holes at the bottom you want to make sure you're near the top of the arena and then be moving left and right that way if it's at the right make sure you're more to the left 
and you sort of got less chance for it to hit you then. And once you take out all three tentacles, then the middle, the middle sort of mouth will start to open. Once it opens, you want to keep shooting the yellow weak spot. And if you can shoot the weak spot quick enough when it first exposes itself, you can prevent it from shooting the acid sacs at you. If it shoots the acid sacs, either move to avoid them or grab them and throw them back at it. But when it first opens its, its mouth, just quickly shoot. Normally you can shoot it before it gets a chance to shoot any acid sacs. And then on its third phase, which is the phase it's in now, you've got limited time to defeat it, obviously before your air runs out, unless you want to use an ox oxygen tank from your inventory. And now all it's doing now is combining the first and the second phase into one. But what, you, what you want to be trying to do now is focus on hitting the weak spots on the mouth in the middle. Don't worry about the tentacles no more. Obviously avoid them, but don't worry about shooting the tentacles. There you go. I know it looked like I took damage, but it seems to be I guess I was invincible because I killed it. But yeah, I killed it and the acid sack kept going through me. But I'll use the healing item in a minute and you see it won't work. You see, you can hear that. I'm trying to use the healing item, it's not working. So yeah, that did not damage me in case any of you think I did. I was lucky. I think, it, I think that's happened to me before and I think I did take damage before. But that particular instance, it didn't. And once you beat him, you'll get that trophy. Kill the Leviathan. I've broken that down in text form as well in the text guide, just in case maybe you didn't catch anything that I said there. Yeah, quite a lot that I brought up. But yeah, once you killed it, it's going to make your way to mining the mining deck now. And you get another trophy uh, for completing chapter 6. That would be Greenhouse Effect. Yep, so make your way to mine the next guys, and um, I'll meet you there. There'll be a bit of loot to grab along the way. He said it was nearly done, but I haven't heard from him in a while. I can't leave yet. I need to make sure the air is safe to breathe, but if you can find that SOS beacon, call for rescue. I will. Mining deck. Okay, got it. And if I meet Jacob? Tell him. I'll find him. He's all I want to see. An SOS beacon. Someone jettisoned all the others. Isaac, there's a shortcut to the mining deck. Near Cross's workstation. I'll get it open. Goddamn. We might actually get out of this nightmare. Once in this room in mining operations, yeah, you get you'll get a story log. Do not move these crates. Do not move them. You see that room at the end there? That's a massive override room. And um, but if you go there now, you're gonna sort of void this log. Uh, all you want to do now, move them crates and get that power node from that wall box. Yeah, I'll explain it later. You'll see later. I'm not gonna explain it now, so it's gonna take me probably a minute or two. And I don't, I can't quite keep up with myself if I do that. But yeah, just do not move from crates, guys. Do not go near that door. We're going to do it later. All right? You've been told. You've been warned. All right, so we're in here. We're just grabbing the loot. And we're going to make a save. You've got a store in here and a bench if you need to use them. I don't think I bothered to at this point. I'll just do it a bit later because we did it not too long ago. Yep, yeah, grab all the loot, guys, and then save your game. After saving your game, we're then going to head into the nearby elevator. Clear. The mining sub are locked down, even though our systems are 
and we're going to take it down to the place where the objective marker is. Yeah, down to deck C mining. So once you get to the bottom, well near the bottom, the elevator's going to come to a complete stop and three enemies are going to drop in, say hello. They weren't all dropping at the same time, though there will be a very, very brief moment before the first and second enemy drop down. The first one will drop down, then about three seconds later the second enemy will drop down. So if you stand in this corner, the first enemy normally, normally always drops by on that side first. Quickly get rid of him and then turn left and the other enemy should spawn next to you. Quick, quick, there he is. So like I say, you've got about three seconds. If you think you can't do it in time, just stasis that first one and then stasis the second one once he drops in and then quickly kill the first one while he's still frozen. Now be ready because the third one's going to drop in, there he is. You'll probably, start, you'll probably start to see these armoured enemies as well by the way now which you cannot de you cannot destroy their legs because they're armoured. You can only kill them by shooting them in the head or shooting their arms off. But with them armoured guys, I actually find it best just to shoot at their head with your aim lined up horizontal. Sometimes when you just keep shooting an enemy in the head, they still take quite a bit of damage and they can, they can die quite quick. I'm not sure if you can actually do critical damage or sometimes enemies just spawn with low health but yeah sometimes you shoot an enemy in the head and they die really quick so once you're down here there's going to be some lasers along here obviously do not go through a laser because it will hurt but what you'll find with these lasers there's some loot up here what you find with these lasers is um, if you dangle something in, in front of it um, eventually they will break like they'll start sparking like so and then eventually they'll just break down completely so you can get past I've left that crate in front of that one at the start um, but you'll find out why later later on when you come through there's going to be some enemies chasing you so I'm actually going to quickly move that and let some enemies run into it what I've done at the moment we're basically going into this room at the far end called Ore Storage because in here you need to come in here for part of the side quest so you're going to come in here first and you're going to move that crate there's a security phone behind it you're going to interact with it to get a audio log from it called the Ore Storage Report and you're going to get the Ruby Semiconductor the Ruby Semiconductor sell for 10,000 so you always want to try and get it it's basically the equivalent of a power node So yeah, that, you've got that update, just to tell you that that side mission has been updated. And you're coming here guys, going to interact with that store. Yeah, you're going to sell, you're going to sell most of your plasma energy. But you're going to say, like I say, you're always going to keep two stacks or more. Don't worry, that's not me that's died. That's a guy on the floor. His HP ran out, ran out of um, healing items. Yeah, I probably sold a bit too many plasma energy there, but never mind. Yeah, keep your weapon upgrades on you. Make sure you've got one or two stasis packs. Yep, so everything else. Yeah, once you get down here, a spawner is going to appear. A spawner is going to spawn. There he is, so I'm just going to instant kill him with that pipe. Come up here, there'll be a text log here on that bench. Yeah, that's text log minus log. Yeah, you've got an upgrade bench there, and you've also got a stomp box. And then grab the power cell. Yep, and slot it over there. Safe point here if you want to save. The next chapter is quite a short one, by the way. Chapter 8 and 9 are quite short. 10 is another long one. But 11 is quite short and 12 isn't too long either. So yeah, we've got, we've got most long chapters out of the way. This one can be quite long. Yeah, this one can. Yeah, but I think chapter... Was it chapter 6 in Hydroponics? In the, um, in the plant area? Or was that chapter 5? I think that's one of the longest ones. Yeah, so... 
I'm busy talking. Why don't you come up here, guys? There's going to be some ants waiting for you. So, before you come out of cargo lift, make sure you've got a fire extinguisher with you. Yeah, very important. Make sure when you come out of cargo lift, you've got a fire extinguisher with you. Because when you come out in the corner, there's going to be eight of them necro ants. You want to be able to lob out the wall and kill them all. If we don't kill them all, we can just stasis them and then shoot them afterwards. Um, interact with the panel in here, in mining control, and then grab the text log off the desk. That called that one's called mining progress. That's it. And now you're just gonna wait for the dialogue to finish. Once it's finished, you're gonna head back all the way back to cargo lift, guys, and you're gonna take it down to deck B processing. Traps. The miner's way of holding the line. Okay. I'll unlock the sub decks. Make sure that beacon's not wired to anything. That last corridor, by the way, where all them enemies spawned, they are random. That's why I didn't say anything. If I ever don't say anything and um, there's enemies spawning, it's because they're random enemies and um, you've just been dealt, you've just been dealt a bad hand, basically. But yeah, I've, I've almost never had that many enemies spawning in that corridor on the way back. So that's quite unlucky. Okay, so um, we're coming through this area now. Processing. You're going to take the left route. And once you get about halfway to about here, you're going to cause a few enemies to spawn. You normally get a necro morph, a normal one, and a pregnant necro. And then once you head a bit further in, you'll get a lizard necro spawn and two more normal ones. So yeah, the pregnant one, of course, always shoot its legs and then its arms. Now, once you go a bit further down, that's when the lizard's going to spawn. And two normal necros. Right, so yeah, just be on high alert. Here we go, you can hear them. Here he is. Yes, take him out, then you're going to have two necros. Right, so there's two necros somewhere. Here comes one. Yep, nobody's watching you six, so you got to watch it yourself. And yep, the spitter, that was close, that was very close. And the other one's just spawned behind him. Yeah, these guys are spitters, so be careful. Yeah, these guys don't swallow, they spit. Okay, once you've got rid of them, come to this corner, and you should be able to see the fuse for that door through the broken glass. Shoot it, do not like that door for later. We're not going to head into that room yet, just because I'm going to go in later. When we've got level 3 security clearance, and then we can unlock all the containers in there. Yeah, on the left here, you'll find some loot. Yep, yeah, that security phone there, guys. Got a audio log in there. That should be Dr. Kynes hostage. Yeah, take that from that security phone beside the doorway. And then save your game. Chapter 7, Into the Void. Yeah, a little Easter egg here. All the names, the first letters from all the chapter names, they spell something. Yeah, once you come down here, an enemy will spawn ahead, be ready to kill him. Now, see these two containers? Once you open one, an enemy will spawn. 
He, did he just see that enemy spawn? Just, he just spawned in thin air. I was pretty quick there. You might not have seen. You, you'll see if you slow it down. But that enemy there, he just spawns in thin air. In front of me. What triggers him to spawn, like I say, is opening one of these containers. I don't know why. It's a, it's a pretty weird spawn. Opening container spawns an enemy. What? I'd understand if it's something really special inside. But just randomly. He'll either spawn there. Or he'll spawn on the other side of the corridor. So just make sure... Once you open a container, quickly back out, and then look on either side of the corridor. He'll either spawn at one side, it's random. But yeah, it, I think that's to do like a jump scare. Yeah, jump scare, you you know, attack you while you're opening a container. Yep, and then you go to that burning debris guys and shoot that fuse of the door ahead to unlock it. Yeah, so there was a store. Make sure you've got one or two stasis packs. You're going to need them for this bit. Because there's going to be tons of enemies soon. Okay, so what I do here. Once you've thrown, you've got to throw, throw all four anomalies into that central uh, central blast. Basically, these three sort of meteor looking things. These four lava rocks. But once you throw two in there, it's going to spawn two lizards and two or three tentacle babies. Yeah, it's two lizards and three tentacle babies. So yeah, only throw one in there. Do not throw two in there. And then what I do, I come in here, bring all three of the asteroids, or the rocks. I've gave these guys many names, haven't I? Yep, and then throw them into the yellow blast from here. Yeah, when you're not in the room. Because the enemies don't spawn unless you're in the room. That's it, and try to blow up all three. That's it, and then come outside. And then normally, the enemies will not even spawn. They may spawn, so just be ready. Yeah, maybe two lizards floating about, and three tentacle babies. But a lot of times when do it, do it this way, the enemies don't even spawn at all. So it, it's the trigger to spawn the enemies Oh well, I've got one lizard and one tentacle baby, but no, nothing else spawns. Smashing the second rock into that middle blast is what causes the enemies to spawn. But yeah, if you're not in the room when you destroy that second rock, they don't spawn. So it's, I think I was one foot into the room when I smashed that second rock. Um, but I quickly got out. I think that's why some of the enemies spawn, but not all. Because like I said, there should be five. But that's way to avoid them all spawning. And then what you want to do, before you interact with the panel, after destroying all four rocks, get, there's three canisters in the area. Get them near you, and then activate the gravity. Because when you activate the gravity, loads of enemies are going to spawn. And it's quite a difficult enemy to spawn. You've got a pregnant woman. Yep. you got some bombers. Watch out for the necro ants which are going to spawn. There's quite a lot there. I'm going to get overwhelmed, so I'm just going to freeze these and then run past quickly. There you go. Yeah, so this way you need your stasis handy. This way I'm saying you need one or two stasis packs for this bit, because um, you can get in trouble. grab any loot afterwards. In earlier drafts I did this bit quite different. Yeah, quite different. But that's before this room in the corner there which we just passed. I never knew how to open that. Then I was playing this um, I think a few days ago and I just noticed that you can shoot that fuse um, near that burning debris in the previous part of the corridor. And I can't believe I didn't notice that before. Um, but once you move around here to the far room in the far corner where you need to go you trigger three more enemies. Yeah, basically an armoured one and two more bombers. Yep, so in here, it's going to be loads of loot, but the main thing 
it's going to find another rig and getting this rig actually gives you security clearance number three yeah this is Dallas's rig yeah pick it up supervisor Dallas he's not going to be needing it and they come back out the door he came in if you go out the other door it's likely going to spawn some enemies not always but the other corridor spawns for your enemies and you want to come out this way anyway because um, if you come back out here you can then enter this room you can unlock it now you've got security clearance number three you can get a gold semiconductor a medium med pack and some other loot so going back to the mineral processing area now on your way back you'll trigger a story lock uh, found the admin's rig yeah that one just there yeah coming here on your way back up you likely to spawn some random enemies if anyone's if any do spawn they're random ones and you know them little ants they they can actually spawn as well yeah you might be unlucky and just run into a room and there'll be eight of them ants on the floor <laughs> so just make sure you're always alert when you're backtracking going back through these areas so I'm going to save my game then we're going to go into processing break room this one here yeah you got power node you got some matic contact energy and they can loot all these lockers now you've got security clearance level 3 you can unlock everyone and the wall box then what you do now guys heading back to cargo lift and going to ride it to deck D maintenance This bit is very tricky because you've got two spawners, you've got a guardian, and um, it's just the layout of the room is just very difficult to maneuver through and to kill all the enemies and be efficient. So I've got a trophy surgeon that's for cutting off 500 limbs. You should get that naturally. We've still got another playthrough to do after this, so easily get that. Yeah, so you want to quickly try and kill the two spawners. I had to do a little cut there. You want to quickly try and kill the two spawners. Um, before you get a chance to obviously resurrect any necromorphs and then quickly come around here but be careful making way around this corner um, because there may be some tentacles ready to shoot at you so you need to be careful coming around here so you can quickly shoot the tentacles like that one there and then focus on the guardian there's some explosive canisters around so you can use them to attack the guardian you just saw there I did lob one at him but it's just, it's just a really awkward spot and there's also loads of growth on the floor so you walk really slow as well yeah these corners I'm checking there's normally loot there obviously it's not spawned in in this playthrough yeah them corners I'm checking if you ever see me run into a corner and there's nothing there and you're thinking you know what the hell is he doing it's probably because there's loot there in a previous life Right, so um, we're coming in here now into Equipment Supply Secure Storage. I don't know what name it is. I think it's got a different name on the map to what it has on the above the door. Yeah, you want to go to Circuit Breaker and unlock Storage O2. And then coming to Storage O2, you want to take the audio log, which is on the floor to the left. And the other audio log, thank you Isaac, which is on the desk. That's it. And then what you want to do, just come back out here now. When you go back into that central corridor where Circuit Breaker was, there might be some random enemies waiting for you. 
So just make sure you're ready. There is some more, some other loot in there. There's a Ruby Semiconductor in storage 01, I think it is. But normally going into that room triggers loads of enemies to spawn. I mean, there's loads of ants in there waiting for you anyway. So I did really want to get that because it's 10,000 credits, but I decided to leave it just because it's too risky for the enemies, especially when going for no damage. So yeah, we just we just avoided it. But yeah, if you want a, another Ruby Semiconductor Storage 01, you'll find one in there. But if you want to get it, just be ready for loads of enemies appearing. And like I say, there'll be eight ants waiting in there for you anyway. And that's just to begin, begin with. Okay, so on the gondola right, first you're going to get a tentacle spawn on the left. And then on the right, you're going to get a tentacle and a spitting necro. There's a tentacle and there's a necro that will spit at you. Okay, after getting rid of them. There's going to be a tentacle on the left, and then there's going to be another spitting necro on the left, shortly after. There he is. That's it, no more. So you've got, you start the ride, you've got a tentacle on the left, then you've got a tentacle and a necro on the right, and then a tentacle on the left, and then another necro on the left. And that's it. So two necros, three tentacles all together. And then once you get to the end, your friend's gonna show up. Just make sure you look at her. If you don't look at her, then it's so, the story gets sort of, um, the story will not advance. You have to sort of look at her for a moment to advance her dialogue, I think, here. Uh, but once she starts moving on, oh my God. yeah, once you've seen you and starts talking, then you can sort of turn you back to her and pretend you haven't seen her. Yeah, and you can grab all the loot nearby. Yep, and they come through this door once it unlocks. Yeah, so in this room, you got a protector, but it's. It's not too bad. Normally these sections like this in games, they go on for ages. Um, but this one's quite simple. Three enemies will spawn near you and only one enemy will spawn near Nicole. So I normally stand in this corner near the door because then these first two spawn over there. And if you shoot that stasis canister, that'll, that's in a good spot to get both of them. Yep, and you can easily get them too quickly. Then once you've quickly got them two, turn around, look at Nicole. And the other enemy should be there now. There he is. Stasis him. And then by the time you've killed him, the third one should have appeared. And you've also changed sides as well. And then there you go, guys. You got them all. Yeah, not too bad. That could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. I've... I've actually not done that quick enough before and Nicole has been attacked and she was impaled by the necro yeah so she she can die if you're not quick enough so yeah don't take too long uh, killing or, or using stasis on that enemy on the opposite side otherwise it will impale her yeah so through here there's a bit of loot you can collect. There's an item you want as well while you're in here. Yes, yeah, so you want to get that. Yeah, the SOS beacon. Get the loot, and you've also got a somatic there. Yeah, that's an intermediate mining rig somatic, guys. So you can upgrade our suit now once we get um. Yeah, once you get back to shop, we can upgrade our suit again. It's in here, make sure you grab this power node just on the wall box, just beside the door you come through. Yep, then come to circuit breaker and activate zero gravity. Grab a loot nearby if you want. And that tentacle ahead, I always shoot that. Just try and use your racking for a shield just while you're trying to kill it so projectiles don't hit you. Now what I do here, fly where I'm flying. I'm going to fly down that little gap in between the platforms. And basically... I'll show you on the map in a second. I always fly through this area on the far side. So I'll show you on the map. On the on the far west side 
I fly, I basically fly down on the far west side because there's tentacles all over the shop and they'll all be shooting projectiles at you. And we need to we need to go down to this room. But if you come this way, you seem to avoid most of them. You know, they don't seem to have a clear shot at you. And I found it the safest route to take and avoiding damage to get into this room. So once you're down here, there's a flamethrower upgrade there, which we want. Yes, yeah, so and make sure you grab that. And you've also got some other goodies in here. So you've got power node on the wall box. Just watch out. You see that guy? Don't go too close to him. If you're worried, you just finish him off. Yeah, he's not going to walk. He's not going to run off anywhere, is he? Yeah, so just shoot him. And then um, go your power node times one. In a more safer fashion. Alright, so now we're heading back to the lift, guys. I'm going to head down to Deck C Mining. Down or up, I don't know where it is. But once we get there, the lift is going to break again. How convenient. Yeah, but this time we're going to have two tentacle babies spawn. And then once you kill them two, you're going to have a necro lizard. One of the tentacle babies, you have one spawn on either side. And then the lizard will spawn. For me, it's always... I have normally get the tentacle from where I'm standing right now. You know, just on the back corner with the panel just ahead. Yeah, I normally have the one tentacle baby on the right, one on the left. And then lizard will spawn on the right as well afterwards. Um, it's basically once you go over to the door. So go over to the door, try and unlock it. And that's when the sort of lockdown begins. There we go. No power all of a sudden. Just my luck. You also get a necromorph as well, by the way. Spawns after killing the lizard. Yeah, so there's one. Remember, a spear kills these guys in one. So a spear is good to use on the tentacle babies. Kills them in one go. So lizard next. There he is. Yeah, they normally spawn from high up, from event high up. Once you kill him, be ready for the necromorph. I don't know where it's going to spawn from. Oh, there he is. Yeah, it's an armoured guy. You can see he's armoured. So you need to shoot him in the head or his arms. That's it. Once you killed them all, should be four together. Two babies, one lizard, and one necro armour. So back into extraction area next. Just stomp on the corpses first, get some ammo. I'm going to head over to the store. We're going to sell everything except for stasis packs and two stacks of plasma enemy energy at least. And then we're going to buy the suit level 4. I never have enemies spawning in this corridor. But this playthrough, they're spawning all the time. Every time I come through here, somebody waiting for me. Yeah, so everything, guys, except for stasis packs and two stacks of plasma. And buy suit level 4. Suit level 4, it will give you 26 slots and 15% armor. And then what we're going to do is going to head over to the upgrade bench and we're going to upgrade the suit a bit more. I upgrade the suit when I can. When it comes to the HP and stasis upgrades, by the way, the amount of stasis which you have, the amount of charges, when you unlock them, it actually gives you full health. So if you unlock HP, you get full HP. And if you unlock stasis, the stasis charges, you'll get full stasis. So, I mean, it doesn't matter to me because I'm using, I'm doing no damage, so I never need the health. But yeah, it, it's good to know if you're low in health, you know, and you, you know there's going to be an upgrade coming up. Or you've got upgrades available, which you haven't done yet. You can do that. Or I guess another way you could do it, you could just spend 5,000 to reset, reset all your nodes on your suit. And then, in a way, you're going to be able to use the HP again so I guess that's another way to get full HP yeah so on the suit what we're gonna do we're gonna buy uh, kinesis duration energy duration and HP that should cost power nodes times four and should have also got power nodes times two um, for handing in for handing in two of the weapon upgrades so it looks like an enemy spawned somewhere yeah you always seem to spawn when you interact with that upgrade bench for the first time I thought there might be a trigger for him actually. Interacting with that workbench. Yes, yeah, so there's always there's always seems to be an enemy spawns when I interact with that. Yeah, so we're heading back up to mining control now. Uh, but now we've got security clearance three, we can go into the storage room, get
get a power node and a gold semiconductor. Should be ready for any enemies along the way. That was random. He won't always be there. Totally random. Yeah, once you're mining control, you need to use the panel again to load the beacon. Just to find out you can't. Yeah, there's the power node and you want your gold semiconductor. Yeah, you make three trips up to this um, mining control room. Three bloody trips up to the same room. Yeah, then once once you've um, been to mining control, you have to go back down the cargo lift, get a power cell, and take it with you through the door opposite. But I'll explain that when we get there. Just do this bit first. Administrator access granted. Prepping the launch tubes. Must have booby trapped the launch tubes too. They're scrap. Well, that's great. We can't just toss the beacon out a window. Nah, there's gotta be something. The asteroid. The one in the mining bay for smelting. What about it? If I attach the SOS beacon to that asteroid and then launch it away from the ship, we'd get a clean broadcast. And you'd get yourself killed. The machinery in there is still running, Isaac. Then it probably kept those things out too. This is our best shot, Kendra. I'm taking it. Yeah, take the power cell with you. We're taking it for a walk. Now, in this engine room, be careful, there's going to be three bombers. Two will spawn in this first half, but a third one will not spawn and she get further into the room. So be very, very careful. We do not let them get too close. If they get too close, they will try to attack you. Basically, suicide, suicide bombers. And they'll explode. Just be very careful. Yeah, try not power cell at them. Um, don't really see them, but they don't even flinch. And once you slot this power cell, an enemy will spawn from that vent, an armor guy. There you go. And um, I killed him with his friend's egg. There you go. This guy's still hanging around. But we'll leave him. We'll leave him back there. So Dan, are you going to come in this room, the mining base storage room? In here. You're going to find a gold semiconductor on the desk and two stasis packs. These stasis packs are always here, by the way, they're fixed loot. Them two stasis, yeah, they've always been there, them two stasis, stasis packs. Been through this a lot of times and, yeah, they've never changed. So, yeah, there's a, there's a bit of loot which is always fixed, but the majority of it is random. He is random, I believe. Yeah, he's random. So stasis recharge there if you need it, remember that. Alright, so here, there is a spear in here by the way, you got a pipe. Yeah, so in the mining bay, there's going to be four tethers, like you see this big wheel, there's four of these, you have to freeze it, and then shoot the fuse on it to break it. And once you're in the first one, just come back into the corridor, and kill the lizard from the side, like so. Normally when you do that first, that first tether, two lizards will spawn in that big room, but... If you do that first tether while still in the doorway, then go back into the corridor. Only one lizard seems to spawn and he comes straight for you. So it makes it a bit easier. And then we're going to come up here, do the second tether, freeze it, and shoot the fuse. That's two done. Now we've got to head outside. Yeah, you've actually got to freeze that. So freeze it and come through here. Be careful you do not fly into the part of the contraption which keeps moving around. So that can kill you, believe it or not. I've been killed by it before. I probably shouldn't admit to that, but but yeah, once you come outside here, two tentacle babies gonna spawn. You normally have one spawn from that vent and one spawn from a vent near the tether on the opposite side. So once you've got one, turn around and look out for the second one. There he is. 
that's it. Once you've got both, take out this tether and then head to the other side and do the final one. Once you've done the final tether, another tentacle baby normally spawns somewhere. So be on the lookout for him. Uh, but if you're quick, hopefully you won't have to um, actually engage him. Yeah, if you need oxygen, there's some on the wall here. And you've also got stasis. So yeah, shoot the fuse. That's it. Now, like I say, another tentacle baby is going to spawn somewhere. So try be quick. Basically, you've got to go to top of this big asteroid. And you see that objective on it. There it is. That's we've got to press X. And that will place the SOS beacon. And then come through here, guys. Now, be careful where you come through here. Because if you... If you fly, if you fly past that rock and you're too close to that contraption, I don't think it moves anymore once you've disabled all four tethers. But if you fly too close to it, it can still instant kill you. So be very careful there. And then basically come back out, use that stasis recharge to run past this one here if you need to, and watch out for any enemies you run past. Yeah, there might be a few enemies waiting for you, so just be very, very careful. We're now heading all the way back to minor control and we're almost done this area, this chapter. Yeah, all the way back to minor control. But you actually have to take the power cell back of you. Yeah, because if you don't do this then the cargo lift won't work. Watch out for that fire, that fire can kill you really quick on impossible. It'll basically stun lock you. Yeah, save your game. Yeah, so back up to minor control, guys, and I'll meet you there. Broadcasting wide band. I'll align the receiver. Yep, once you've interacted with the panel, guys, and um, yeah, release the payload. Try and exit the room, and it'll cause a lockdown. Yeah, try to exit the room afterwards. Yeah, there'll be a lockdown. Now, what's going to happen is Nicole's going to come. No, um, not Nicole, the hunter. The hunter's going to come in. There he is. So, what you got to do, you need to take off all his limbs and then freeze him yep then you need to wait for Daniels to finally open the door so you can get out but she won't open the door she'll actually release the door release yeah she'll release the door release and then you have to run over to the door release move it down to unlock it and they can get outside yeah the manual release is yeah, it's going to freeze him first. There it is. Just move it, move it down. That's it to release the door lock. And then go outside. Just be careful. There's going to be some enemies waiting in the corridor. Just make sure nobody's right on your tail. That's it. Make sure they're nice and frozen. Get through here. Be ready to stasis any enemies. There you go. There's one. Stasis him. Remember, the hunter's right on your tail. So don't hang around. Yep, he's going to be chasing you all the way back up to the top now on the big cargo lift. So once you come down, quickly run back to the cargo lift. So out, take a right, a sharp right. Take the opposite door. He's going to spawn in here along with his buddies. So, yep, don't slow down. That's it, just sprint for it like it. Imagine it's the start of the game and you have no weapon. Yep. Get away from that door as quick as you can, and hopefully nobody follows you. And yep, I was very lucky there, didn't take any damage. But yeah, normally I get through there without anybody getting through the doors in time, but he was very, oh, he was very fast. 
So you're basically going all the way back up now to um, operations, back up to the top, decay preparation. There'll be three power sites in this room waiting for you, by the way. Once you take a few steps in, it will sort of trigger them and they'll come for you. Three power sites, so just be ready. You just want to stay system and then shoot them. Oopsie daisy. I dropped my phone. Oh my lord. Oh, I lost the um I lost the Google Doc now. Yeah, so three power sites in here. I could probably remember it all anyway. Yeah, three power sites. Just take a few steps forward and you'll spot them. Here they come. Yeah, I used to spear on one, so there's two left. That's it, just use stasis. I do not take any risks with these little buggers. Once they get in your trousers, you can't get them out. It does tickle a bit though. Yeah, come out here. Now what we're gonna do now, you're gonna move these crates out of the way. And then head towards this door and it should trigger a conversation. You don't have to interact with it, just walk close to it. An enemy is supposed to come from there by the way. Don't know why it's not spawning. Oh here it comes. Bloody hell, a bit delayed. Delayed reaction, did I wake you up? Yeah, come over here, that's it. You wanna trigger that. You'll get that audio call and that will start a side mission. You are not authorized. If you already started the side mission, then that will not trigger it and you would have missed that audio log. Custom lockdown, that's called. As for West, that's Chapter 7 trophy for completing it. Yeah, custom lockdown, that's a missable audio log. Basically, if you triggered you are not authorized side mission much earlier in the game, then you wouldn't have been able to get that and it would have it would mean you have to get a new game plus. But we've got it now. Yeah, save your game. Yeah, you're probably wondering what we're doing coming back through here, guys, now. Well, it's because we need to do some cleanup. Yeah, we're doing a bit of backtracking now, just to get the upgraded, the prototype stasis module, which is much better. Now we've got the security clearance three. So you want to come in this room first, and in here you find Russo's rig. Yeah, there it is. Russo's rig, and you also find a audio log on the floor. Chief Engineer's log, but once you get back near the entrance, a necromorph will spawn in. So just turn around, be ready to kill him. Yeah, if you don't kill him there, he's probably going to follow you back and you don't want to run into him in this corridor with all the nesting. Because you're slower. Yeah, that Russo's rig, I did look at getting that later on in the guide, but you have to get that Russo's rig in order to unlock a door later. If you do not get that now, then later on when you pass a door during the story, you will not be able to go inside it. I think I think that's why I decided to get in now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why. I think I did try leaving it now and then just doing it much later in the game. But yeah, I think if you don't get that now, then it makes it so you can't access a door later because some doors do not unlock unless you're on a specific step of a specific side mission. Yeah, it's... I oh know, they should always be open, shouldn't they? Yeah, but but some some doors are locked until a side mission takes you there, pretty much. So you, you do have to sort of do some of the side mission steps as you go through the game. Uh, once you're back at the tram, we're going to the bridge now, guys. Like I say, we're doing a bit of clean up now. Just get a prototype stasis module. And honestly, once you use this, especially on impossible mode, it's it's such a great help. It's mainly because it damages enemies at the same time and it's just really useful on them power sites. 
but sometimes it can land you in a bit of trouble. Um, basically, if you're stood near an explosive canister, for example, and you state as an enemy, which is next to it, and the explosive canister is in the radius of the stasis, then it can actually explode and kill you. So you've got to be a bit more clever, a bit more clever with your use of it. You know, be more aware of your surroundings when you're using stage stasis. You can't just lob it anyway now. You know, you don't want to be too close to it. Will set a fire extinguishers as well. That can be a bit of a bit of a pain. And this happened to me before as well. <laughs> Trying to avoid damage, and then I just bloody damaged myself by detonating an extinguisher by sta using stasis near it, and with it being in the radius. So yeah, be very careful using the upgraded stasis once we get it. But other than that, it's yeah, it's great to use, guys. I think it slows enemies down even more. I don't think it completely freezes them in place, but it does slow them down a lot more, you know, at least. But yeah, the main thing is that it damages enemies. It's just, it's great on the ants and parasites. It Basically, one cast will kill the ants or the parasites. And like I say, like I said earlier, one cast will also just, will also kill any guardian. Just, just shoot a guardian and it's dead, pretty much dead. It's probably not as effective as if your suit isn't upgraded because obviously you can upgrade your stasis duration. So yeah, you want to interrupt that terminal by the way. That's part of a side quest. Yeah, premeditated mold practice. Yes, interrupt that orange terminal. That's part of the side quest. If you look at the side quest in the menu, it will tell you to go there. Um, but I'll mention it as well after this battle. So when you come to this room, it triggers like a massive, it triggers like a lockdown when you've travelled so far into the ring. Yeah, it triggers a lockdown and let about eight enemies will spawn. There'll be bombers, there'll be lizards, and there'll be necromorphs. So what I do, just so they're not coming from every single direction, I come in here because this corridor like bottlenecks them. And it's just a good corridor for me. But you just need to be careful. And make sure you're sort of always ready and reloaded. The enemies they seem to come in the way they come down here, they don't all come down one after another. You'll get a few come down, then there'll be a little pause, and a few more, then a little pause, and a few more. You know, I think it's just as they're spawning in. Yeah, see, he's running at me. If any start running at you, it's probably best to use stasis. Don't be shy. Yeah, stasis, it will also detonate the bombs on them bombers. I was very lucky here. Very, very lucky. Yeah, but I thought that bomb was too close and it's gonna hurt me. But luckily, it wasn't quite close enough to damage me. Always just lucky. But yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I mean. You gotta be very careful. Do not let any of the enemies get too close to you. We're gonna get rid of that. I do not want to detonate it by mistake, which I'll probably do. Right. So. You see that orange panel just on my left? No, I've ran past it. Yeah, you can actually open these now. You've got security clearance number three. Yeah, make sure you've got that panel just there. I just aimed at it. That's a panel you want to interact with. Make sure you've done that. Otherwise, you'll probably not be able to go where we're going because it will not be unlocked. Now we're heading back. We're basically heading to hydroponics now. We're going to go to rare specimens. Get a power node and a gold semiconductor. Yeah, so you're going to warp. Take the tram to mining engineering. Mining slash engineering. That's our next stop. What are we in? We're four hours into the guide. Got about two and a half hours left. Well, I've got this. I forgot this game is so long. It's crazy. I mean, look at Resident Evil games. They're, yeah, really good games, but. You can get through them so quick, you know, once you obviously know what you're doing. But this game, it's... Were they always this long? Was it was the original? Did it take this long to do? I know it's like speedrunners out there. They've, like, done the game in, like, a few hours, but... But so many glitches are used in this game, I think. They use so many glitches to glitch out the map and things, so... I'm sure that any run which is done within a few hours, some glitches have been used to avoid... A lot of chapters um, but in here yeah it's going to come into this room guys I think we are on the
Yeah, I'm not sure if we're in mining or engineering, but come through the same door which I have. If you um if you go into your submissions on your menu and um, you highlight or you track the premeditated malpractice side quest, that should take you to exact where we're going. Yeah, premeditated side quest, the premeditated malpractice, sorry. If you follow that, it will tell you exactly where we need to go. Yeah, we actually need to go into a third room here. Not flow control. This third one. Yeah, rare specimens. Just come in here first. Yeah, you find a power note. And there's also a goad semiconductor on the shelf. And a crate to smash. Alright, so once you've got all that loot, we'll head outside. Watch out for the acid jet. Yeah, it's Necro waiting. He's random. He won't always be there. Actually, I think that's the first time I've had an enemy waiting there for me. After coming back here at this point in the story. Yeah, it's a Backland West Road chamber. You need to go up to floor two. We're going back into the hydroponics control room. Yeah, I'm taking this with me. There's a neck. Basically, there's gonna be a pregnant necro. Um, in a minute. And um, of of course, do not shoot in his belly. But this spear is still instant kills him, even if you hit him in the leg with it. So yeah, my aim is to hit it in the leg. And yep, there we go. Spear to the leg. Looks no, got a twitch as well. Yes, yeah, so you've got power node on the wall here. Try not to forget that. Easy to miss actually that one because of all the green gas in the area. Yeah, come to the diagnostic lab. And here we are. Exactly where you wanted to come, guys. So you've got an audio log. It's on the cabinet. Picking up that audio log should finish the quest. There's also some other loot in this area. You've got Ruby Semiconductor in the small container. But make sure you also get a prototype stasis module. One enemy will spawn in, by the way, at one point in this room. So just make sure you're ready to turn around and kill him. Yeah, make sure you get that prototype stasis module. And you'll get that trophy, guys. Final regeneration. That's for completing the premeditated malpractice side mission. Which we've just done. Yes, yeah, so you've got the audio log. You've got the loot, especially the Ruby Semiconductor. You've got the um, prototype stasis module. And you're good to go, guys. Okay, so heading back to the tram now. Yep, I have no idea what's going on here. Look at this. Bloody three, three or four enemies waiting for me. So, yeah, I just stasis them and ran away. I was too scared to fight them. Yeah, you come into some rooms and there'll just be like three or four enemies waiting for you. Remember, they're random. Hopefully, you don't have any enemies waiting there for you. But yeah, back to the tram now, guys. And what we're doing now, that's all we wanted to backtrack for at the moment. I just wanted to get that prototype stasis module, which is really helpful. Because otherwise, you'll not be coming back here till probably chapter 10. And it really helped in chapter 9. And, um, you know, going forward. Yep, yeah, so heading back to the tram, guys. I'm going to warp, well, take the tram to the bridge. And I'm heading back to the main atrium, guys. And I'll see you there.
arriving at the bridge. So once back down here guys, coming to electrical storage, uh, system storage. Now watch out for that fire extinguisher. Yeah, because if you shoot that stage, it's going to explode and damage you. And I moved it just in case I missed like I did then. So if I didn't miss, if I didn't move that, I would have blown it up myself then and taken damage. Yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm shooting these guys through the window. It will kill them. And then once you've shot them both, it's going to grab all this loot from the lockers. Um, this small container nearby has got a bronze semiconductor inside it. Yeah, look. Awesome, yeah? That prototype stasis module kills them. Now, be very careful. It's probably going to be some tentacles around here, which were spat out by the Guardians. Yep, there's one. Told you, didn't I? Yeah, so grab the loot from these guys. No, he didn't drop any. Probably already picked it up. Yeah, it's another one. Look at that. Sneaky devil around the corner. He's going to shoot me in the back when I was opening the door. So make a way down here. This chapter is actually quite short. If you if you take out that backtracking, which we did, this chapter is really short. Yeah, pick up that um, audio log. That's Mayday. And then pick up Bailey's rig. That's on the drawers there. Yeah, do not forget to get them, guys. That audio log, Mayday, and Bailey's rig. Come near, grab them credits, and they come in the locker room. In the locker room, you're going to find a Ruby semiconductor. They sell for 10,000, remember? So it's basically the equivalent of a power note. Yeah, there we go. Ruby semiconductor, and grab all the other loot. And they come to communications array. Once you open this door, I take a step or two through, it's going to cause two tentacle babies to spawn and two lizards. There's tentacle babies, can you see them over there? If you're accurate, you can probably take them out. If you like me, yeah, you're probably going to have to freeze them. Yeah, so that's one. It's one more. I think I've got him. Yeah, the two tentacle babies will be, uh, sorry, the two lizards will be on your left. There's one. Yeah, it's a bit tricky trying to get rid of them. Because I'm trying to do no damage, I can't just run out there. Because, yeah, these, they can just jump at you, these guys. And um, hit you from behind. So, yeah, I like to just stay in the doorway and let them come to me, like so. Yep, so that's it. Two lizards, two tentacle babies. Once you've got them, you'll know because you'll probably get that dialogue. Yep, so, um... There should be a bit of loot floating about, not too much, but just a few extra credits if you want them. Okay, so it's a little puzzle. This puzzle ain't too bad. I think the placement of some of the angles on the panels, I think it might be a little bit randomised. Like, for example, the the line, the one which is just a straight line, it might not always be in the same place. But what you have to do, you don't have to line up every single power cable like it looks like. It looks like you have to connect every single power cable along the rim. You don't. You just have to connect the bottom, that bottom sort of power core, which has got power. You, all you have to do is connect that from the bottom to the top. That's all you have to do. 
Just no matter what power cables you use. No, obviously that's wrong. Yeah, you just got to get it from the bottom. You see that part in the middle at the top? You got to get it from the bottom to there. I do it, and then you can. I show you the finished puzzle, and you know exactly then how to do it. Yeah, you'll need this one. This one is the one you can put first on this corner. And look how it's looking so far. Yeah, sometimes you have to pull out the broken one in order to be able to put the new one in its place. That's it. All I need now is a straight line. Yeah, this one does seem complicated at first, but once you just look at it and see how it works, it's pretty simple, really. Oh, look, I didn't even show you. Really? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you can see, that's how it looks, guys. That's all you've got to do. It'll always be the same layout. It's always the same cables, which I do. But, like I say, sometimes the panels, which you have to start into place, they might be arranged a bit differently, I think. I'm pretty sure I've seen, on each playthrough, the panels have been in a slightly different place. So, yeah. Where I, where I picked up the line, for example, that might not be in the same place as it is for you. And then once you've done it, you come in here, guys, and interact with that panel and grab the credits just on the left yeah that's a pretty cool mask we'll be getting that in New Game Plus by the way yeah we're going to look like a right badass going through New Game Plus with that mask on and a foam finger No, something's blocking the blast doors over the comms array. The hell? There'll be a manual release over at maintenance. I'll go. Keep trying to reach them. Once you come back out here, a enemy will spawn. So just be ready. There he is. Trigger this guy first, otherwise he's probably going to follow you into this room on the left. Yeah, so kill him. That's it, once you killed him, come into this room here. There's nothing of great importance in this room, but it's got a lot of just random loot in here. I think it's got um, four, uh, four different spots of random loot, and then one of them will have 1,200 credits on the table. There it is. So grab, out, grab all that, guys, and then come out here to the maintenance gondola. In here, there'll be a power node on the left, and that wall box on the left. You've got a stomp box on the right and a shelf with 1,800 credits, and the use of gondola. Now, when you use this, if you look, if you look ahead where you're going, look at the wall on the right, and in a second you'll see a flashing item. There it is. Grab it, and yeah, a free item. When when I first saw that, I thought I found some treasure or something. I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what have I found here? So I just I just saw it by accident. Yeah, there's a text there, guys. The comms relay crew. Yeah, make sure you grab that text. Uh, sorry, that text log on that bench. And once you open this door, there's going to be one of these guys. Just be ready because once you shoot its legs, it, that enemy actually breaks off into loads of little parasites. And this is where your new kinesis upgrade comes in handy. Just one kinesis will kill any of these little parasites which are caught in it. Really, really handy, that is. And they come in this room, guys, because in here, you're going to find some loot, credits times 1800, and you're going to find the final upgrade for the plasma cutter, the weighted blades. And it's actually stored in here as well. In the store, you want to sell everything except for your stasis packs, three stacks of plasma energy, and of course, any weapon upgrades which you have. Yeah, this is the final upgrade for the plasma cutter. And what these weighted blades do, they make it so when you melee an enemy, you always knock them down. Yeah, you knock them on their on their ass. But you can't just keep you can't stun knock them. 
normally you have to wait a second before you hit them. You can't just hit them as soon as they get up, it won't knock them down, it'll just sort of make them move back a bit. You have to wait for them to come to you and then sort of melee them. You can't like melee them as soon as they're standing up for us or something for example or just jumping out of vent. It doesn't quite work that way, unfortunately. You have to give them a second or so after they've performed an action or just before, before you melee them. Yeah, so for the upgrade guys, a plasma cutter. You should be on 200 damage now. Faster rate of fire. So yeah, should be even more effective now. Okay, this elevator, there's going to be an enemy inside. So just open it and then move back. You might want to stasis him actually, because if you move too far back, the door will close. There you go, get rid of him, and then take the cargo lift down. Safe point there. And then come in here guys, the maintenance comms. Error. Blast doors obstructed. Please contact a repair technician. Still can't reach the Valor. What's happening with the antenna? It's blocked by... It's the Leviathan. It must have snagged on the comms array after we spaced it. It's not coming off without a fight. Isaac, there's no time. There is if I use the ADS cannons. Manual targeting like before. I can shoot it right off the hull. I got this. You focus on the Valor. Will do. After that story, come outside and now we're going to loot the corridor, what we left from earlier. Yeah, so loot that wall box first and then we'll make a safe. And then we'll head to the far, the far end of the corridor. There's a power node in that wall box there. Loads of loot here. Yeah, again, loads of Pulse Rifle ammo if they really want you to use it. Do not give in to the temptation, guys. We're going for Plasma Cutter only, remember. Okay, so this is the Leviathan. The tentacles have two attacks here. They'll either come straight over they'll come straight over to you. That indicates they're gonna do like a, a sort of thrusting attack. They'll come over to you and then it'll stay near you for about two seconds, then it'll move back and then thrust at you. All you have to do to dodge that is when it comes at you and then it moves back, just move left to right to dodge it. It's got three weak points by the way. You have to come to three ADS cannons, and each weak point you need to shoot it seven times to break the outer shell. And then you need to shoot the inner weak point nine times to kill it. But you want to shoot it only eight times. You want to make it so there's only one more hit before it's destroyed. So yeah, shoot each weak point, shoot it seven times to break the outer shell, the protective layer. And then shoot the weak point inside eight times only. Do not shoot it nine times and you destroy it. And each time you destroy a weak point, it actually triggers another phase of the boss, which you want to avoid triggering. So what I do, I get each weak point to so it's at like critical health pretty much and then we do them all at once so then you avoid basically staying in at second or third phases for too long so this is the middle one again hit the protective shell seven times to destroy it and then once it's destroyed hit the weak point eight times and another attack the tentacles will do by the way they'll either so if it doesn't come straight to you if it goes to the side that means it's going to do like a sweeping attack from one side of the screen to the other. So if it goes to the side, it'll either go to the side at the top or go to the side at the bottom. And either way, you should either have to move up to avoid it if it's at the bottom, and if it's at the top, you have to move down. That's basically what it'll do to begin with. A thrusting attack or a sweeping attack. So watch out for them. And obviously, on the fire cannons, you have to shoot the um, grove around it first so you can access it. And you've got ox oxygen on the two far ends of the map and one in the middle so just make sure you keep an eye on your oxygen this final one by the way the final weak spot once you've sort of taken down quite a lot of health on the first two this third one seems to take a lot more to destroy it so do the first two get them to critical health but then the third one you want to totally destroy it that's it like so now that trigger another phase then what you want to do is you want to get in the middle of the last two weak spots yeah, get in the middle so you can actually see them both. Yeah, so this is its second phase. It'll start shooting them acid sacks at you. So now get in between. Yep, the remaining two. But they should only have one hit left. So what you're going to do now, once you can see them both, 
you're going to use your plasma cutter. That's it. Quickly finish them off. And like that, guys. Get that trophy. Get off my ship. And you clean really quickly. And you'll avoid this phase, which is really annoying. Yeah, because basically there'll be like air mines just floating around now. If you fly into them, they'll detonate. So you can imagine trying to shoot all the sacks, the weak points, with them floating mines around. Quite annoying. And trying to avoid the tentacles at the same time. So that way, you basically pretty much avoid it. And then once you've done it, once you killed it, you come back in here, activate the panel one more time, guys. So it'll be a bit of story. And then what you need to do then, guys, is head outside and into the air airlock. And head into the ship to begin the next chapter. What happened? Something shook the whole crew deck. What hit us? An asteroid? Those things got onto the Valor. A rescue ship. They found your escape pod. And the one that used to be Chen is... God damn it! It's a Valor scrap. By the time another ship hears the SOS beacon, we'll all be dead. No, that's what I was telling you. I found an executive shuttle on the crew deck. Intact. And the log says that shuttle's missing its singularity core. It can't get us home. Wait. Maybe it can. If the Valor singularity core is okay... I could salvage it, install it on that shuttle, we're fucking out of here. Where's the Valor now? It's near comms. Keep us stable. Isaac, I'll grab a suit and EVA onto the Valor. Meet me there. We'll find that core together. Let's see you see clean up their own mess. I'm saving what I can. Entering Everything in this chapter is missable because you cannot revisit the ship. Yeah, at the end of the ship, you'll find out why. But yeah, you can't come back here. And there's one very useful item. There's a few power nodes. But the main important thing is the large med pack somatic, uh, which you will need. Yeah, if you don't get it now, then it's you've missed it. And you need all the somatics for a trophy. So in the barracks here, there's a bit of loot. You'll find some of the lockers and some of these little beds which you find yeah pretty small beds they have to sleep in and once you head outside into the corridor it's going to be new enemy type this is a stasis necro basically your stasis does not work on this until you burst the stasis module which is on the chest basically near where the heart would be if they had one yeah this airlock here once you kill that enemy you can open that airlock and just grab a piece of loot yeah, so with them guys, I normally I normally just shoot them in the head. Just go for the head, keep your aim horizontal. On that desk there, that planning desk, there's your audio lock, transformed soldiers. And then on the floor near this body, there's another audio lock, that's alien borders. On the wall just outside here is a power node. Yeah, transformed soldiers was a story related log in a previous room. Yeah, so on the planning desk you got orders and then you got alien borders by that corpse and when you take this power cell it will spawn two enemies in that room but if you open the door uh, stand in the doorway and then grab the power cell that way and then just back through the doorway so it closes behind you the enemies will not be able to get you so it prevents a little engagement with them and then once you slot the power cell you can come up on this cargo lift 
Yeah, that stasis necro, I think that's the final enemy type you come across. The final, you know, necro variant. I think it is. You do come across like a tentacle later, which you have to fight, but you've, you've fought them tentacles before, just similar to the ones that grab you. Um, but it's ones later, which basically keep trying to slam down on you. Basically, they come out of holes and they keep trying to slam you. Now, in here, you have to shoot them six fuses uh, to make that panel become active in the middle. Uh, but another thing you have to do is you see there's two bombers around here. Y yeah, you have to sort a power cell. But it's two bomber enemies. Do not shoot the bombs because it'll basically be instant death. Yeah, there's a warhead in the middle there. You can probably see it, a warhead. So if you detonate the bombers in here, it'll basically blow up the ship and you'll be dead. Yeah, that's why there's an enemy in the corner here which you cannot get to. I think they've just made it so... They've... They're basically tempting you to shoot his bomb. You know you can't get to him, you know he can't get you. So you likely to shoot his bomb, aren't you? I think that's why they've put him there like that. Just so you can find out the hard way. But yeah, when you start the power cell and shot all six fuse, you can interrupt the panel at the front and that will lower the warhead. And once the warhead is gone, then you can actually detonate the bombers if you want and you will not die. Yeah, it's actually three spears in this area as well. There's one before that debris. There's one near the ramp leading up to the panel. And then there's one just to the right of the panel. Yeah, what I normally do, I normally take a spear with me as well. Just so I can use it one of the necro, the stasis necros and instant kill them. We've got one of them power limb enemies coming up soon. You know them, you know them necromorphs, which when you kill them, all their limbs come off and they turn into parasites. Yeah, them them tall ones. Slend the slender necro. Yeah, one of them coming up soon. Yeah, so behind that doorway at the back there, you got a gold semiconductor. Yeah, save your game there because there's some tricky enemies in here. Yeah, so once you come a few steps through this doorway, he's gonna come around the corner. There he is. Shoot one of his legs off and then get ready for the power sights and then use your stasis to kill him. Yeah, but just watch any which manage to avoid it. Yeah, you can shoot them if you want to, but yeah, it's much easier just doing it this way. Providing you've got plenty of stasis to do it. Okay, so grab the spear if you brought it with you. You're gonna have two next two stasis necros basically appear in a second, two at once. And it can just help you have on that because then you can quickly kill one. Yeah, just come around the back here, keep on this left side, and you'll see them spawn ahead of you. Shoot it at one of them, and shoot them explosive tanks on the side there. That's it. And that should finish him off. This one was a bit too quick and he got past. Yeah, these guys are very, very fast. That's why if you aim for the chest, you likely to hit the stasis module as well. Uh, because until you destroy our stasis module, you can't actually throw, you can't actually freeze them. Stasis will not work on them. That's why you need to pop that stasis module on the chest. Okay, so in here, grab all the loot and then start the shooting gallery. Move these fire extinguishers out of the way, because if you use stasis next to you, if they're in the radius, in their field of effect, it will actually blow them up and it will damage you. So shooting range, you don't actually have to shoot anything. Just gonna waste ammo if you do. Yeah, just wait for it to finish and then some enemies will spawn. And then just kill the enemies. So you're gonna have a few necros spawn, a few normal necro morphs. You're gonna have a few necro tentacle babies. And you're gonna have a few necro stasis. You'll also have a bomber which will spawn. Yeah, so these guys, if they run up really close to you, rather than try and shoot them, just quickly punch them and like, knock them on the floor and just give you some breathing space. Yep, that's an armoured guy. Remember, go for his head if you can. You can't shoot him in the leg. Once you got rid of them, get a spear ready to sh lob at the tentacle babies. There'll be two of them. That's it. Then all you've got left is the bomber. You get a trophy for doing this. Yeah, front toward enemy. Once you kill them, grab a loot they drop and then loot them nearby lockers. In the nearby lockers. Yep, you're going to find a power node and a ruby semiconductor. So some nice loot in these lockers. Yeah, we just had to do a little cut there, guys. 
because I popped that trophy and um, I did have to redo this bit and obviously the trophy wouldn't have been there so yeah I had to cut it just after the trophy to once I got back here just in case you're wondering yeah so once you've done that just carry on guys following the story you head into the armory and then into the infirmary now once you get in here the large med pack the somatic is on your left but that laser in the middle will kill you but yeah you can try to bait the enemies to run into it yeah there's the last somatic guy well not the last one there's one more to get yet but yeah large med pack somatic to get by the laser in the middle you have to normally shoot it to freeze it yeah make sure you get that large med pack somatic very very important because if you miss it here on this chapter It'll be gone forever, so make sure you get it now. Isaac, you hearing this? We dead. still need the ox oxygen dead. tank somatic, so we're almost there. You know that yeah, once you get here, you might want to save your game because you've got a massive encounter coming up with a brute. So you might just want to wait for the save point to become active, then you can use it to save your game. Yeah, basically, here you're going to have a, a bunch of normal enemies, then at the end, you're going to have a brute. You're going to have two or three stasis enemies all together you have two or three necromorphs and you probably got, I think it's two neck uh, tentacle babies you have one pregnant necro as well you got stasis recharge there if you want to refill it so what I normally do I normally come and stop near where the entrance was if you're standing there, there's no vents so they're not going to spawn behind you yeah so come back down near where the entrance was and stay in this corner and then they're all going to come in front. You can see them all coming then. And sometimes that electric trap ahead will kill some of them. Yeah, you'll get a bomber come. You've got to make sure you're ready for the, ten the um, stasis enemies because they'll come flying at you from nowhere. Yeah, the stasis enemies haven't come yet. Yeah, sometimes you might have to move forward a bit just to trigger the next enemies. Here they come. Yep, don't worry about wasting ammo. Just make sure you get rid of them. There's going to be two of them. You do not want to be fighting them both at once. I think one of them actually died on the electric trap, actually. But once you kill them all, the brute will come through. It'll basically burst through a door at the back. There it is, you just see a door at the back blow up. Now will indicate that Brute's in the area. So just like normal, oh here it comes, yeah I knew there's another one. It's what I mean, sometimes they might not spawn straight away. And I think he spawned at the same time as a Brute as well. Or that I just hadn't moved forward enough to trigger him. Just remember there's two Necrostasis enemies that come once you've destroyed the others. Yep, so just freeze the brutes and then come up behind him. There's a stasis recharge in the area, so do not worry about racing your stasis. You can just refill it pretty easily. Yes, yeah, so once you killed him, stasis him, obviously shoots weak points, and then grab a power node that he drops, and then loot all the loot that which the enemies dropped. Yep, loot them lockers if you haven't already. There's normally a bit of loot around this area. There's sometimes some loot just down there on that crate. There's sometimes loot just around the corner. Oh, it's there now. Yeah, that loot there. But come to this room where the brute came from. There'll be three small containers in here. One will have a ruby semiconductor, this one. And you've got two small containers just in the back corner with just some random loot inside. And then we're going to head into the engine room. Yeah, I'm taking this with me. You don't need to. There's just a part later where two necro enemy, two necro stasis enemies spawn, uh, but they can spawn from anywhere. And it's you might have one coming from your front and one coming from your left, and you may get caught out. So I just bring that with me, just so I can sort of get rid of one really quick. 
and then focus on the other. So save my game, we're almost near the end of this chapter. So just be careful coming through this furnace. Obviously when the fire stops, move on through. There's a crate up ahead. Yep, so you can block any ones which are not turning off. Yeah, just block them. And they come through here in this corner. You'll find a bit of loot. And then these ones will just be permanently on, so you've got to use that crate up head and keep moving it. Just when you move in between the flames, try to stay near the front of the one you just came through, because otherwise, if you're near the end of it, near the end of the flame, sometimes once you move the crate out of the way, the flame will hit you. So it's best to stay near the front of the one you just passed through, like so. Because you don't know you don't know where it's gonna be, so you wanna make sure you're near the front. And then once you're at the end, move the crate out of the way. So that first flame is going all the way across because in a second three enemies are going to spawn and that flame is going to kill two of them. So activate the elevator and then back out the circuit breaker. Do not activate, do not deactivate the fire because otherwise it will not kill these enemies. Yes, yeah, so just kill them like this. And then once you kill them two, you can turn off the fire by enabling the fire suppression unit. Come around here, there should be an enemy down there which if I killed as well. And come to this corner, now there's no fire. The enemy will burst out from his trapdoor, kill him. And then grab the paranoid from the wall box and the loot as well in small containers. And carry on to the end and head up the cargo lift. Now there'll be a bit of story now. Um, after the story, just go on through and grab the singularity core. Take this explosive with you if you brought one with you from the previous room. Unknown biohazard detected. Lockdown initiated. Another malfunction. Atheist and Moore is in the red. Someone get the door open. <laughs> Chen? Christ, what did that thing do to you? Help me get him to the Kelly. This room coming up, the mess hall, this way you have two necrostasis to pierce. Yeah. I normally, the first one you see, as long as it's not spawned beside you like that guy. Yeah, love that um, canister at him. Hopefully that will kill him and they can just focus on the one. But if they get close, just put your gun down and melee them. Knock them down, otherwise they're gonna hit you. Yep, and hopefully you don't have too much trouble with them, guys. I mean, if if you're not bothered about taking damage, I mean, it's fine. You can just heal up afterwards, you know, or upgrade HP on your suit. But it just, it just... It... When you're trying to take no damage, yeah, that bit can be a little bit annoying. You know, just trying to avoid all damage whatsoever. Uh, but once you've done that, there's a bit of loot in the area. Then come through here, shoot the fuse to unlock the back door to the barracks. And then just escape now, guys. Escape your head back up, back in the um, comms away array room. Yeah, back in the communications array. You'll get a trophy, Legend Teller. That's for collecting 150 logs, just because with this last story log from this chapter, yeah, that'll be 150 for us. She'll pop that trophy. If not, don't worry, we do get more than we need. And then what we're going to do after that, we're going to head to the bridge, guys.
Yeah, we're gonna make a save. What we'll do, we'll head back to the bridge. We're gonna make a save um, in the in the hall there, and then we're gonna head into the tram tunnel. Get the final suits. Isaac, come in. I'm here. Fuck, that was close. Chen, Johnston, now Hammond, and I'm tracking movement from the Valor. I think some of those mutated soldiers made it on board. What about the Valor Singularity Corps? It's covered in blood, but I got it. Cut. I hope Hammond was right about that shuttle. He said it was on the crew deck, along with every unitologist on the ship and their marker. You need to... Wait, someone opened the door near the bridge, Adrian? It'll get you to the crew deck, but who's left with that kind of clearance? Isaac, something's up, but you have to get that shuttle. For God's sake, be careful. We're all that's left. Exiting zero gravity. Once you've saved it guys, we're going to head back to that store and the door on the right should now be unlocked. It unlocks via the story. That's why you have to wait all this time to get down here, unless you glitch. I think you can glitch down in the, into this tunnel. Now this corridor we're in now, a lot of times there's been a random enemy in here for me. So yeah, so just be careful when you're coming through here. Yeah, I've had a, preg uh, a pregnant necro, I've had a lizard in there, I think I've had a tentacle baby in there. Yeah, so just be ready when you come through there. Now when you get back down into the tram tunnel down here, gonna head to the end. There's gonna be two enemies, so just be ready to kill them. There'll be a lizard and a normal necro. Yeah look at that little sucker launching at me. Yeah so get them too. And then you wanna loot some more container and pick up Benson's rig. That's the last rig we need guys for the um you are not authorized side mission. So now we can get the master override key. So now we've got all the rigs, we're going to head back to the main atrium. We're going to head down into the captain's nest. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, you might encounter some enemies on your way back. Always be ready. Always expect the unexpected. So you're back down here, interact with the red terminal this time. You hand in the side mission, all the rigs, 
you'll get a trophy for clearance and you also unlock the master override security clearance this is the only clearance by the way which transfers over to new game plus clearance one two and three do not carry across they're just story related nothing you can do about that yeah but master override you can carry that across to new game plus well the blue terminal is blue now i guess yeah, that's it. Intro of it to complete it. Yeah, full clearance. You'll get that. You always get a master override. And now we've got a master override. We're going to head into water purification storage. And now we're going to be pretty much doing some backtracking. Just get some uh, some items which we couldn't get earlier. Yes, yeah, so there are all the rigs which you should have to complete that. Yeah, so go back up and go into the elevator in front, down into water purification storage. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, carry on down here. Once you get down, there'll be a door on the right, a master override door. And you'll be able to unlock that now. And inside there will be some loot. There'll be another weapon upgrade, the high yield grenades. That's for the pulse rifle. Yeah, so unlock this door. There will also be a power node in sight. Yeah, so grab all the loot. Grab the weapon upgrade. There you go. It's in that left locker. Pulse rifle. Loot the power node from the wall box. And then you're good to go. Now you're going to head back to a tram tunnel where we just were. And then we're just, just going to carry on through the crew deck. Basically going to reach the we're going to reach the crew deck tram station. Just so we can unlock it. And then we're going to do a bit more backtracking. And once we get there, guys, we're going to head to the mining slash engineering tram station. We're going to take the tram to there. Yeah, mining slash engineering. And then we'll be heading down into mining, the mining cargo lift lounge, where it's going to be a massive override crate, which have another weapon upgrade inside. Any enemies you encounter while doing this backtracking guys, it's going to be random. So it's not really much I can do to prepare for it. You know how to kill most enemies by now, uh, just from what we've done along the way throughout the story. So yeah, just be ready for any enemy type spawn, especially them little ants which spawn on the floor, which can spawn randomly. So yeah, just watch out for them.
once here, you just want to loot this crate. Now you've got the master override key. There you go, you get position lasers from inside, that's for the line gun. Head into tool storage next. Again, any enemies you find, guys, they're random. Yeah, in here next, you'll find another weapon upgrade in here the diffraction module for the contact beam and plenty of loot. And then, once you loot to this room, just head back up to tram station and then you can head into engineering, which will be on the opposite side of the platform. This is quite unlucky off me to have all these. Look at these, two pregnant necros and a, is that a lizard? Yeah, this is just unlucky to have all them down there. I think it's a tentacle baby, wasn't it? Yeah, once you're sure you've got them, well, you might not get them. Hopefully you don't get these. Like, I never really have enemies in this room that often. I bet that's like a really low chance. Yeah, but in here, yeah, come to this master chest at the back here, unlock it, and inside there is going to be the carbon fibre blades, guys, for the ripper. Next, we're going to head through here, now we're heading into platform storage. You could have come here much earlier, because it's only a level 2, but I just tried to do it at the same time as that other one. Yeah, and in here, guys, you're going to get the final somatic, that's for the oxygen tank. Should pop a trophy, merchant, yeah, that's finding all somatics. And you've also got Paranoid on the wall there, in that wall box. And then all we're going to do now, back to a tram station guys, take the tram back to crew quarters. And we're going to carry on through the crew deck area. <laughs>
Yeah, what's me going on here? Yeah, be a bit of loot just on the left when you first come in. Yeah, a bit of loot on the table, somebody left. And a small container there. There might be a bit of loot here as well on that little table. And a little bit of loot just tucked in the side there near that middle sort of partition. And you want to come over to the storeroom, the store, the shop. Yeah, wow, plenty of items. Yeah, sell everything except for your stasis packs and your plasma energy. At least, probably at this point, at this point in the game, you're probably going to always have at least three stacks of ammo on you. I'm, I, I'm normally going for two and a bit here. Yeah, then sell everything else except for your weapon upgrades. I'm going to keep them for later. And come over here and save your game. We're about to do a little mini game very shortly, which you have to be pretty accurate to do it in time. I mean, it's probably, if you plan on PC, this will probably be mega easy. So you can just use the mouse to point to each, you know, to point, and it'll be mega easy. But yeah, on control, on a console, it's quite difficult, quite tricky. Yeah, so there, guys, it's uh, Advanced Engineer Rig Somatics. You can grab that. You've also got a lot of loot in here as well, which you can loot. Yeah, but most of all, you want that Advanced Engineering Rig. That's basically suit level 5 and it's the last one you find in the story. You unlock suit level 6 from completing the game. Yeah, and here, you've got a audio log, while well, a text log on that stall, Z ball rules. Grab that one. And come in here. Now what we're going to do first of all, we're not going to play the game yet. He's going to turn around, you see this vent on the top of the wall? Three tentacle babies going to come from there in a second. Three of them. Basically once you get back enough. So keep an eye on it. Once they come through, start shooting them. Stasis if you need to. Be best if you wait for more to come out before you stasis. Then hopefully you can stasis them all at once. If they don't sort of move too far out of the um, proximity of it. There you go. We've got two of them. Okay. I'll shoot the one which has um, escaped. Then move back to these. Yeah, it'd be three of these, so you really want to try and get these as soon as they come out of the vent, you know, while they're all sort of grouped together. Otherwise, you can have one one side of the room, one on the top, and one on the other side, making it much harder to avoid them. There you go. Once well, you've got all three, we're going to grab the power cell and just move it out of the way of the mini game. Yeah, it's pretty much basketball, but with zero gravity. You have to get that power cell out of the way so it doesn't... If you don't get it out of the way, you'll probably grab it by accident while playing this game. But right, so you might want to you might want to stop on the front. You might want to stop on the middle part where I am. And all you've got to do, guys, is grab the basketball and lob it into the hoop. Or grab the Z-ball, lob it into the hoops. If you see any hoops which are glowing, go for them because they'll give you 10 points instead of 5. And you've basically got, just got to hit each level range before the timer runs out and then it'll move up to the next level. There's six levels all together, you have to complete them all in order to unlock the lockers and for a trophy, yeah, you have to complete every level for a trophy. It's it's not mega hard, I mean the pull-ups in Final Fantasy 7 is worse. This is mainly a bit of skill involved rather than, you know, luck and timing and it may take you a few attempts but you do normally get this in the end. It's just the camera movement in this game is very slow, even with it turned up full. That's one of the bad things about this. And there's not really many tips I can give you on this, really. I mean, sometimes rather than trying to move it fast, sometimes I just move slowly from where I grab it. And as soon as it lines up with the hole, lob it. And yeah, just keep doing that. And once you've done it, guys, just head back into the back room and grab all your rewards from the lockers.
Yeah, you would get a trophy there, guys. Z baller, complete level six, and zero G basketball. And then you come in here, you grab all your loot. You get plenty of loot from doing this. You get pulse rounds, contact energy, force energy, credits, ruby semiconductor, and you also get power node. And then once you've got all the rewards, place a power cell, come up the lift, and grab the crew deck key card from in the corner. Now, what room you go in depends what enemy is going to get. If you go in that side corridor first, you're going to get two pregnant necros. But if you come in the bathroom first, after getting that key card, you'll get two armoured necros instead, which is a lot easier than killing two pregnant necros. Remember these guys, try to just keep hitting them in the head to kill them. That's it, so you just have two of these. Yeah, so it depends what side you take. Like say from once you get a crew deck key card. Come in the bathroom first, you'll get them too. But if you come into this corridor first, um, from that lounge, zero G lounge, you'll get two pregnant necros instead. Now once you open this door, there'll be a sleeping enemy in front. Kill him before you enter the room. That's it, because once you enter the room, two necro spawn is gonna spawn. And you wanna quickly kill him. So there's one. You might want to just stay sat one and then go focus on the other and then come back to it. They'll always go for the same enemy, the same body to begin with, by the way. So wherever they was for me, that's where they should be for you. You know which body they go for first. They always seem to go for the first body. Don't know why. And then come over to the store. Sell anything you can. Just do the normal stuff. You know what we're doing by now. And uh, once you've sold it all, we're going to go into the shop. And we're actually going to buy these suit level 5 for 60,000 yeah that will give you 30 slots now and you'll have 15% armor once you've done this head through cargo lift guys well save your game head through cargo lift and there's going to be a little cutscene Convergence, thanks to this increase. Mercer, wait. Tell me. I want to understand. What is Convergence? But you already know. Dead or living, we all feel the markers to purpose. Don't you want to be reunited with the people you lost? I... Yes. Then why not it me? Mr. Temple has refused. But we are so close. Everything that has happened on the Shamora is just the beginning. When you put it that way, you and your marker can go to hell. Will come faster. 
After the cutscene, you'll be thrown into a fight with a hunter. So just like normal, quickly try to take off all his limbs. Stasis him if you need to. Yeah, then what you want to do, you want to shoot the sack. Shoot that sack and it should unblock the door behind you. But it won't unblock it straight away. You have to wait for the tentacle, the growth, to um, explode. And then once it's open, get through. Make sure the hunter's not following you. And you should be safe to go, guys. He shouldn't, he shouldn't follow you through here. Unless, of course, he got through the doorway before it closed. That's why you want to use stasis on him or take off his limbs before he come through. And then just make your way through this corridor. There's no oh items. God, I've never right. found any items in this corridor. And open the first door on your right. Come to this mess hall here. There'll be a stomp box in this corner and a stomp box in the other corner near the cargo lift. Now when you go through cargo lift, there's going to be two of them tall necros which when you kill the limbs break off and turn into parasites. There'll be two of them. But there will also be a parasite which will spawn from this vent on your right. So once you take a few steps forward and the enemy spawn, shoot that one first quickly. Stasis this one, run around the back of him, otherwise you're gonna get sort of pushed into a corner which you do not want to happen. So stasis one, run around him, come around the back here. And once they're both stasis, take out their legs. There you go, loads of parasites there. And they start using stasis guys to freeze and kill them all. Remember, if any of them get caught in the stasis, it'll kill them. Because we've got that upgrade module. And any remaining, you can just shoot them with your uh, plasma. That's it, we've got them all. It shouldn't be any more enemies. Just to make sure there's no straggler parasite anywhere. Now sometimes some loot on one of them seats. And sometimes some loot there which I just picked up sometimes some loot in this corner just there grab the stomp box off the bar smash it and behind the bar should be ruby semiconductor yeah grab that one and then we'll head over to the upgrade bench now you're going to upgrade the suit you're going to upgrade HP size air energy and duration yeah you should get paranoid times four from all them weapon upgrades which you had yeah so HP energy air size and the duration so you should use paranoids times five right now i've still got another hp to use if i need to uh, maybe you have maybe you haven't um, but i will be using that anyway at start let's start the next video basically in new game plus the first sh shop we reach we upgrade everything that we can and it's normally two guns remaining so yeah at the end at the end of new game this first playthrough you get enough to upgrade everything except for two weapons yeah, so power node here guys, once you come outside in the corridor, grab that power node just on the left. Now once you get to the end here, a lizard's going to come through that back vent where the power node was. So just get ready to um, kill him. Yeah, safe point here. Always a good idea to save your game. Yeah, once you get through here, you're going to be in the crew deck lounge. There's three sort of areas like this in this chapter, where you've got sort of like a, a big central room like this, and then there's a few rooms that branch off. And you have to go and destroy a sack, which will basically allow you to move the marker in that big room where that cutscene was and the hunter appeared. Yeah, that's basically three massive pieces of growth which you have to destroy in order to move the marker. And there's three sort of areas like this which lead to a sack. And then um, throughout, there'll be multiple enemies, hunters, and uh, I guess a few little puzzles like this. You've got all, the, all these chairs stacked up by the doorway. Now, once you come in here, in this bunk on the right, yeah, you find that text log. Yeah, that's um, thank you, doctor. And they come around to the end here, guys, and there'll be two guardians. Take this out with uh, the stasis. Lob the stasis at each of them to kill them. There's loads of loot in that room, by the way, but I don't really bother collecting it all. You've got a power node in here. You've got a bit more loot. I get the loot in this room, but just not in that big room. You can if you want. There is a bit of loot in there, but nothing of major importance. And then once you've got all this loot in here, 
grab the power cell. There is a sack in that previous room. Yeah, just around the corner there's a little bathroom. There's a sack in there, necro sack. Do not shoot that yet, because once you shoot that, it will cause the hunter to spawn. We don't want to spawn the hunter yet, because if you do, you're going to have to carry this power cell. And you've got the hunter chasing you. Yeah, it's going to refill my stasis. You want to come to this room here. This will take you to a cargo lift. And um, place that in the slot to power it ready for later. So it can make a swift escape. And then save your game. Now make way back into that previous room. Now we're going to shoot the sack. When you shoot the sack, if you use your stasis, you can actually get you can actually run away a little bit before it actually explodes. Yes, this sack here. Use your stasis and then start running away. And then after a few seconds that should kill it. Yeah, there you go. But it also gives you time to get away from the hunter, which is gonna spawn. Yeah, back out here. Into this room here where we just took the power cell. Just be ready when you open the door, just in case any enemies get close, you can stasis them. I've had an enemy chase me through here once because he's too quick. And then into the cargo lift. Yep, just when you get to the top of the cargo lift, just wait a moment, just in case there's any enemies near. There will always be a bomber around the corner, which is in case there's any more enemies. Just let them run away first. Yep, there's a bomber. And they carry on back into Central Nexus and use the cargo lift. Yeah, back in this big room, but the hunter has now gone. But now you actually be able to um, access a cargo lift. There's loads of loot in this area as well, but I leave it. But if you want to grab it for yourself, by all means do so. I grab the loot at the top, just not the loot at the bottom, just because it's it's messy, it's all over the place. Yeah, so once at the top here, you go to the shop, do the normal stuff, and you can also go to save point afterwards and save your game. We're going into deluxe quarters next, so save your game and then we'll head in there. In here, there should be a audio log. Just got it. That's story related. That audio log, which just automatically started playing. But once coming here, guys, there's going to be a lockdown. Yes, yeah, so just be careful. Now it's going to be three of them spitting necros spawn. So I normally try and just get in a corner and then make sure you've got ice on them. Freeze them if you need to, but always try and keep near a pillar. So if any spit acid at you, you can hide behind the pillar to avoid it. Yeah, see that one spitting acid at me. Yeah, it's a, quite tricky that bit. Like I say, just because there's three of them and they can all spit acid, you normally use a pillar to defend yourself, but if there's too many with a line of sight to you and you can't hide from them both, then obviously freeze one of them or two of them and they can hide, you can kill the third one while the other two are frozen and then obviously move from one to the other. 
Uh, once you come in here, once you get a fine enough up here, an enemy will spawn behind you. Yeah, there's Necro Sack. Do not destroy the Necro Sack here. Yeah, kill that enemy that spawns behind. And they're going to head in into here, the deluxe quiet bunks. <laughs> Down here, there'll be an uh, NPC. Once the NPC dies, a necro tentacle baby will spawn in. There's sometimes loot behind that table, underneath it. There's a stomp box there. Yeah, so once she properly dies, once she stops laughing, be ready for tentacle baby. That's why I've got my pipe to instant kill it. Yeah, there it comes. And there it goes. Yeah, so just grab anything you can. Uh, but once you've looted everything, grab a power cell. Take it outside. And then grab a pipe. Because now a dead enemy will appear at, at the end. Yeah, just laying dead. So there's a lot of pipe out in There's loads of pipes in this room. Grab the power cell. Slot it in that cell. Once you start that power cell, another enemy will spawn behind you. Get ready to take him out. Yep, and then you want to interrupt the circuit breaker and open the doors. Once you've done that, come into here, guys, into the guest consultant's suite. And here's going to be a bit of story now. This first side mission. Just while the dialogue is playing out, you can loot the area off of the lockers, and then once the room at the far end is opened, head inside. Sick. Sick. Sorry, late shift. How are you? I, um... Uh, my mother, she's, um... Octavia? How's she doing? How's she doing? <laughs> she's dead, Nicole. They both are. She killed my dad. Than herself. Oh. Yeah. The church. They uh, took the bodies before I could. Uh... Oh my God. Oh Isaac, I'm so sorry. Fucking oh, told you. Stop washing. Stop it. Just stop talking. said she was herself again. You said she would be better at home. I trusted you. God. You might as well have killed him yourself. She was better. You told me to leave for the issue, right? You, you pushed me to... You know what? Go to hell, Isaac. Nicole. Once inside, grab the force gun upgrade off the table. There you go. Grab the tick amplifier and then play this recording, and that will finish that side mission. You'll get a trophy, hole again, pursue Nicole's investigation, and that's for completing the scientific methods side mission. Yep, yeah, there you go, hole again. And then you want to come to this room next, guys. This is Deluxe, Deluxe Shift Bunks North. In here, you normally find some loot and a gold semiconductor by this door. Yeah, grab that. Head back out here. Remember, still do not shoot that necro sack. Once you do, it's going to trigger some enemies to spawn. Yeah, now you want to come into here, guys. Deluxe shift bunks south. And here you have some loot. You have a weapon upgrade in the master override chest. High pressure nozzle for the flamethrower. You also have a gold semiconductor in the wall box next to it. And then just some other bits of loot you can pick up. Okay, so that's all the loot in this area, guys. All the major loot. So now we can move on with the story. 
So again, that sack is around the corner if you remember. So I'm going to just lob stasis. Run over here. Now, before you run through this door, you want to wait for a hunter to drop in. There he is. And they come through here. If you do not let him drop in there first, he'll spawn in here where you are now. And he'll be blocking. He won't let you pass. Or you have to kill him first to get past. You know, cause him to regenerate. So it's best to let him spawn in that big room. The quarters. And then come into the corridor and make your way here. Then once you're back here, you can save your game again. Now it's one more bit like that guys and then we're pretty much done for this chapter. In here you got a log just on the left there guys, audio log, more than sacrifices, just on the floor to the left. And then once you get into the ARP corridor, beyond that painting ahead is a gold semiconductor. There's a log on the floor there, text log, that's planetary mining. And there'll be a bit of loot in this area as well. Now. The this area is a bit confusing because the actual door, the names above the doors are different to the names on the map. So what I've gone with, I've gone with the names above the door. Now in this room, Captain B. Matthias, you'll find a text log just in the far left corner. It makes you pick it up, that's eternal rest. And then next we're going to come in Officer D. White's room. You get another text log in here. This is White's list. Yep, yeah, I think I think the name on the map is wrong because you find in like you find in a log for D White in D White's room if you go by the name on the door. So yeah, I think the name on the map is the thing that's wrong, not the actual name um, above the actual door, which you can see. Yeah, so here in the bathroom, you're gonna pick up that key card, guys. Exec quarters key cards, and then shoot the sack at the back of the room. I always shoot the sack when you first come in here because there's no way leaving that till later saves any time because when you shoot that sack it doesn't spawn the hunter but when you come back in here it causes a lockdown so it doesn't really make a difference so we just shoot it when we go in there to get the key card. Yeah what's going to spawn here? You're going to have a spawner which I just killed with that pipe. Yeah you have a spawner, spawns you want to get rid of him quickly or just kill the bodies beforehand but the thing with that is it means he'll come for you instead so it just means more enemies coming for you at once and then you also have some necromorphs, the armoured guys you have you have two necromorphs spawn first and the necro spawner and then once you kill some of them you have two more nec necromorphs spawn so just make sure you're ready with stasis you know once you've got them all because the lockdown will lift and once you've got them all going to head into the north west room that's commander V Holt. Yeah, northwest. This one here. You'll find a gold semiconductor. There'll also be an enemy in here playing dead, so take a pipe in with you if you can. There you go, so you can instant kill him. There'll be a master override chest. Yeah, gold semiconductor in this one. And then shoot that fuse panel at the back. Just open the door on the left. Yeah, the southwest door, which is second officer J Chick's room. Then here you'll find a power node, amongst some other loot. Yeah, and that's pretty much all you need, guys. We shot the sack. We've got all the important items. Yeah, so head back to Central Nexus now. You'll find more of the growth has disappeared, but there's one more to do yet. But it's the one, it's pretty much just one room, so it's a lot simpler. No enemies as well. It's back in here. Now we head into the far left side. There's some loot here, by the way. It's a war box just on the right there, which I forgot, and a small container in the corner. I actually loot it a bit later. Yes, yeah, so you've got to wait for this dialogue to play out, but while you're waiting, you can loot these three lockers on the left. 
Yeah, loot these three loggers while you're waiting. I need to destroy that cluster behind you. Not yet. Not, if, escape on that shuttle and you'll kill us all. When they took the marker from each of seven, they woke the being in the core of the planet. The hell is that? Mercer calls it the hive mind. Nexus organism which controls these necromorphs telepathically. If we leave while the hive mind is active, well, he saw valor. If even a single necromorph escapes, humanity is finished. The marker. Amelia, she knew. She told me it would return the beast to its slumber. Okay. So if we return the marker to Aegis 7, it'll stop the outbreak? Exactly. But we need the shuttle to return it to the planet. You have a singularity core. And I can let you through. So what do you say? If it'll end this for good, deal. Excellent. I, I can distract Mercer, but not for long. And get the marker to the shuttle bay quickly. Yeah, once ready. Yeah, green herb there. If you need it, we feel your health. Yeah, come in here. There's been an upgrade bench, but it's a wall box with some loot inside. That's pretty much all there is in that room. I think that wall box always has a stasis pack inside. Pretty sure. Every time I've looted it, it's always been a stasis pack. Yeah, so on that table there, you've got a text log. Nexus organism. And you just have a look. There's normally a few more loot in this room, but it doesn't always spawn. And they shoot that final necro sack. That's it, the final one. Now it's going to make a final save just before we make our way to the end of this chapter. Yeah, if you've got loads of loot, you probably just do want to go into the store and um, sell some of it to clean out your inventory. Gonna have a big battle coming up shortly. Basically, about eight enemies will spawn. You have three necromorphs, then another two necromorphs, and a necro lizard, and a necro bomber. Yeah, so altogether seven enemies. Uh, but it'll be them armored necros mostly, which are quite tricky to kill. You need to go for headshots, really. Yeah, now um, you're normally supposed to fight these at the bottom, which is quite uh, pretty tricky. Yeah, you normally have to fight them down the bottom, which is quite tricky. There's not really a safe area to camp. You know, there's vents all over the place. So what I do, if you come back up on the cargo lift quickly, it will still be active and you can use it. Yeah, come back up quickly and then kill them at the top. Killing them at the top is just it's safer because they're already spawned at the bottom. But if you kill them at the top, they're sort of all spawning one by one because they're having to leave the bottom area and come up to you. And they can't all come through events at once unless they're coming through different ones. So it's just a bit of a safer place to kill them. Sometimes I have just stood in a corner up here. One of the corners, you know, where there's a, a narrow path leading to a corner. Sometimes I've just camped in a the corner there. There are events on the end, but normally I've only had normally just one enemy come through a vent at a time. And the rest have sort of come from ahead. So remember, there's going to be three necros. And then another two necros and a necro lizard and there will be a necro bomber as well so eight enemies in total we might want to count just so you know how many you'll be waiting for just make sure you got your stasis ready yeah like this corner where I am now sometimes I do just camp near just got to be careful none of them come in that vent for your back but if you're near the wall you can normally see them coming 
And yeah, once you've got them all, you hear that little tune. All the lights will come back on. They can come down and go down in the cargo lift. This next bit can be quite difficult also. So once you've killed them, you might want to just make another manual save. That save point at the top there. And you want to interact with the panel near the marker to start loading it. Then you can grab them lockers, break that stun box if you want, and then come through here. First door on the left is going to be a power note in that wall box. And you can loot the area if you want to. You don't have to, but you can see I'm doing it here. There's a lot of loot in this area, a lot of stump boxes. So he's going to grab all the loot in the area. And you'll see me actually move the stasis canister as well. They can be good, if you remember, because from what they do, they create a field which if an enemy passes through it, it will slow them down. I did mention it before, it's not like you got your stasis, which only affects enemies which you hit with it, you know, with the initial impact. Yeah, stasis canister, it creates a big field, so it's good to use here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to leave it here, just near the market. You'll see why soon. Do not leave it at the back of the ship, because otherwise it'll get blown up by ship's thrusters when you ignite them. Yeah, stasis recharge there. Make a note of where that is, we'll be standing next to it later. And you, once you've got all the loot guys in the area, come to your ship and insert the singularity core. There you go. Grab the loot inside of there, is any? And then come over here. Open the locker, grab the two stomp boxes, then when you're ready, interact with the panel. Now, the hunter's going to drop down when you do this. So be ready, and you want to do this as quick as I do. So aim at the wall, because otherwise it's probably going to freeze this door on the left here and you do not want that to be slow so shoot it at the wall that will slow down the hunter and then come through here keep an eye out so there might be a necro morph running up to you quickly from behind melee that guy come behind him just make sure there's no necro running at you because sometimes there has been in the past there you go and now you want to set that off and then come over here get near the station recharge ready Right, what I do with that necro stasis, you know that first one we went through a ship and I melleed that stasis necro. That's because I wanted to shoot his stasis module so that I can freeze him. And then what I do, wait for all the enemies to come around the back there. You need to wait for the hunter to be at the very back of the ship so, so that you come back in here, you turn on the thrusters and it kills him, like that. That's pretty much what you have to do guys. And that's how I do it without taking damage. I'm almost always successful when I do it that way. It's probably you probably have got to learn the trick. I mean, you do have to be quick. If you're not quick, that first necrostasis enemy, sometimes another one might run up behind you and eat you from behind. So you sort of have to run straight. You run straight through the ship, out the other side. The necrostasis will be there waiting for you. You melee him and then run around the side if you want, just in case anybody does come up behind you. Ready? And then while he's on the floor, you have to shoot his module and on his heart quickly and then you go back around the corner you shoot that canister to make a stasis field so all the enemies down then in the meantime you run over to that other stasis recharge you there ready and then all you're basically going to do you're going to keep spamming stasis until the hunter is behind the ship he needs to be behind the ship otherwise it's not going to work and then you just run back into that control room and quickly Use the panel one more time while he is slowed. The thing is, if you start killing enemies there, guys, they just respawn. That's why there's no point in killing enemies. You just want to get through that last bit as quick as you can. Yeah, the enemies will just keep respawning. Alright, guys, so here, you're yeah, in chapter 11 now. So, just going to do one more bit of backtracking. This chapter is quite short, actually. Yeah, so um, while this dialogue was playing out, we just got all the loot in this area and shot that fuse in that door at the back just to uh, make that shortcut available if you ever want to come back through there. Yep, keep it off the fate. Yeah, so up here there's going to be a power node in the wall box here. 
and they come to cryogenics is that place from earlier where for the hunter long ago yeah while you're here if you want to you can refill your stasis there will be two lockers on the right here which you can now unlock Yeah, unlock lab storage, now you've got clearance level 3. In here you'll find weapon upgrade guys, photon en energizer for the line gun, that's another weapon upgrade. And then once you've got all this loot, just make your way back, basically back to the security station. And on the way there you should trigger a video log, get to cargo, story related. Yes, follow my lead, I'm taking you back to where we need to go. There's one more room we want to go into. Get one more weapon upgrade, and then we're pretty much done for the backtracking. Yeah, that is story related, that log. Yeah, once in the security station, guys, make a save. Mr. Clark, we're approaching the hangar bay. We'll meet you there with the marker. Yes, Amelia Sue. We'll send the hive mind back into the darkness. So glad you gave that guy our only escape shuttle. Shit, Isaac. Those things you've killed, their biomass is pulled down in cargo bay. It's recombined itself into... Well, it's something huge, and the marker's embedded right in the middle. How the hell do we do this? I've got the instrument's cargo cranes. They can move half a bay of mining gear, no problem. If whatever's down there wants to wrestle for the marker, I'm in. Override the safeties, and yes, it might work. But hurry, we're losing critical systems fast. Yeah, we're heading into bioprosthetics lock room now. Now I've got clearance level three. In here you can find another weapon upgrade. This is a portable heliotron for the contact beam. Just keep a lookout for any random enemies you may encounter on the way. And once you've got that guys, you're gonna head back to the tram station and you're gonna ride it to the hangar, the cargo control bay. Once there, you'll go to the shop like normal, sell all your stuff which you don't need, keep your stasis packed, and your plasma energy, and your weapon upgrades. And then we're going to head into the cargo bay.
make sure you save your game here because you're going to have loads this next encounter you're going to have loads of enemies you've got to fight and it can be overwhelming you'll also find the peng treasure here finally so what I normally do first I shoot that sack and then come down the cargo lift now it's always going to be one bomber enemy already down here Yeah, there he is. Starts in the middle. While I'm waiting, just going to grab this loot from the locker. Yeah, I'm making my way around this cargo bay in like a, a anti-clockwise route. So try and do the same. Yeah, here, where the growth is, there'll be a guardian. So you stasis him and leave it to kill him. Then while you're waiting, shoot these three sacks. Loot the master override crate, there'll be a weapon inside, a weapon upgrade, the force gun upgrade, and then in that corner there, it's a audio log guys. That's the last word audio log. And then grab all this loot in this corner. There'll be a power node on one of the walls, in the wall box, and you see these crates with the four spears, move the stasis, kind of set out of the way, and then stomp it to release all the spears, and then take one with you. Because in this corner is going to be a pregnant necro. Be ready to lob a spear at its legs to instant kill it. Just do not hit it in its belly. Yeah, there you go. Pin its foot to the wall. And then in the corner lock here, you've got a gold semiconductor. Grab that loot from that terminal and then interact with that panel on the left, the blue panel, to engage a cargo crane. Now in a second all the enemy is going to spawn, so quickly move that stasis canister, loot the lockers and then stomp this trolley in the middle to um, release the four spears. And they're going to use them to kill most of these enemies that spawn. Yeah, there'll be three necros that spawn to begin with, and then once you've killed so many, well not three necros, there'll be one necro which, which will spawn, then you have two more, and then you have two more necros, a necro bomber and a necro bomber uh, sorry and a, a pregnant necro so all together you'll have about seven enemies spawn so yeah but they don't all spawn at once sometimes a few will spawn and then once that marker you see the marker there once it moves so far around the cargo bay the others will spawn so yeah like I say it's going to be about seven and just be careful when the pregnant necro spawns, obviously try not to shoot its belly. Yeah, there's a bomber. Watch out for the bomber once it spawns. There's the pregnant one. Okay, so once you've got them all, yeah, the once you kill the bomber and the pregnant one, that should indicate no more going to spawn. The bomb is normally one of the last enemies to spawn in the waves. Yeah, now you want to take some of the spears with you. There's going to be two of them, two tentacles which are going to spawn when you get near the big open base in the middle where the marker's moving around. Yeah, two stomp boxes there which you can loot. Get it out of the way so it doesn't explode and kill you by mistake. Yeah, so you, these spears do not kill these in one hit, but a necro spear will. So come over to this open cargo bay and just shoot in its weak point, and that will kill it in one hit. And then get another necro spear. It has to be a necro spear, a normal spear, a pipe, you know, or a metal pole will not kill him in one. And there'll be another one which will spawn here. There you go, just two spears to kill him. You can stasis him if you want to and then shoot them and then once you've done that you want to activate that bay and then just wait for the bridge to come down yeah wait for it to come back down and you head over to the area near where the cargo lift was now you've got one more wave of enemies and you're going to kill them from here remember you've gotten four spears in the corner there from that trolley which we broke earlier you're just going to have the same enemies spawn again pretty much. You have three necros this time. 
a pregnant necro and a necro bomber, so five altogether. Approximately. Yep, here comes a pregnant one. He almost got me. He just popped up out of nowhere. You really got to watch out for these guys. Oh no, he's jumping out of the way. He's gone into zero G. Right, and that's it guys. That's all the enemies. That's it, no more will spawn. Yeah, that's the cargo base section done. All right, so you just got you got to um, lift one more bridge. Yeah, that use that panel there. Yeah, the marker took the long way around. That's it. Once you use that panel, guys, that will be it. You'll get an objective full update in seconds. Uh, but what we do now is going to move these crates out of the way and get the pen treasure and get a trophy. Yeah, there you go. There's always pen. Right, come back up afterwards. Now we're heading out back to the main cargo bay now where the ships are. We'll head back down to the, um, well, head back across to a tram station and go down. Yep, go down on the cargo lift back to the flight lounge. Once you get the exit near the exit in this room, just be careful because there's going to be a lockdown. Yeah, you're going to have a necro, a stasis necro to begin with, and you're going to have a normal necromorph, and you have two necromorphs and another necro stasis. So five enemies in total, guys. There's not really much you can use in this room, so just try to go for. That's all I do is go for headshots. That's it. Just unload ammo into them. You got plenty of ammo. Don't hold back. Yeah, don't go for limb shots, you don't really have the time to pick off limbs. The normal necros that spawn, they will be spitters. So yeah, you do not want to leave any enemy for too long. Just unload onto the head. That's it, if you, if you um, burst a module on the stasis necro, and he's frozen for a moment, you can get rid of the others. Just remember, if they get too close to you, just melee them to knock them down and give you some breathing space. That's it. Once you've got them, guys, just a bit more story to follow for the time being. And then once you get to the, once you get back outside to the main hangar bay, where you have to activate the gravity panel, do that, guys, and I'll meet you back there. Okay, so you're back in zero G. We're going to come over here. You might have, if you've done a bit of optional exploring yourself, 
um, earlier on in the game you might have already explored a bit of this part uh, but you want to grab a power cell slot it in there and you want to switch over to the load and shutter if the power cell isn't there by the way it might be in the bay um, a bit further down there's normally a power cell in there as well I don't know why there's two power cells in that area maybe one might despawn if you slot it earlier in the game I don't know but yeah you basically want to open this load and shutter because in this small container it's a diamond semiconductor as far as I know that's the only one in the game and they sell for 25,000 Peng sells for 30,000 so it's almost as valuable as a Peng yeah to open this obviously as you saw me doing you slot the power cell and you select load and shutter on the circuit breaker and then once you've got all that loot guys in there go back over to the circuit breaker and activate the cargo work rail tracks once you've done that you want to activate this one basically you see the tracks at the bottom you see the platform you want you want to line up the tracks with the platform you want the first one and this middle one line up the track so it's going the same direction as the platform you're on like so but this one on the corner on this far right corner leave it how it is so it's basically going across the track and come down here the marker should come up activate the marker panel start moving it and then come in here turn around because some enemies are going to spawn yep you can have a tentacle enemy spawn and a lizard so just wait in here now makes it a bit easier because none of them are going to come from above you see you should see them all come in on the floor ahead and there's a lizard on the right and there's tentacle baby on the left so just once you've got rid of them two you can quickly grab this loot near you there's a power node on the wall remember i think i already got that did i get that i hope i did anyway yeah there was a power node back there i can't remember if i got it or not now let me just check actually yeah I did got it just before the um, marker moved yeah so what you want to do now you want to interact with that panel on the right the one which you didn't earlier and switch that so that it lines all the track up now that marker should move all the way to the track at the far end now in line with the ship but it's also going to spawn some more enemies two lizards and two ten tentacle babies normally the reason I'm moving around here is because sometimes a lizard gets trapped on that marker as it moves across. Because that's basically moving and the lizard runs into it and he glitches out and sometimes he'll just teleport close to you. And I don't want to risk the damage. So that's why I'm move, moving about. Just so he doesn't warp into me. I've no idea what that is. Oh, it's a body. It's a funny. It's making a funny shape then. Yeah, see, that's where the other power cell is. Don't know why there's two. Yeah, there might be one more tentacle baby. By the way, like I said, it's normally two lizards that will spawn and two tentacle babies. It's normally when you interact with the. Basically, when you get the markers go all the way to the far end, that's when the other enemies spawn. But because we've already done it. By having the track already lined up, it spawns the two lizards and the two tentacle babies at the same time. Yeah, there's one more somewhere. I know he's here. Oh, there he is. Just spotted him. That's it. Should there be any more, guys? Yeah, so it depends how you do it. If you don't line up the track beforehand, then you'll normally have one lizard and one tentacle baby spawn. And then when you line up the remaining tracks, the remaining lizard and the last tentacle baby spawn. But if you do it all beforehand, then they all spawn at once, two lizards and two tentacle babies. And when you move the marker initially, there's always one lizard and one tentacle baby to begin with. Okay, so once you're doing all that, guys, come over here. It'll be a bit of story. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of story now, just for the time being. So just follow my lead, follow the story, and then we're going to head upstairs, and I'll come back just to point out this power node, which we're going to get.
couldn't trust him with the marker. Kendra, what are you doing? What my department sent me here to do. Even if the Valor couldn't help me out like I wanted. Department? Who are you? I work for EarthGov, cleaning up a very, very old mess. I told you and Hammond that Aegis 7 was off limits. The planet was one big government experiment. The marker, this divine artifact, it was built by human hands. That's impossible. It's an alien world. The miners dug up the fucking thing. After it was planted here a few hundred years ago. Even kinds didn't pick up on that. They found the first marker in some crater on Earth. That one. That was real. Alien. Enough to inspire you natology. Our people studied it and reverse engineered this red marker. But they needed somewhere to test it. Aegis 7. You've seen the result. The stuff of nightmares. I thought the old reports were just hysteria. Until I saw what I saw. They sealed off the whole system, buried the records nice and clean. Until CEC got greedy. Those idiots tore each of seven apart and woke up with the old research team left behind. So Earth Gulf sent you to sweep it all under the rug. Damn it, we have to return the marker. If anyone else stumbles across each of seven, it was disappeared once. We can do it again. I've seen how the marker fucks with your head, it must be contained. For what it's worth. We made a great team. You'll find another way off the Ishimura. I mean, you're one hell of an engineer. Your experiment's gonna kill us all! Daniels! It was all for nothing. Come in, it's Nicole. Where are you? In the flight control room. Please, you have to come up here now. There's still a way out for us, but we don't have much time. Yeah, once up here, there'll be a power node just there in that wall box, and there'll be a bit of loot in this room. And you go in the fire room to um, talk to Nicole and interact with the terminal. And just let the story play out a little bit more. And you'll come back in this room, and there'll be a stasis necro to fight. There you are. Thank God you're here. The ship's coming apart. I saw what you've been through. Your investigation, Mercer. What happened with us? We don't have to talk about it. I need you to know I'm sorry about everything. It's okay, Isaac. You know I forgive you. I love you. Well, good, but... There's still hope. You can recall the shuttle and remote pilot from here. Bring back the marker and we can return it to Aegis. You can make us whole again. I just want to make things right. Then let's do it together. Escape her fate. But who can? Yes. 
yeah just make one more safe game this is going to be the point of point of no return by the way in a second so if there's anything you want to do go and do it now if there's anything you think you may have missed do it now on it we're on impossible so we can only make one safe unfortunately so I don't really know why I'm making that safe um, if you make a safe in the last chapter it's going to be overwritten so yeah if there's anything you've missed you need to go and do it now because once you make a safe in the next chapter you're not going to be able to come back here or reload because it's impossible and you've got one safe slot so but once you're ready guys come out here there'll be some necro lizards waiting for you get rid of you there'll be three of them two or three there's actually one more behind me I've killed two yeah there he is yeah come in the ship and then you'll get that uh, notification point of no return just press X if you're ready and get some more story guys and head into chapter 12 Yeah, I cut out I cut out that dialogue guys. It goes on for ages, so yeah, I cut that one out. So eventually you'll head here guys at the um, landing pad. Yeah, we get that trophy there, betrayed. We'll come down here and just beneath the steps, the ramp is some credits. Come over here to Nicole and activate the terminal beside her. Just to get the marker moving. That's it, and while that's moving, gonna grab some loot. You got a crate, you got a stasis recharge. Come over to this corner behind the ship, and there'll be a small container with a gold semiconductor inside. We'll get some wall boxes here, and there's also a wall box with a power node inside. Once you've got all them goodies, make your way back. We fill your stasis if you wasted it on nothing. And at the far end on the corner is some more credits on a on a crate. Once your bridge is raised, don't go too close, it might damage you. Yeah, doors and such. It's quite annoying when you try and do no damage and you accidentally run into a door or something and it damages you. Yeah, I've had it happened far too many times. It's happened with a cargo lift as well. Yeah, come into this room. The living quarters. On the floor you should find some loot and a text log, the retrieval order. Now when you open this door here it's going to spawn three enemies by the way. Two spawners and one necromorph. Yeah one the spawner and the necromorph will spawn in that room where you were and the other one will spawn in here. Just freeze them all with stasis. You're going to find loads of stasis recharges around this chapter. Yeah, just stasis them all and then kill them all. Nice and easy. That's it, that story audio call will begin once you kill them. Loot that room, take out a power cell with you, and then while the log is playing, come into here, the landing pad atrium. You'll find flamethrower fuel down there, or, or something, I guess some loot. You'll find a power node times one on the wall there, and there's a log down here on the floor, an audio log they left us. Yeah, pick that up. And then come outside. Once you can, interact with the shop guys and just do the normal stuff. Yeah, so anything you don't need, keep one or two, one or two um, stasis recharges, stasis packs, sorry, put the rest in storage. And sell everything else except for your weapon upgrades. And when it comes to your plasma energy guys, keep it all now. I didn't actually quite keep enough and you'll find, you'll find out that on this first battle I almost run out of ammo because there's loads of enemies to kill and I, you don't really bother looting them until the end and you've killed them all so you can safely grab the loot yeah so you want to keep, I only kept 3 stacks of ammo you want to keep probably 5 or something to be safe ok so what we're doing now we're just opening the menu for each weapon just to get all the upgrades to um, be activated there you go and you'll get that trophy guys built to order yeah, you have to open up each tab because otherwise the upgrades don't quite unlock and they're safe your game. If you're missing an upgrade by the way because you just didn't pick it up by mistake and you haven't realised that you didn't pick it up, don't worry, you can get it in New Game Plus. 
Yeah, so if you have missed anything, guys, you've missed any trophies, we've got to do New Game Plus yet, so don't worry, you can just grab whatever you're missing over there. And then once you come back out here, bring the power cell with you, and just watch out for this enemy which spawns around the corner near the ship. And then take him out. Yeah, I think he's trying to sort of come at you from behind, hoping you're not keeping an eye on you back, because you've already been there. And then come through here, guys. What we're doing now, basically, you're moving the marker through the through the building. And as you go through, you've got to open all the shutter doors. And between each shutter door, you've got like a different encounter with enemies, which you have to take out. So this first one, you're going to have a lot of enemies spawn here. Yeah, this next room, once you move so far into it, loads of enemies are going to start spawning. What I normally do, I normally just camp near the doorway you come in because there's a stasis station there. So you can just refill your stasis. So you can just keep using stasis on the enemies. Yep, you know once they all come in, so you're going to lock down. Yeah, so just keep using stasis. Keep an eye on all directions where they can come from. There is a vent just near that door you came in, by the way. So listen out for that. And yep, just keep using stasis, guys, and shooting the enemies. You have quite a lot of spawn here. You have a lizard a tentacle baby, a necromorph and a pregnant necro so that's four enemies which will sort of spawn first and then shortly after that or when killing so many you have two more necromorphs you have another tentacle baby which will spawn and then eventually you have another two necromorphs and another tentacle baby so yeah make sure you're staying alert guys and ready keep checking both directions they have to cross a bridge to get to you unless they spawn from that vent beside you so yeah just make sure you're ready Sometimes it's good to just use stasis on one side and then focus on the other bridge. And there will, will be some spitters as well, so watch out for the spitters. The good thing about it is because your stasis is damaging enemies, it sort of stuns them as well. So if they are about to attack you or spit, using stasis it will actually stun them out of the attack as well. I think it does that anyway. Yeah, you'll see him getting low on ammo now. Very, very low. I don't think I've got any more clips left. Oh, look, one more tentacle, baby. And that's it. You got them all. So once you've got them all, you can safely loot the area. Get all your ammo back. Don't worry. If you're low on ammo now, don't worry. In a second, you're going to have tons of ammo. There's tons of ammo before going on to the next area. So just cross over here, loot any ammo which is left on the bridges because once the bridges race, all the ammo is just basically going to despawn which is already on the bridge. Yeah, interact with that panel once you go past it so the marker can move upwards. And then once the bridge lowers down, if you don't want to wait for this one to come down, you can actually go past the other one earlier, because that one comes down before much more before this one. Yes, yeah, keep an eye out for any loot which drop from enemies. There's sometimes loot in that corner there. There's a small container just here, tucked behind the crates. Some more loot on this crate over there. Interact with that final panel, and then once you've done that, while the marker's moving, while it's in progress, come into this room. You'll find some loot, some small containers, and a power node times one on the wall. And then shoot that sack so you can get in the other door. Come around the corner, and now you're going to get access to a load more lockers. Like, like I was saying, if you're low on loot entering that room, uh, sorry, low on ammo, you're going to have plenty of ammo now. Right, so into transfer junction now, the shutter room. Interact with that, you'll find out it's faulty, and then save your game once your story is played out. Yeah, just make sure you save your game. It's it's a good idea to save your game at every opportunity on this chapter. 
it, well, it's on any chapter, to be honest. Yeah, so in here, there's going to be two guardians on the walls. So first, get rid of them. Well, get rid of one to begin with. Now, if you don't have the trophy for stomping ten of these, get it now. Just kill one of them and leave the other one alive and just keep stomping on the tentacles it spits out. These are the last two guardians in the game. Yeah, there you go, backbreaker. That's a trophy you wanted. So yeah, just make sure you get that trophy before you kill the final one. Easy to do, just let, like I say, just as you saw me doing, let it spit out the tentacles and answer them. Just don't stomp a tentacle if it's too close, shoot it. Because if you get too close to them guardians, they just, they grab you and they eat you. I know, because it happened to me one time. Yeah, I'm selling a bit of ammo here, but you're probably best to keep it, if I'm honest. So do not grab the loot on the other side yet. First, just loot loot this half of this room. And then once you've done all that and the guardians are dead, come through here. Make sure you've got full stasis. In here, you've got to make your way down to the bottom. There'll be a little puzzle with power cells. You've got to slot all the power cells. Once you get down the elevator, you don't have to slot the elevator one no more, so you're not going to be using it. So use one from the elevator and two more power cells which are hidden. There's sometimes an item down there. Yep, and then you interact with the panel and that will make you go 0G. Now you normally, I don't know if it's intended or not, but the game seems to want you to, when it goes in 0G, it wants you to go up through the roof where there'd be loads of turbines. You have to shoot all the sacks to free the turbines so it starts spinning and you have to stasis them and make your way up through the roof. But you can actually fly into the elevator shaft, which is much easier. There's like a massive gap on the wall of the elevator shaft. You just fly through there and just fly up through the elevator shaft. You don't have to worry about shooting the sacks or going up past the turbines. I don't know if it's intended. I mean, there's a massive hole, so it must be just some sort of hidden, hidden shortcut. But yeah, once you slotted all three, you can go and do that, guys. And then once you get back up to that room we are just in, that big room, you go so far into the room, there'll be another lockdown, and then go back to that door you just came through, and you're basically going to kill everything from that sort of tunnel, and it makes it a lot easier just to bottleneck the enemies and kill them. There'll be a brute as well, which can't pass through the tunnel, so that helps. Yeah, you're going to fly through that hole. Isaac, power is flowing again. Come back to the marker quickly. The excavation site's just up ahead. Make us whole. Exiting zero gravity. Yeah, once lockdown begins, guys, all the enemies are going to spawn, so come back in this little tunnel. And just wait in here now, make sure you stay close enough to the door so it stays open. This is a nice easy spot to kill these enemies from. You got a tentacle baby, you got a lizard. Yeah, you have some necro bombers times three and some necro morphs. But bombers normally spawn last after killing the brutes. So kill an, any enemies which come for you. And then wait for the brute to come close, stasis him. And um, you can actually hit its weak points from its front. You have to aim, make sure you're aiming vertically and aiming just above the top of his arms and where they meet the shoulder. If you've seen him, he's got a weak point on the back of his arms at the top where they meet the shoulder, basically on the very top of his triceps. Um, but if you aim right on the top, you can normally hit them from the front of him. So that's what you want to try and do, like I just did. If not, you might just have to stay him, quickly run out and um, shoot from behind if you're having trouble hitting its weak points from the front but just make sure you're quick so that you can kill these bombers when they spawn behind you these bombers always seem to come right from the back, there'll be three of them and once you kill these that should be all the enemies just make sure once you kill the brute you get the power node from him and loot any ammo on the bridges before you raise the bridge by interacting with the panel that's it, while you're waiting for the marker to move come to the store and free up your inventory if you need to. And then once your bridge goes down, go across it and we're just going to loot the other side now. 
check the corners because you'll find a lot of corners there's sometimes loot on the floor there's sometimes loot in the middle near the pillars there's sometimes loot on that crate near that stasis recharge there's a small container here and you've got a master override crate the final one of the game that one's got three power nodes inside Yeah, coming here next. Interrupt that panel and then save your game. And we'll be heading into the storage chamber next. There's two more little chambers. Well, there's there's this chamber and there's one big area outside. And then after that, it's pretty much you on the boss. Yeah, you got these three lockers. Make way to the fire door. There'll be two stomp boxes and a necro sack. Shoot the sack. That's it, once you shoot that sack, an enemy's gonna spawn from that vent. Just be ready, there he is. Take out his legs and then his arms to finish him off. Come up here, you'll see two small containers straight opposite you. Do not go to the middle of the room just yet, so it's gonna spawn two necros. Loot these first. And be ready. One will spawn from there and one will spawn on the left. Quickly get rid of that one. They can turn and focus on the one on the left. There he is. There you go. Lob his dangling arm at him. There you go. Slap him. Pick up Will Smith's arm and hit him. Now watch out for them torsos on the wall. If you get too close they will try and attack you. And there's one there as well. Just stay on the opposite side of the wall and they will not be able to reach you. Don't get too close, they might try and kick you. And that will probably not hurt. Yes, two con small containers there. And then once you shoot that small sack, that uh, necro sack, uh, one of them enemies, them tall necro is going to spawn, which will split off into all the little power sites. So make sure you're ready with your stasis. And that's it guys, flat for this area. Just make a way across now, get the locker, two lockers over here. Yep, and then come down the cargo lift. Now you can use that panel, now that all the growth has disappeared. Yeah, use that panel, move the marker across, and you can use your second panel. Like I say, we're going into the final big open area now before the boss, the final boss, and there'll be quite a lot of enemies here. There you go, anybody lost the shoe? Yeah, too small for me. There'll be loads of lockers in this next shutter corridor. Yeah, activate the control panel first, loot the lockers and then save your game. We're getting there guys, not long left at all now. We're on 6 hours 31, damn. It's long, such a long game this. Survival horror. I think it's too long in a way, I, I don't know. It's, it's a great game. But yeah, watch out for that. If you run too close to that um, central open area, that central pit on the left, that will spawn. Yeah, so just make sure you're ready to um, attack it. Or get away from it, or stasis it even if you want, and then attack it. But yeah, kill that first necro sack. And then shoot that one down there as well. Shooting them two will spawn a lot of enemies. The first one spawns some ones at the back, uh, but a second one spawns some others right over there. So you're going to try and spawn them all at the same time so you can just get rid of them all together. And watch out for the pregnant necro. Do not want to cause all the power sites to spawn and come and jump on you. 
what you'll find with the um, pregnant necros in this area instead of spawning the little parasite like this they seem to spawn the tentacle babies now if you pop their belly yeah these guys are mega advanced the thing is them parasites are worse yeah I guess these ones are ready to give birth any minute now yeah that enemy is stuck at the back he gets stuck there quite often for me I don't know what he gets stuck on Yeah, so once no more spawning, you can make way over here. There's going to be three small containers. Yeah, down there. There's also going to be a text log just beneath this growth. There it is. Just grab that. That is recombination study. Now, once you shoot this necro sack, if you go too close to that pit, one of them tentacles will spawn. So just make sure you're not standing too close when you shoot it. And then make sure you're ready to shoot that tentacle baby. There you go, you're gonna have a bunch of other enemies spawn again now. Yeah, that's a net net pro tentacle. So only shoot that when you're ready. Do not move close to that pit unless you've got time to shoot that. So now just wait here for all the enemies to stop coming. You get some bun uh I was gonna say you'll get some bananas. I mean you'll get some bombers come for you, necro bananas. You get some of them come for you, and you get a pregnant necro and some necro tentacles. Yeah, so just wait till no more spawning. No more necro bananas? No, looks like them all. So once you kill them all, just be ready because there's going to be another one of them tentacles appear in a second. So grab a spear if you can because that will kill him in one hit. Yeah, it spawns again in this far area here. There it is. Be ready to quickly kill that as soon as it spawns. A necro spear will kill him first hit, remember. And then once you've done that, come and interrupt this terminal, send the marker across. Now you've made all the growth disappear. And then run to the far end. And then turn around and kill the last bunch of enemies. You've got a massive walkway here now. A massive run up, see all the enemies coming. There's a banana necro, kill that. Just keep an eye out for any of the necros charging at you. A lot of them will just come charging at you. They'll look like there's none near you. Then all of a sudden, they'll be literally on your ass. So just be ready. Yeah, I think they get confused when that bridge lifts up to let the marker pass. Yeah, look at look how fast that guy's coming. No DL. Yeah, they're all armoured, so I'm going for headshots here. You won't believe how easy it is on story difficulty. <laughs> on story difficulty, all the necros literally, with a fully upgraded plasma, they, they like die in one hit. It's crazy. Like, no matter where you hit them. It's nice, it's, it's nice, I guess. So easy being earth powered. And you also refill, your health refills, like, you take damage, it refills back to full health within like 10 seconds. Um, okay guys, so once you interact with this terminal, it's going to be loads of story. So I, I'm just going to edit it out for a moment. Uh, what, what you have to do after story, uh, you have to go to the control tower once it opens up and interact with another terminal inside the control tower. And inside there will be some more containers as well which you can loot. Yeah, you get, you'll get control back shortly after and you can't really do much, you're just waiting. But once this control tower opens up, you can come on in, interrupt the terminal to start some more story, reroute the tether controls. And you can loot this small container just for some credits. And then just wait for more story to play out, guys. Yeah, eventually, once you get control back. And the story is finished for now. Come through this door into the access tunnel, loads of loot in here. You've got a wall box just on the left when you first come in. Carry on along the growth and you come across some small containers on the right. And then nearer the end, there'll be loads more loot on the left. A few wall boxes and a few small containers. And then when you get into the storage room, 
living quarter storage. On the immediate right, there'd be a power node box. Let's get a power node from there and then loot all the lockers for even more loot. Yep, shoot the fuse to unlock that door. And then all we've got left, guys, is the final boss. So in the meantime, what you might want to do is just clear up your inventory if you want, because you're going to get loads of items from the final boss. There's going to be loads, of, I think there's like 13 stump boxes on the floor. They didn't used to be. I think they put it there in an update. Um, but yeah, I'm not even going to bother going to the shop, as you can see. But make a save, guys, and then make a way over here to engage the final boss. Yeah, compared to the um, the first Leviathan, I think he's probably the most trickiest one to... Perhaps no damage. This one's not too bad. The first phase in this fight is a tricky one. Uh, because he lobs all his sacks at you. And if you're standing in a weird place, it can be a little bit weird to avoid them. And straight after, you'll, get, you'll have his tentacles trying to slam you as well. And sometimes they can slam on a sack and explode it. And if you're too close, it can damage you. But you, you'll see as we go along. It's, it's not too bad, I mean, if you're healing, yeah, it's no problem at all. I mean, you've got 13 stump boxes in the area, so you're going to get plenty of loot here. Yeah, look at all that loot. You do get a chance at the end to grab it all, by the way, so it's not like you have to grab it during the battle. Yeah, there will be time at the end to grab it after you've killed him. Yeah, so to begin with, the actual, what you need to focus on is shield them weak spots on his mouth, just around his mouth, you need to shoot all five of them to begin with, that's your first objective. If you're quick and accurate, you can shoot a few before the fight even begins, and normally once you shot one, he'll sort of stagger, and there'll be a brief moment to shoot another, I mean I missed there completely, but when it shoots the orbs, you want to be, tr you want to try and be close to the front left of the arena when it's going to shoot the orbs. You know when it's going to hit you with his tentacle because he'll move his head all the way back and to one of the sides either left or right like so. If he's gonna, normally if he goes to the left he's going to slam his left tentacle and if he goes to the right he's going to slam you with his right tentacle. It doesn't really matter which one, you just got to make sure you keep moving left and right. Yeah, so make sure you're at the front left when he's about to throw the sacks at you. And they can sort of run to the back of the arena and none of them will reach you. Yeah, there you go, like I said, he'll lean back and to the left and each time in his first phase he'll pause for a moment after slapping you giving you a chance to shoot a weak spot there you go so again once the, once the sacks explode they will explode themselves after a short time you come back to the front left of the arena so you're there ready for when he shoots more sacks you can keep him all out of the way on the left side of the arena as you can see the more weak spots you've destroyed the more sacks he actually throws at you You can use the tentacles to destroy the boxes if you want to. Make him useful. Yeah, this is what I mean. If you're quick and accurate, you can actually destroy... You could you could actually destroy all the five weak spots before he gets a chance to do anything. But you'd have to be very quick and very accurate. And yeah, got it. So once you've destroyed all the five weak spots, that's phase one done. He'll then spawn a load of necro enemies. He'll spawn two bombers amongst these, two bananas. So what you can do with the two bananas, you can keep the bombs, and then you can actually make a second phase go by quicker. So you try to shoot their arm off, so they drop the bomb. And you want to grab, what I normally do, I grab the bomb, and keep it over to the back right, just there. Let's do the same with the second one. watch out for these necros oh and I accidentally ex exploded one by using the stasis next to it so if, if you can keep both bombs you know intact so you can use them on the boss that's great but if not it's not the end of the world it just means the fight's going to take a bit longer because this next phase he's got five more weak spots again which he's got to destroy but he only reveals them after doing so many attacks he doesn't reveal them as often as he did on the first phase To begin with, once you killed all the necros, he'll slam you twice and then reveal his weak spots like so. Now with the bomb, you can actually lob a bomb and destroy three weak spots at once. 
but normally you can only destroy them one at a time and he'll spit this acid at you. He only spits this acid by the way um, on this face but if you've only destroyed two weak spots or less he'll only spit one line of acid at a time but if you've destroyed three weak spots or more he'll throw three lines of acid at you at a time and then after the acid he normally slams down four times with his tentacles and then he'll show his weak, spot, his weak spots and then he'll repeat he'll repeat them attacks and he'll basically just do that now until he's dead and after the four slams he'll reveal his weak point so yeah, you can only destroy one at a time unless you use a bomb that's why bombs come in useful and then what I normally do once I've destroyed a bomb uh, sorry once I've destroyed a weak point I come to the far left that's it to cause the acid to move over there then I move to the right move back to the left after that second line of acid and then after the third line move back to the right again the place where he spits the acid it's it's normally where you were last standing when he first started the attack animation which probably goes on for about three seconds so that's why sometimes it might seem like he's spitting the acid nowhere near where you're standing it's because it's normally where you're standing when he first begins the animation and if you've got the bombs in the corner waiting, and um, if you did manage to keep them by, if you normally want to keep the, his tentacles away from them because they'll detonate them, that's why you always stay at that left side of the area. And then once you took all the five weak spots, now you've just got to kill this one, guys. Here, yeah, and that's it, you're done. You have quite a long time to do this. I've been on this bit for about 20 seconds before to try and shoot this. It's easy on story mode, this takes literally one hit to destroy. And that's it guys, the end of the game pretty much. If there's any loot remaining in the area you can grab it now quickly. Any loot you've got in your inventory by the way, when you go into New Game Plus it automatically gets put in your store. Yeah, automatically go into your, goes into your store and then when you reach your store next on New Game Plus you'll have all your loot in there which you've currently got in your inventory. And what that also does, you'll get that trophy that's for beating him. What it also does is sometimes if you begin New Game Plus you'll straight away Pack, um, pop the pack rat trophy that's for having 25 items at once 25 different items or 25 slots taken at once in your storage yeah that will pop as, as soon as you load into new game plus if you've got enough items now and they all go into your storage and you're taking up more than 25 slots in your storage at one time and that's it guys the end of the game so we should pop exodus untouchable one gun and set a benchmark. Exodus is for completing cha uh, chapter 12. Untouchable is for completing the game in impossible mode. One gun is for beating the game with the plasma cutter. So one gun and set a benchmark is for completing the game on medium or above. So yeah, four trophies all at once. Yeah, one more set of benchmark. And that's it. So I'll just show you the unlockables which we get. Yeah, completing it on impossible, you'll get. To start New Game Plus, you have 10,000 extra credits. You have 10 extra power nodes. You have the burnished suit, which I don't think does anything special. It's just like a nice, a nice sort of um. Titan, titanium effect. I've not even really used it. I've seen a picture of it, but it's basically got like a nice shiny effect of I think of the original suit or something. And um, you also get the hand cannon, which is like it's like a one hit kill. Yeah, that's what you're not, guys. And obviously you get level six suit as well. So new game plus has been saved, and you have unlocked new game plus. Yeah, make sure you have not used all your save slots when you do this. Otherwise, it will not make a new save slot for you. Yeah, but that shouldn't have happened. There's 50 safe slots in the game. Yeah, so back at the main menu, guys. That was it. My impossible plasma cutter only no damage run. We've done all the collectibles in that first playthrough. We've done impossible. We've got plasma cutter out of the way. So now you're free to use all your weapons. We're going to be upgrading everything as well. Going into New Game Plus, we need about another 40 power notes. About about 45, 
So we will get them, we'll actually end up with about an extra 40 by the end of the game. So you don't have to get every single one. If you miss some of the power nodes which I get, or you miss some items, like some valuable loot which I'm going to use to sell, don't worry about it because like I say, we do get about 30 or 40 extra power nodes after upgrading everything. And all you want to do, click on New Game Plus, click on that impossible save file, and then you want a New Game Plus on Story Mode, and because we're doing New Game Plus from a previous impossible completion save, you'll have the hand cannon unlocked. And obviously, everything carries across. All it doesn't carry is your, your clearance level. You'll carry your master override. That's basically like a, a bonus lock. It doesn't help you get further in the story quicker. That's normally clearance one, two, and three. Master override, it basically just lets you, gives you some bonus doors to open and some bonus chests, some loot inside. But all them somatics we've got and the weapon upgrades, nothing replaces them, unfortunately. You think they would, you think they would have put some valuable loot in their place. But well, basically where they were, there'll be nothing there now. Everything will be the same on Story, but on Story, if you get damaged, after about 10 seconds, without taking any additional damage, your health will regenerate automatically. So, I'm doing this no damage, of course, so it's a full Platinum no damage, but on Story, you don't have to worry about health packs at all, guys. Yeah, if you get damaged, just give it about 10 seconds. We've taken no damage, and you'll heal back to full health automatically. The hand cannon is infinite ammo, so you don't have to worry about ammo with it. But one thing we do need to focus on as we go through the chapters, I mean there's still going to be some few collectibles, there's some new marker fragments you need to collect, which are new game plus exclusive. You need them all for a trophy, and you also need them all to get a, a new ending. They put a new ending in this remake, and you need to get them all to trigger that new ending. So we're going to get all them, there's only 12. And we're going to get two more audio logs. There's only two audio logs which we couldn't get on our first playthrough because these two are missable. Basically, there's one point in the game, well, two points, where you have to take a slightly different path, and each path gives you a different audio log. And in this new game, plus, we're going to take the, the other path to what we took in new game. So we're going to get the other two audio logs which we missed. We'll get a few power nodes along the way just so we can fully upgrade everything. Like I say, you'll have enough right now to upgrade everything except for two weapons and what we need to do because we still need the trophies for killing enemies with 30 of each weapon yeah all your weapons there's a trophy for each of them and you have to kill 30 enemies with each of them for a trophy each of them got a separate trophy tied to that so what we're going to be doing we're going to first upgrade once you get to, get to a bench and the shop you're going to first upgrade your weapons which you can as many as you can and then slowly as you go through the game, you're going to keep using a new weapon. And then once you've got a trophy for getting 30 kills, then you switch to the hand cannon and use that. And then when you get to shop again, you'll switch the weapon, you'll put the weapon away, get another one out, which you don't have the 30 kills left, and just so on. And then by the time you've got them all, guys, you'll probably be a few chapters before the end, and you can start using the hand cannon. But you might want to keep the force gun on you. Force gun's probably the best weapon because um, it's like a massive blast and if any enemies near you it will just blast them to bits whereas most of the weapons uh, some of them are a bit gimmicky I mean the flamethrower is very gimmicky and you can get hit while using it because enemies can rush through the flames it does stun them eventually but the first few ticks they can rush through it and still attack you but force gun yeah force gun is much better once it's fully upgraded it will kill most enemies in one, one shot on the story so yeah, as you go through guys, keep switching up your weapons, once you've got the kills, 30 kills with each and got a trophy, put that in your store, get another one out. You only want to have the weapon, one weapon on you at a time, so that you're always getting ammo for that weapon. Only have one weapon on you at a time, you can always have the hand cannon, that's infinite ammo, you don't get any ammo for that. So always have the hand cannon on you, and one of the normal weapons, and like I say, just keep switching out the normal weapons to get the trophies. I'm not going to be commentating all of this. It's pretty much just the same as our first playthrough. I mean, we've got more weapons at our arsenal now to use. And we're not going to be doing all the optional exploring, like the side missions and getting all the additional loot. We're not doing all that now, just getting through the story and getting these 12 marker fragments, guys. Yep, and that's pretty much it for the intro for this one. I'll, I'll leave the full playthrough in here, so you just see the full platinum, see me getting all the trophies along the way. 
And what I'll do, when there's a important collectible coming up, I'll just come back on guys my commentary and I'll just let you know so you don't overlook it. Or if you if you're looking away from the screen for a few minutes uh, for a few seconds, you might miss me picking it up. So yeah, when there's a important collectible, I'm just gonna come back on, give you commentary guys to let you know. So if you like listen to me in the background while you're running through, you'll know to quickly switch over and have a look. Something important coming up. Alright, so yep, yeah, that's pretty much it for New Game Plus guys, my little intro. So I'll leave you to it. Yeah, Pat Krat, that's actually for putting 25 items in storage all at one time. Not, a great start to our Not 25 quantity, like 25 ammo or something like that, or 25 all together, so you keep taking them out and putting them back in. You've got to be, you've got to have 25 items occupying 25 inventory spaces in the storage all at once. And the reason it's popped now is because when you fight the last boss and go into New Game Plus, all your items get transferred to storage. So when you start the game here, because all your items are in storage, obviously I've got over 25, so I pop the trophy. You likely will do as well. But if not, there's a very easy way to pop that. You can just, if you've got enough money, you can just keep buying ammo and then storing it. Or keep buying elf packs, because they don't stack. You can just have one at a time. Yeah, just something like that to do that. Really, really simple. But okay, I'll leave you to it, guys. I say just listen out for me when I come back on just let you know of anything of great importance and have fun guys new game plus hand cannon hand cannon is a lot of fun and we've done the hard playthrough this one's actually really fun because you're really overpowered now you've done the hard bit and now you can have a bit of fun just completely destroying everything so have fun guys and um, I see you along the journey stasis modules from acting chief engineer Jacob Temple location Error. Employee not found. I can't read security. Same for the chief engineer. What is wrong with their comms? Someone left in a hurry. Where's the security detail? Where's anybody? There's nothing logged. No duty roster, no power to the elevator. For God's sake. That security console's still working. Isaac, get a damage report. Guns playing around. There's something on the floor here. Is that? Isaac, I need that damage report. Oh God, what now? What have you got, Isaac? Shit. It's not just comms with the guidance system. Half the Ishimura's in the red. Engines, hull, the trams. Could do that kind of damage to a planet cracker. <laughs> Power to the elevator should be... Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. Another malfunction? No. The quarantine systems are all fine. Oh, wait. Do you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear it. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Daniels, get those elevators running. There's something in here with us. Up there!
my god, Isaac. You made it. Just... They're everywhere. Shen, is he, uh... He's... gone. Nothing I can do. What the fuck are these things? The ones I saw? Some of them were wearing Ishimura uniforms. They're the crew? How the hell can they be the crew? Look at them. We need to get to the bridge. There's a thousand people on board. Someone will be there. We can't. The tram system's wrecked. Everything's locked down because of the quarantine. And you're both repair techs. So how do we do this? There's a broken tram car blocking the tunnel. It's gridlocked the system. And the data board's burned out. I can't lift the lockdown or call the tram until we get a spare from the maintenance bay. But it's all on Isaac's side of the quarantine. I'll handle it. Just make sure there's power to the repair systems. And Isaac? Yeah? I'm sure Nicole's okay. She's a doctor, right? She'll do the smart thing. Yeah. Yeah, she always does. Find somewhere safe. I'll be back soon. Isaac, don't bother shooting those fuckers in the head. Doesn't even slow them down. Okay. The only way is hacking them apart. Those arms and legs. Does that even kill them? Or do they just stop moving? Warning. Autoloader malfunction. Repair technician. handy we need one in tram maintenance with that the auto loader's fried i got a damaged tram car on the tracks and if the whole system is gridlocked guess who they're calling temple here sending a stasis module now no idea a lot of shit's been breaking down i keep hearing things down in the gears where, where no one could be no i know was fried too? Inventory says there's a spare board in the maintenance bay. We can't run the trams without it.
Isaac. We can't stay here much longer. Hearing a lot of movement. Hold on. I got the data board. I'm coming back to tram control now. Daniel, get ready to go. <laughs> The first marker fragment guys is in here. You see that purple glowing light? Yeah, that's a marker fragment. That's your first one to pick up. You get that trophy, that's for picking up your first one maxed. Yeah, to view them in your inventory, you just open your inventory and you press triangle to view your key items and that's where you'll find them. So yeah, that's one of 12 guys. Watch you back out there and I'll see you in chapter two. Gun on you. Is that blood? Haley, I need you to listen. The Ishimura's overrun with the fucking monsters. You didn't hear anything? What? No, the comms are still out. Isaac. We need the Killian fixed now. Got a damage report? Uh, yeah, it, it's there.
What's happening down there? Johnston's gone. I'm killing him too. The Singularity Corp overloaded. No! The Kellyan was our only way home. We're trapped. No! I'm not losing two good people for nothing. What about the command computer? It's a brick. All the primary systems are locked down with the captain's codes. So we find Captain Matthias. Track his rig. Okay. Okay, here. Captain Benjamin Matthias. Location medical. Status deceased? Even the captain? God. Isaac, you're closer to medical. You can double back and cut through maintenance. Find the captain's body and get his rig. With his codes, we... What was that? Chen? And I forgot to say, but suit level 6 will be available now. So when you get to the store, the very first store, you can buy it. It'll cost quite a bit of money, 99,000 credits. So it's going to empty out your pockets. But you need to buy this one in order to unlock the final upgrades for the suit, guys. So lob that on. That's a pretty cool looking suit, that one. Look like Deadshot. Or is it Deadshot? No, Deathstroke. Looks like him. Right, so trust nobody. And yeah, I'll see you in chapter two at the next marker fragment.
But the barricade was put together in a hurry. A hydrazine tank might blow it open. Just need a detonator, like maybe a shock pad. Nicole could be through there if... Isaac. The one who attacked us. I swear to God it was Chen. But... I saw him die. If they barricaded the morgue, maybe it was to keep something in. some hydrazine that should work on the barricade. I just need to find a, a shock pad. Okay, work fast, Isaac.
detected. Quarantine activated. Lifted. The second marker fragment you find it in Dr. T. Kine's office. Dr. Timothy Kine. Yeah, you have to move the shelf in the back, and there it is. Marker fragment number two. Number two of 12. Right, good luck, guys, and I'll see you in a bit later. shark pad I can use on the barricade. I'm heading back there now. Watch the voltage on that pad. I'm not losing anyone else. <laughs>
surgery, so I left this with Warwick. Don't be discreet. I just got the latest report from Agent 7. Security request retrieved. He left me. I woke in the dark with them scratching in the walls. Scratching my butt. Security clearance required. Isaac, what's your status? You <laughs> have the captain's rig. Fuck me! Ugh. Transmitting codes now. I saw it, Hammond. A flying one turned the captain's body into a, another one of those things. Security Same must have happened to Jim. God! Maybe the command computer has something. Where's Daniels when you need her? Head back to the security checkpoint. It's safer there. At least I can upgrade your clearance. Clearance confirmed. <laughs> Isaac. I'm here. What the hell's happening? The computer says the Ishimura's engines are offline. We're on a decaying orbit toward Aegis 7. Oh, God. I have to get to engineering. There's no time. That tram station's offline. Unless... Here. Head back to the flight deck. I'll guide you from there. If this damage report's right, there's a shortcut to engineering. Isaac, this 
damage report says there's a broken cargo lift just beyond the hangar doors. I'll open them now. Entering material gravity. You'll need your thrusters to reach it, but that lift shaft should take you straight down to engineering. Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. Clearance confirmed. Warning. Orbital position compromised. Correct course immediately. Control room. Any news on the engines? Yeah, but it makes no sense. They're out of fuel. The centrifuge is offline. We're tethered to a four trillion ton payload. Without the engines, it's dragging us down to the planet. Can you handle it alone? Sure. Fix the centrifuge, get the fuel running, then do a full restart. But you'll need to stabilize our orbit from there. Standing by. Fast as you can, Isaac.
I've got a fuel reading. Only a quarter full, but it should be enough. I still need to get the centrifuge working before we start. Someone really screwed with these fuel lines. Move fast, Isaac. He just seven is looking damn close out there.
storage is unlocked. It'll give you access to the engine chamber. Entering zero gravity. Say, Hammond, I cracked the secure files. Seems he was here for more than just a mining claim, huh? This outbreak started on the colony after the miners dug up an artifact. Something alien. That's impossible. But it would explain why Easy Study is not to be off limits, right? When the miners found the artifact, they reported hallucinations, paranoia, suicides. But the Ishimura brought this marker on board anyway. But that was the plan. Howdy! So the third marker fragment is in the engine room here on chapter 3. Once you've taken care of the pregnant necro, come around the back here of substation number 3. And there it is guys, just on the floor. Marker fragment number 3 of 12. Pick it up guys. And I'll see you in a bit. Please confirm. 
Isaac, you did it. The Ishimura's moving again. No thanks to whoever sabotaged the fuck out of these engines. You bought us time to figure it out. Autopilot's taking us into geostationary orbit. Wait, wait, you're flying us through the planet craft debris? That's what the asteroid defense system is for. But the UPS is offline. I've got the system readouts here. The Ishimura's in rough shape. A couple of bad strikes, you can finish her off. Shit. Daniels, give me all the data you have. I'll try to adjust course. Isaac, you disable the tram lockdown from engineering. I'll open up the bridge station. Meet me there. We need to work on this together. Isaac, I'm looking at the ADS cannons. They're a mess. I'm gonna need your help. I am not losing the Ishimura. Not now. The Ishimura hammer? What the That artifact they found? Don't pull it up. CEC knew all along about the marker, didn't they? Isn't that why you're really here? Corporate wouldn't send the Ishimura for some off-the-books mining. But alien technology, yeah, that fits. And how does losing my team fit into this theory? Hey, knock this shit off. We're into the debris field. We get the ADS back together before it's over. Then meet me at the captain's nest. Daniels? Fine. But I'm going through the ship reports, Hammond. I'm getting some answers. that attacked me. I managed to trap him in here. His face. I'm not seeing things, right? That's Chen. You can't help him, Hammond. He's... You're right. I should... Fix this, Hammond. For them. 
Yeah. Come on. The ADS cannons. I can hold this position for a while if no more asteroids come through the roof. Here. All I can tell is the ADS power routing is shot. Well, the administration systems aren't doing much. We could redirect power from there. I'd need to rewire the junction boxes, but we get the ADS cannons back. Good. Isaac, about what Daniel said. I don't know about any illegal mining or the market. I swear, I'm just here for a repair mission. Look, Hammond. I don't know you or Daniels well enough to judge, but CEC had to know about the marker. The company made it, but shit like that's above my pay grade. Look, we can get into it later. You'll need a way down to those junction boxes. You can turn the atrium elevators back on from security. You'll have full access. I found a CEC executive key card. I'll upgrade your clearance. And you upgraded yours already? Yeah, just in case. Good morning, y'all. How are we doing? Where was we? Oh, yeah. No, it's not a marker fragment. We're actually going to get one of the new audio logs now. One off the two audio logs, which is going to be getting a new game plus. So quickly take care of the big guy, the brute. Your hand cannon to sweet spots does some real impressive work on that guy. So do not go in that first lift. To get this additional audio log, you want to come into this lift first. Yeah, you see all them objectives you've got. Basically, you've got to do them in a different order to what you've done on the first game. Um, basically, there's two different ways you can do it. Um, one way will give you one audio log, and another way will give you another. But you cannot give them. You cannot get them both at once. They're sort of exclusive uh, per playthrough. But you want to come down here, guys, into the water purification storage. Yeah, this door. We have to wait till the end of the game on the previous playthrough, but because you've already got the master override, you can go in there now. So I'm just going to make a save. Yeah, I'll stay with you for a minute. Don't worry, I'll hold your hand. These corridors are pretty dark and loomy. You never know what dangling thing is hanging around. Yeah, I don't like this flamethrower much. It just it takes too long to kill the enemies, and it takes it just takes a second too long to stun them. And if you run around the corner straight into an enemy, they're likely going to attack you before the flamethrower stuns them. So yeah, do not go out that door. There's no need to do it. That was a mistake. I'll just see if you'd follow me. Yeah, so you come over to here first, guys. Over to the circuit breaker. Activate the ADS cannon. Now, activating that ADS cannon first before the other two. If you remember from the game, there's three ADS cannons, circuit breakers you have to activate. You do this one first, then that will trigger a little audio log. Which we'll get to now, and that's one of the highly missable ones because you either get this or the other one. And if you go into chapter 4, you'll see you should have every audio log now. And that audio log is actually called, yeah, it's called Water Purification. That's one of the missable audio log guys. So we've just got one more audio log to get, but that'll be in a later chapter. Then we've got every single audio log. And that'll be it for a moment, guys. I'll catch you. Where's the next mark fragment? Oh, it's in the break room. We've got to do that um, that little combination. Remember, stomp melee, stomp melee, do a little dance in the ritual circle. Yeah, that's where the next mark fragment is, guys. So yeah, continue on your way. Kill through a few dangling things, and um, I'll see you in the break room. I'm 
reading electrical hazards on the floor ahead of you. Watch your step. Administration network. That's two. One more system and we'll have power for the ADS. Oh, look who decided to turn up. You took your time, didn't you? I'm not complaining, got an extra break. Huh. Yeah, so I just got that fourth marker fragment. It's just on the floor there below the monitor. That's marker fragment number four. Just make sure you grab that one. And then you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I've got a combination on screen. They should just get you an extra two power nodes, like I say. We do get 40 extra, so it's not like you have to, but it's two power nodes. So grab them guys and then continue on and I'll see you in chapter 5. Chapter 5 is actually two marker fragments if I remember correctly. Oh goody goody. Cannons are back online. We wait. Auto targeting offline. Calibration data not found. Fuck. No auto targeting. The cannons are useless. What about manual targeting? You want to go out there with all that shit raining down and target the ADS cannons manually? If I give the cannons enough targeting data, it'll recalibrate the system. You got a better idea? Christ. I'll open exterior access. I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs>
take a few of the ADS cannons to one of my tools. I target an asteroid, the cannons take it out, and I recalibrate the system. We're out of options. Do it. Entering zero gravity. Sinking targeting system. Shipwide, thank God. Engaging autopilot. Get yourself inside, Isaac. I think I've figured out our next move. Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. Isaac, Hammond. I just intercepted a transmission for medical. Someone's down there? See what you make of this. This is senior medical officer Nicole Brennan. Medical is a sanctuary. All survivors, please join us. I'm going back to medical. Makes sense. I'll head to the crew deck and look for survivors from the bridge. I'll be in touch. The crew deck? Wonder if you know something we don't. It's medical. Pass to the chemical lab. What? You said the chemical lab? I, c I can I can barely hear you. Shit. 
these doors and I'll find her myself. Are you that selfish? You might let something in. Or out. Shit. So, you've decided to be difficult. Take a seat. I'll be with you momentarily. Transmission override. Isaac Clark. Just a trick. Isaac. Isaac. Make us Brennan's nearest and dearest. We were colleagues, you know. Dr. Chalice Mercer. Are you the reason the marker won't begin? That's it. Convergence is installed. She's meddling. 
how is the question. But even if I was to ask, I suspect you're not the talkative type. And I haven't fully explored the cause of death as that missing factor. Dismemberment. Now I think you're on the right track there. <laughs> Try and relax, Mr. Clark. Convergence is so close. Maybe your death will tip the balance. Broadcast. It was a trick by a fucking unitologist, Dr. Mercer. He's locked down medical to experiment on the crew. Oh, God. Every way out is locked down through one of the offices. Must be Mercer's. I can brute force the internal doors, but you'll have to reach his office and lift the lockdown manually. <laughs> Right, you ready to grab another marker fragment? This will be number five, and it's inside Dr. C. Mercer's office. There it is on the desk. Marker fragment number five. Pick it up, lob it in your pocket, guys. Zip it up, and then stand around for about five minutes waiting for this dialogue to finish. Who's there? Did you, what? Yeah, right. I'm going, guys. Let me get the door. There's poison, but there's still time. Her enzyme will work if <coughs> she just needs liquid nitrogen. Save us! He was right. Air quality is dropping shipwide. Something's poisoning the oxygen and hydroponics. If we lose our air supply... He said we could fix it. He came looking for liquid nitrogen. And there has to be some in the cryogenics lab. Okay. Not like we have a better option. I'll clear you a path to cryo. Door protocols rebooted. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Toxic 
from hydroponics. If the air's already that bad. I'm gonna need a faster way to cryogenics. I'll open the other door from the chemical lab. It'll take you straight there. And we've got another one. Yep, so soon. But yep, mark fragment number six. It's actually on top of the chamber. It's this chamber in the middle. Just go to that far right door. There it is. You see it there sparkling? Pull it to you with kinesis. And just grab it. Just take a hold of it. And that'll be mark number six in your collection. the captain's nest and warn Hammond. Okay, I can seal the nest, but I haven't been able to reach Hammond since he went to the crew deck. Isaac, our air quality is falling fast. If you've got liquid nitrogen, we gotta fix hydroponics. On it. 
Keep trying to reach Hammond. Mercer, I don't think he's done yet. Check your helmet filters. That air is not safe to breathe. Yeah, I smelled it. The whole deck's rotting. I'm reading a huge mass in food storage. Too big to be anything they grew. It looks like the source of the poison gas. That's patient and medical. He said something about creating an enzyme, right? Maybe the scientists left the workstation open. Station now accessible. Thank you for your patience. And then once you reach hydroponics, do not interrupt that central terminal just yet because this is where that final audio log is, but you have to do the objectives in a different order. So save your game and then like I say, ignore that middle terminal. First thing you want to do is come into food storage, which is the door at the back, and come all the way to the far end and to trigger that dialogue. Yeah, this one here. Trigger that one first and then you go back and interrupt the middle terminal. And they're doing it in that order, just a slightly different order. But for some reason you get a different audio log, depending on what order you do it in. But this audio log would be called Inject the Weezers. And that will be the final audio log you need. Once you've got this one guys, that will be all the audio logs. But first of all, like I say, you go to food storage, then you come back and then you interrupt that middle terminal. And then once you've done that, yeah, you'll get the Inject the Weezers audio log. That will be them all guys. So carry on, and I'll see you at the next marker fragment. Use my workstation. It's all set up to create the enzyme. Caution, do not ingest. Yes, that's the enzyme. 
But we can't inject the Leviathan itself. It's too strong. And how do I use it? My team has been altered. They're all connected to the Leviathan, breathing out its toxins. But the connection goes both ways. Okay. So if I get to your team and inject them... The enzyme will be carried right into the Leviathan's heart. Find the... Weezers. And their suffering. And when the Leviathan's weak enough, we bent that bastard into space. <laughs> Zero gravity. 
They said, not this, not seeing my dead brother on the fucking camera, all this death. Imagine what the marker could do in the wrong camera. This is about time to see again. Just thinking, if some corporate asshole tries to take the marker, you and me could do something about it. You're really pretty hard on that death. Oh, come on. Where's Hammond? What's he doing? I don't know. If I focus, we'll run out of here before it matters.
organic purifiers malfunctioning. Stand clear of filtration tubes. lifted.
We've got another mark fragment coming up very, very shortly, guys. And believe it or not, I almost forgot this one. <laughs> Luckily, I just remembered. Yeah, mark fragment is in this room at the top. And you should see it floating here. Once you've turned on the gravity, the um, anti gravity, once you've turned off the gravity, yeah, there it is. It'll just be floating in that pillar, which is covered in growth. And there it is in the northwest upper part of the room. Northwest upper part of the room. Make sure you grab that, should be marker number seven. And then just crack on with the story. Exiting zero
biotin's too strong. It's clinging to the interior of food storage. We need more enzymes. There's no time. I'm going in. Maybe I can cut it loose. The Leviathan has a 10 kiloton mass. Do you really need me to tell you this is a bad idea? Well, I'm all out of good ideas, so guess what's left? <laughs> survivors. He said they were building an SOS beacon. Did they finish it? He said it was nearly done, but I haven't heard from him in a while. I can't leave yet. I need to make sure the air is safe to breathe, but if you can find that SOS beacon, call for rescue. I will. Mining deck. Okay, got it. And if I meet Jacob? Tell him. I'll find him. He's all I want to see. An SOS beacon. Someone jettisoned all the others. Isaac, there's a shortcut to the mining deck. Near Cross's workstation. I'll get it open. Goddamn. We might actually get out of this nightmare. systems are running haywire. Great. Let me work on the elevators. Any idea where Temple's SOS beacon might be? I'll check the mining control room. The launch tube's there. And send out a beacon easy. Anyone there? Hammond? Where are you? Yeah, those things are everywhere. No, the unitologists. They're all here on the crew deck. They lost it. One of them stabbed her friend in the head. He just stood there. He, he fucking smiled. Hammond! Shit. Lost a signal again. We gotta find that beacon, Isaac. Fast. This is weird. Two of the mining subjects are locked down, even though all systems are running. I'm gonna figure this out.
Dallas for authorization. Finally getting somewhere with the mining duct systems. Got the SOS beacon? No, and the launch tubes are sealed. I need a deck administrator's rig to get them open. The deck admin is Supervisor Dallas. He's on the processing sub deck. I've got rig activity for a Jacob Temple 2 maintenance sub deck. Maybe he left the SOS beacon there. Just hope you can reach it through these malfunctions. Not malfunctions. Traps. <laughs> the miner's way of holding the line. Yeah. Okay. I'll unlock the subject. Just to make sure that beacon's not wired to anything. <laughs> while there's loose debris. Is the processing beam still running? Stand by.
Marker fragment number eight will be in back in this room. Yeah, once you've got clearance of all three, come back in here. There it is. See it on that crate on that shelf? There it is. Marker fragment number eight, guys. Pick it up and then carry on with the story. Never see you again. I'm gonna get us home. There's an SOS beacon nearby. We can call for help. Beacon, right. Take on to the moon shop, but my clearance can get us in this way. Thank <laughs> you. 
shop's open. I've never seen you at work. You're a surgeon with that thing. I got your back. Okay. How do I reach you? No, focus on launching that SOS beacon. There's maintenance ducts everywhere. I'll catch up. You see any more, you hide, okay? Cross my heart. I love you, Isaac. You can do this. You'll put things back the way they were. Must have booby trapped the launch tubes too. They're scrap. Well, that's great. We can't just toss the beacon out a window. Uh, there's gotta be something. The asteroid. The one in the mining bay for smelting. What about it? 
If I attach the SOS beacon to that asteroid and then launch it away from the ship, we'd get a clean broadcast. And you'd get yourself killed. The machinery in there is still running, Isaac. Then it probably kept those things out, too. This is our best shot, Kendra. I'm taking it. is no longer tethered. Untrained personnel must leave the mining bay immediately.
working. The beacon's online, broadcasting wideband. I'll align the receiver. This will take a minute. Head on back to the tram station. Hazardous anomaly detected. Can't be sure. The system's bugged out again. I'm getting those camera glitches. The ones that look like my brother. Waving at me. At least the beacon's away. I'm aligning the... Wait. The ray receiver not responding. Oh, shit. The comms ray. We never fixed it. Because there wasn't a broken encoder. Then let's hope that 48 hours estimate was wrong, too. No comms, no rescue. Take the tram to the bridge. I'll hack open the door to communications. You see what's happening with the array. And don't worry about Nicole. Like Hammond said. She'll do the smart thing. at the bridge. We did it. Hep, Isaac, a ship just shocked in. The USM Valor. They must have heard our SOS. That fast? What's a military ship doing way out here? Out on patrol? Whatever. Right now I take a rescue from a fucking magpie. Head for communications. Once we fix the comms array, we can get all the answers we need.
Quarantine lifted. <laughs> Another one. I'm getting weird feedback spikes on local comms. If whatever's wrong with the comms array is spreading... No, that's not it. So, uh, uh the door to communications should be open. You can head down to the comms control station. And, Isaac, watch what you say. I think someone's listening in. Technician has been notified. We've got mark fragment number nine coming up. So once you get into the communications array, you'll see it floating in that little crevice over here. Just floating there in the growth. Mark fragment nine of 12 guys. I think it's in the lower northeast wall. I think that's where it is. But yeah, you just see it in that old cove. Make sure you get that before you leave this room after doing the puzzle guys. And then carry on, defeat the boss, and into chapter nine. Chapter nine, by the way, there is no mark fragments in chapter nine. But to make up for it, I think they've lobbed two in chapter 10. Or it might be 11. But yeah, the next one, when you're in the Valor, there's no Mark Fragments in there. This is USM Valor, broadcasting on all frequencies to USG Ishimura in response to your SOS. We picked up your escape pod number 47 and are en route to your position. This message will repeat every 30 seconds until you respond. The escape pod? Oh fuck! The pod Hammond jettisoned. It had chip. That creature was inside! No, 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 no. 
USM Valor, come in. Come in, Valor. Oh, her signal isn't strong enough. Can we deploy the long range antenna? No, something's blocking the blast doors over the comms array. The hell? There'll be a manual release over in maintenance. I'll go. Keep trying to reach them. after we spaced it. It's not coming off without a fight. Isaac, there's no time. There is if I use the ADS cannons. Manual targeting like before. I can shoot it right off the hull. I got this. You focus on the Valor. Will do. Tennis manual release again. Do it. I've got a transmission loaded and ready to go. Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. Yes! Finally! USM Valor, this is Kendra Daniels on the USG. Do not open the escape pod. Repeat, do not open that escape pod. Do you read? 
What happened? Something shook the whole crew deck. What hit it? An asteroid? The thing got onto the Valor. A rescue ship. They found your escape pod. And the one that used to be Chen is... God damn it! The Valor's scrap. By the time another ship hears the SOS beacon, we'll all be dead. No, that's what I was telling you. I found an executive shuttle on the crew deck. Intact. And the log says that shuttle's missing its singularity core. It can't get us home. Wait. Maybe it can. If the Valor's singularity core is okay... I could salvage it, install it on that shuttle, we're fucking out of here. Where's the Valor now? It's near comms. Keep us stable. Isaac, I'll grab a suit and EVA onto the Valor. Meet me there. We'll find that core together. Let's see you see clean up their own mess. I'm saving what I can. Entering vacuum. Isaac, I'm on board. The Valor's trashed, but I can make it to the bridge. The hell was that? Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. Isaac, we have a problem. The Valor's carrying a 12 megaton warhead. The crash hit the torpedo bay hard. I need you to handle that nuke right away, before something sets it off. Handle 12 megatons? You know I'm not a nuclear engineer, right? I don't need you to be. Just stabilize the warhead and eject it away from the issue. Oh, please, damn it. No one trained you to carve up monsters with a plasma cutter either. You haven't let us down. The soldiers must have had safety units on their armor. When they were turned, those units merged right into their bodies. Them. They're fucking fast, Isaac. Stay sharp. Chief Science Officer. I, I studied the model for the church. I'm done talking to intelligence. But, 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 but the planet won't rest until the marker is returned. You, you can't leave. Watch me. Caution. Radiation. doesn't add up. If the Valor was just on patrol, why bring a nuke? And if they had a target, what's out here except us? Yeah, I know. I'm downloading a munitions report right now. I'll clear your route to the engine room. Grab that singularity core and let's get out of here. <laughs>
Isaac, you hearing this? It's Chen. There, on the ring link. Did I lock him in alive? Chen's dead. You know that. I know my own fucking corporal. Chen, come in. Unknown biohazard detected. Lockdown initiated. Was munition log. It wasn't just a nuke. They came loaded for war. Seek and destroy. This was no patrol. They knew about the Ishimura. Someone knew. We were all dead from the moment we arrived. Unknown biohazard detected. Lockdown initiated. Another malfunction. Half the Ishimura's in the red. Someone get the door open. Huh. Chen? Right, what did that thing do to you? Help me get him to the Kelly. Shoot him. It's not Chen. Shoot him! What? Shoot him! Ah! Shoot him! Ah! Heat 
overload in main electrical grid. You. Something on the crew deck must be interfering with the signal. I can guess what that something is. If the marker's active, shit. The crew deck is locked down, but the deck supervisor might have an override key. The last location I have for her is the gym. How long will it take to install the singularity core on that shuttle? Not long. If no one tries to stop me. Hurry. We can't leave the marker in their hands.
security card. Convergence, thanks to this ingrate. Mercer, wait. Tell me. I want to understand. What is Convergence? But you already know. Dead or living, we all feel the markers to purpose. Don't you want to be reunited with the people you lost? I... Yes. Then why not help me? Mr. Temple has refused. But we are so close. Everything that has happened on the Shamora is just the beginning. When you put it that way, you and your marker can go to hell.
We'll be getting more fragment number 10 in a second in the deluxe shift bunks, the south room, because there's two rooms to deluxe shift bunks. You've got one room to the north, which got the same name, and you've got a south room. This is the south one. So come in here once safe to do so, guys. Take a left, and there it is, just on that table. Marker fragment number 10. And if you're having a bit of trouble killing them enemies, don't shoot the sack as early as what I did. Because if you remember this part, once you shoot the sack, that causes hunter to start spawning. So if you want to be a bit safer in this area, get the mark fragment first and then go back and shoot the sack. I was just shooting the sack then, just saying, so got to really go back in there. And then carry on guys, and we'll have mark fragment in B11 soon, a little bit later in the chapter.
destroy that cluster behind you. Not yet. Not, if, escape on that shuttle and you'll kill us all. When they took the marker from Aegis 7, it woke the being in the core of the planet. The hell is that? Mercer calls it the hive mind. Nexus organism which controls these necromorphs telepathically. If we leave while the hive mind is active, well, we saw the valor. If even a single necromorph escapes, humanity is finished. The marker. Amelia, she knew. She told me it would return the beast to its slumber. Okay. So if we return the marker to Aegis 7, it'll stop the outbreak? Exactly. But we need the shuttle to return it to the planet. You have a singularity core. And I can let you do it. So what do you say? If it'll end this for good, deal. Excellent. I, I, I can distract Mercer, but not for long. And get the marker to the shuttle bay quickly. Thank you, Mr. Clark, for helping me fix my mistakes. Right, so if you fell asleep during that little story, guys, from Dr. Kine, make sure you wake up because we've got another Mark fragment in here. Just on this table in the corner, marker fragment number 11 of 12. Pick that one up. All we've got left now is one more to pick up. So do this chapter, finish it off, and then I'll catch you in chapter 11 where the final marker fragment is. And then once you've got all 12, we've got to do a little bit of backtracking. We've got to come back here to the crew deck to place all the marker fragments. And then when we complete the game, that means we get the new ending and we get another trophy. Hazardous anomaly detected.
Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, come in. Fuck this ship. You're alive. Help me be. Fuck all that, too. Kendra? I'm here. But every alert on the Ishimura is screaming. Critical damage to internal systems. The marker just ripped right through the ship. Something pulled it down to the cargo bay. Kind. Pilot the shuttle to the hangar. I'm going after the marker. Of course. Amelia, quickly. Wait, Dr. Kine. That guy's lost it. He killed the captain. We can't trust him near the marker. He says returning it to the planet is the only way to end this. We've got to try. I'm heading to cargo. You ping Nicole's rig and tell her where to go. Leave it to me. Thanks. When I get the marker, we're all getting out of here. in the hangar bay. We'll meet you there with the marker. Now arriving at flight deck, traffic control. Yes, Amelia Sue. We'll send the hive mind back into the darkness. So glad you gave that guy our only escape shuttle. Shit, Isaac. Those things you've killed, their biomass is pulled down in the cargo bay. It's recombined itself into... Well, it's something huge, and the marker's embedded right in the middle. How the hell do we do this? I've got the Ishimura's cargo cranes. They can move half a bay of mining gear, no problem. If whatever's down there wants to wrestle for the marker, I'm in. Override the safeties, and yes, it might work. But hurry. We're losing critical systems fast. The last marker fragment will be in the cargo bay guys where we are now. So what I do want to say, there's three sacks just near you, near that guardian. You remember them necro sacks? You might want to shoot them, I forgot and I'd come back later. The marker got stuck and with my one IQ I couldn't figure out why it was stuck and it's because I forgot them. So you'll see me going back there in a second to shoot them three sacks, so you might want to do it now. But the last marker fragment is in here, the southeast corner. In the southeast corner to get rid of the pregnant necro first and there it is on that shelf that is the final marker fragment so if you go in your inventory now press triangle look at your key items and there it is you've got a good stash of 12 mark fragments making you hallucinate even more yeah it's making me think i've got 10 brain cells so definitely hallucinating there so you're going to do this bit now, and then once you've done this cargo bay step, guys, you're going to we're going to backtrack all the way back to the crew deck. And once you get to the crew deck, you're going to go to the party table, and then I'll explain to you what to do there. Pretty basic. Cable stress is beyond safe operating limits. Crane malfunction imminent. Come on, come on!
is obstructing the transfer. I can get there from the computer core. Detected. Yes, we'll be there. Can you make it to the airlock alone? No movement on the cameras. I I'm just gonna run for it. Wish me luck. Yeah, come into Captain B. Matthias' room. This is where the magic happens. And on the table, you find loads of infinite candles. Yeah, the, the flame is unlimited. The flame can't go out on these candles. And all you do, you interact with the table. And then lobby marker fragment on it. Do not blow out the candles. Yeah, just lob the marker fragments on there. And that'll be it. Once you've placed all 12 
on the little candles. That should lock in the final ending, guys. New ending. Exclusive to the remake. So now all you need to do, carry on with the game, guys. Get to the end. And that'll be it. I'll come back just before the big boss. The final boss. Just give you a bit of information regarding him and all these new weapons we can use now. So, happy travels, guys. And I'll see you in the final boss fight. Lifted. Mr. Clark, your colleague safely on board. My name is Kendra Daniel. Stand by, Isaac. He's bringing the shuttle in now. loading controls. Must be the damage to the ship. We're losing time. The hive mind is down there. Kine, relax. I'll turn off the gravity in the hangar, then I can load the marker by hand. All right. No, don't worry, Amelia. They understand. <sighs> Jesus.
confirmed. Safeties are still on. I need to restore gravity before we can load it. Hurry, please. Exiting zero gravity. It's on board. Come quickly. Go open the hatch for him. Cole, is she here? <laughs> Aegis 7 was off limits. The planet was one big government experiment. The marker, this divine artifact, it was built by human hands. That's impossible. It's an alien world. The miners dug up the fucking thing. After it was planted here a few hundred years ago. Even kind didn't pick up on that. They found the first marker in some crater on Earth. That one. That was real. Alien. Enough to inspire unitology. Our people studied it and reverse engineered this red marker. But they needed somewhere to test it. Aegis 7. You've seen the result. The stuff of nightmares. I thought the old reports were just hysteria. Until I saw what I saw. They sealed off the whole system, buried the records nice and clean. Until CEC got greedy. Those idiots tore Aegis 7 apart and woke up with the old research team left behind. So Earth Gulf sends you to sweep it all under the rug. Damn it, we have to return the marker. If anyone else stumbles across Aegis 7, 
It was disappeared once. We can do it again. I've seen how the marker fucks with your head. It must be contained. For what it's worth, we made a great team. You'll find another way off the Ishimura. I mean, you're one hell of an engineer. Your experiment's gonna kill us all! Daniels! She can't take the marker. She doesn't understand. Isaac, come in. It's Nicole. Where are you? In the flight control room. Please, you have to come up here now. There's still a way out for us, but we don't have much time. the way I can always count on you not this time Daniel screwed me over you couldn't have known she would take the marker she left us to die there's still hope you can recall the shuttle and remote pilot from here bring back the marker and we can return it to Aegis 7 you can make us whole again I just don't know what to believe anymore it's okay Isaac you'll know what to do Recalling shuttle USG-09, prepping remote docking procedures. Damn it, Isaac! You don't know what you're doing! I know you don't understand the marker like I do. You fucking kidding me? Shit! Warning. Escape pod launch detected from shuttle USG-09. Escape pod. Damn! We lost her.
This isn't how I imagined saying goodbye to the Nothing to fear. You've come so far. This all began in the core of the planet. Daniel said EarthGov built the marker. Some experiment they abandoned hundreds of years ago. If you're not ready, your miracle must be as terrifying as a nightmare. The planet is restless, hungry. It'll try to eat us alive. But we have the marker. We'll put things back the way they were. We will be whole again. track leads directly to the excavation site. It'll work. The hive line will obey. for 
Tether control. Cross contamination field engaged.
You're almost there, Isaac. Get the marker to the pedestal. Hurry! Reunited with the pedestal. Research was in the end. Not much, is it? Just trying to make it listen when he begged for convergence. But I had a different prayer. It spoke. And 
Lieutenant listened. Make this stop, I said. Maybe it understood, but... Something wasn't right, but she's... She's been through so much, and... At least now it'll be in safe hands. The marker won't turn anyone else into its puppet. Give me the loader remote. No. It's over. We're whole again. For Christ's Jacob. sake, I'm not going to ask again, Cross. No! I'm not paid for the die! Then just do it. I've got nothing left to lose. Here we go, one hive mind coming right up. Yeah, final boss time. You're probably thinking, now what weapon could be really helpful on him? And the answer is not much really. Yeah, there's not really any weapon which makes him mega quick to beat. Because you'll find when it comes to his weak spots, most of these special attacks on the weapons don't actually damage him. Like the force gun for example, you think that'd be really good on the boss because you can probably hit all weak spots without even aiming properly but no the force gun doesn't even work unfortunately on this last boss but the contact beam does that's why I took the contact beam out the contact beam is the west the the west the west weapon that makes sense no contact beam is the best weapon to use on the boss guys um, outside the hand cannon because it fires that continuous laser and it just makes it easier to hit them because rather than aiming and having to try to you know aim and be accurate and shoot on the weak points you can just keep on the keep your hand on the trigger your finger and just move the laser across and it just gives you more probability that you're gonna hit the weak spots so yeah contact beam is the only real good weapon you can use here alongside the hand cannon so to beat the boss guys will be mega easy to beat now now you're sorry most of the weak points you'll notice they get destroyed in one hit on sorry mate it's crazy versus about three or four hits on impossible so complete game guys and i've come back just at the end for the closing credits 
And whatever you do, do not look this boss in the eye. You've been warned. And 
There she is. What a beauty. Concordance officer. That's my 100th trophy, by the way. I didn't intend to get this one. I was, I was hoping to get the Witcher 3, but it doesn't really bother me. I just got this one because I'm covering this one now. Yeah, next will be Witcher 3, guys. So keep an eye out for that. It won't be a month again. I hope to have Witcher 3 start going up. It won't be a full video like this one. It'll be like a, a series of episodes. But hopefully that will be nice and fun to follow, guys. And nice and optimal as well. Yeah, should hopefully start going up in a week or two. As for this one, yeah, that's a Dead, Sm Dead Space remake done. I don't think there's going to be any DLC. If there is, I would likely cover that, guys. But we'll just wait and see. Yeah, we'll just wait and see on the DLC. I know there will be for Callisto Protocol, so I've got to go back to that yet. Once they've released more of it, so we can do it all at once. Yeah, Dead Space Remake, two playthroughs, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I didn't give a lot of commentary for the second playthrough, but I didn't really feel the need. It's just the same as the first one, but just a few different collectibles you have to pick up. But most of it's the same, and it's even easier because you're on story. Yeah, but I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Hope it's been helpful. And stick around, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.